Hey, beginning of stream arrivers. Welcome back. It's Tuesday and we're finally live. Um, I was having some internet problems and am therefore late. So we're just gonna hopefully not have any more of those and just have a good normal stream. It's not too late. It's only like it's not even 4 p.m. here, so once it gets after 4 p.m., then I get a little upsetty. Get a little Mr. Rossetti. And also, on top of that, we're testing... Completely unrelated to the internet problems, actually. Uh, testing the 8 megabits per second... Bitrate today. Uh, I thought that X4 looked fine at 6 megabits per second, but I, I intended to test this out yesterday, and now I actually know how to do it. So, you should actually be getting, if you're on source, 8 megabits per second down. Roughly. Might fluctuate a bit here and there, you know? It's uh, representing a 33% increase in bitrate quality. <laughs> Twitch deleting your channel. Good. That's like, the Twitch deleting my channel is like freeing the genie from the bottle, you know? Like, I have to sit here and grant wishes every day for John Twitch. If they want to release me from that and, and severed the contract, <laughs> then, you know, I'm not, that's not the end of the road. It's, that's not the end of the world. I'd figure it out. Now they won't do it. Now they won't do it, maybe, yeah. Uh, but, since we are doing, like, the tests with the change bitrate, um, I would appreciate if you guys notice any inconsistencies on your end or things that just seem abnormal. And uh, let me know what those are. Or, I'm, I'm actually just curious mostly how many people who normally watch on Source now can't watch on Source or something, because the, the, the biggest reason for not streaming at 8 megabits per second is primarily so that uh, people of all shapes and sizes when it comes to ISPs have, like, the most consistent... Like, 6 megabits per second is 25% less than 8, so therefore it's, it's less strenuous if you have, like, a worse internet connection, right? That's the primary reason. Let's listen to some Normandy Reborn. So I'm, I'm curious, if you're a person that normally watches on Source but can't watch on Source now, uh, that would be something I would want to know. That kind of info. If you, do, if you normally don't watch on Source anyway, in theory, I think that this is still better for you. It, it's purely theoretical, I guess, but uh, hello. How you doing? You, like, if I'm sending higher detailed encoding upstream of you when it's transcoded to something that you are watching at a lower resolution it should still be better I think <laughs> hello Electro Raptor I'm seeing 8001 How do I see advanced stream stats? It's the cog. The little cog on the stream window. And then um, there should be like advanced video stats. I don't know if you have to click something else to get there or not. It's like it's Alex is actually in my room. Uh oh. Well, um, I'm going to keep an eye because like we have two separate things going on. We have the eight megabits per second test, and then we have Cox being Cox, which is not related to the eight megabits per second. So I'll let you know if there's um, internet woes on my side, because I was having some connection issues before the stream started, and we'll see if that subsides, which it should, because I did a full reset. Restarted computer, restarted router, restarted modem, Got everything back to square one. I don't know what that does, but it magically fixes things and also changed my ingest server. 
Oh yeah, 8170 kbps. Lowercase b symbolizes bits and not bytes. Uppercase b is bytes. That's the difference in megabytes and megabits. Chat, are there um, seven bits in a byte? Is that right? Or eight? Okay, it's eight because machine numbers. So eight megabits per second is one megabyte per second. So you guys are actually getting one megabyte per second down now. There you go. Up for me, down for you. But we'll give this a try. Um, the main reason why I'm trying this out is because I rewatched um, some of the Jedi Survivor VOD and I was like, this should look a lot better <laughs> than it does. And then I went and looked at other people's streams of Jedi Survivor that did look better and they were all streaming at 8 megabits per second. So that makes sense. Anyway, welcome aboard, everybody. Uh, we can change subjects off of boring behind the scenes back end tech stuff I am genuinely curious how consistent this is going to be though and I wanted to just make all of the 3D things look shinier and better at 1080p there's going to be an elephant in the room today I want to go ahead and address that I'll probably have to answer it a few more times you might be wondering hey I noticed that you're playing X4 again today that's cool, but what about Age of Wonders 4? And the short answer is, I tried. And I, I, I decided that I would rather have a fun, consistently good day in X4 than try and force myself to want to like or be interested in Age of Wonders 4 more than I am. So, decided to just do something that I would for sure enjoy. He hates it. He hates it. Well, I have to actually buy it for 50 bucks. And based on that, I I did. And I I tried the, um, the... I played it for like 30 to 40 minutes. And I was just like... It seems competently made. It, it, it seems competently made. But I was watching some other streams of it, trying to kind of... Um, combine information like I, I, I did enough to understand what I'm looking at on the screen I did enough to understand how the overworld mechanics work how the combat mechanics work myself in the tutorial and then I watched some streams of some late game and I just nothing like nothing made ADHD brain go burr I think is the easiest way to say it. That doesn't mean that I, I hate it or dislike it. Uh, it didn't make ADHD brain go burr. It was just like... It, it felt like this is a video game. This is the best way to say it. I would describe it as inoffensive. There wasn't anything that I would say is bad. Except for my internet connection right now. Which is in the red again. <laughs> Jack, we may have some, some hiccups, some problems, which I hope will subside. Because I'm seeing some red flashes every so often. I watched AA's video on it, looked... Meh, he seemed to be struggling to say anything beside it's okay, and he was sponsored to play it. He hates video games. I've never called a game inoffensive. <laughs> what I mean by inoffensive is there wasn't anything that in particular in the brief time that I have been exposed to it, about 30 to 40 minutes of gameplay that I did on my own time and watching other people play for like an hour, nothing stood out that grabbed me as like um like to, to draw me in to want to commit to like a long campaign I couldn't find a hook I guess it's a simple way to say it
There were, um, the reason... I feel like it was gonna hurt my ADHD brain a little bit because there were significant quantities of traits and individual stat tweaks per on a per unit basis that I felt like I was I was overwhelmed trying to keep up with in my brief time and I thought that was how it was gonna end up being if I streamed it for a full seven hours. Lots of uh, plus 10% to attack, minus 5 HP when you use this move, a book of spells that has like 20 spells. Lots of uh, very wide width of things to keep up with. So I decided I just want to do space. I just want to be in space. There's a lot to keep up with in this game too, uh, but it's less pressure because I'm already at least a little bit familiar with it. He's too occupied thinking about the upcoming Total War campaign. <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, it, part of it did remind me of, like, a Total War light as well. Because uh, it has, like, the... Age of Wonders 4 has, like, the same overworld map. This is all stuff I could probably just be talking about while we're flying around in space as well. But since it's beginning a stream, I just wanted to kind of explain my rationale. Which I am now over explaining. Space is neat. I think space is neat too. Um, but yeah, it has like the overworld kind of movement, the hero units, and the surround an enemy army with your armies and then fight them, but it's turn based combat instead of real time. So, some of the turn based combat mechanics seemed neat. But I think that the, the battle, the actual like fighting kind of didn't click the way I wanted it to. It's weird. Like, I, I feel defensive, even though literally no one is putting any pressure on me right now. I think I feel defensive because objectively I want to like or want to want to want um, on paper Age of Wonders. But when I'm, when I'm playing it and looking at it, it doesn't... It doesn't... There's not a... The puzzle piece it doesn't fit. Somehow. I can't explain why. Because on paper, it's... It's my jam. It's like right up my alley. Will you ever play No Man's Sky with the community? No. Define with the community. Have you played any Age of Wonders before? Also, no. So maybe they don't have the nostalgia. Hello all, I'm sick. Lingonberry Punch, please stay a safe distance away from your fellow chat members. We would like to continue being well. Uh, let's do this. Can we perma loop the map menu music? There we go. I tried multiplayer Age of Wonders and it ruined it for me. See, when I look at a game like Age of Wonders, it seems like the kind of game that's meant to be played in multiplayer. To me, it has a similar vibe to um, when we played the Dune game. I was like, oh, wow, this is a competently made game that definitely seems like it's made to be played in competitive multiplayer. Maybe it's feeling like work? I've had that feeling with new games occasionally. Maybe. I would say feeling like work is fair. Like, I feel like I'm supposed to play it because, um, chat expects me to, I guess. So in that sense, it does feel like work. Have you played War Tales before Italics? It's better that you don't ask me about that, Red Knight. <laughs> For your own good. I don't want to catch anybody. I don't I don't want anyone to catch strays in chat right now, okay? Cuz I, I I don't want to rain on anybody's parade. <laughs> it's fine Age of Wonders games are for everyone. 
Yeah, like I didn't play it and was like, this sucks. I just played it and I can't, there's no way to say this in a nice way, chat. There's, and I don't intend it to be mean. But when I loaded up Age of Wonders and I was like, I want to do a little bit so I can have some information so I don't have to read a thousand tool tips for chat. Like I intended to stream it today, but I booted it up and um, they have the like now mandatory paradox tooltips and tooltips, which sometimes feels like it's there just because it'd be like you. This move does plus 10 blight damage mouse over blight blight damage is damage that does blight. Okay, well, hang on. There, the keyword was blighted was in that. I need to mouse over that. Blighted is damage. And it's just like, wait a second. Like, <laughs> but, uh, you can't just put three separate tool tips that all say the same thing. So it almost felt like someone at Paradox forced them to put that system into the game, I guess. Because everyone sings such high praises for it. Understandably, it's very good when it fires on all cylinders um but anyway i don't mean this to sound mean this is more of a condemnation of how my brain unfortunately works but i loaded up age of wonders i was like i want to learn at least like 30 minutes to an hour of this so i can explain it to chat and i think i yawned 12 times and that's not because of like oh i hate the game it's just because my brain is so dysfunctional that i was like oh oh okay um so this hero i like i felt like I, I, brain was reading a textbook i think I, felt I was reading a textbook is this a streamer who counts as yawns <laughs> i watched your fallen order vod again to prepare myself for your survivor streams well, there was only one Survivor stream jerk. It it was very fun though. I, I liked it a lot, um, but there won't be a second one because I don't want to spend six streams to finish that incredibly long campaign. Anyway, hi everybody. You didn't yawn once in the X4 tutorial. I don't yawn on stream. So sometimes I feel like it, but I don't, I just, that's, that's just a personal thing. Um, but it's really nothing to do with how well a tutorial is crafted. It has everything to do with um, whether the brain can find something to latch onto for focus, like to focus on. And typically for me, that requires um, some form of perceived longevity, which is to say, if I were to create a, say, a Stellaris Empire, just as an example, and um, maybe I, you, I've notoriously spent like two plus hours just making an empire, right? But the reason why that's so interesting to me is because whether I finish a campaign or only play it for two or three streams, like I have the suspension of disbelief internally that this is something I can get emotionally attached to and invested in. So frequently for games where I'm like, I'm not sure I see myself playing this for a second stream. I kind of just want to check this out for like one stream. That creates a, a disconnect from brain to content where I can't get that emotional attachment where I can see this. Like I need to invest myself and get really into it because this is something I want to follow through on. Uh, that, that usually is the difference maker. And that's why I think I gravitate towards games where I get to make my own path to some extent. And on, on, often there's good campaigns that catch my interest too, like Dredge recently, and um, some more tightly focused games. But I definitely feel like games like X4, like Stellaris, like Star Sector, um, just to name some sci-fi ones, but also you know, your your Rim Worlds and your um, Crusader Kings and that kind of stuff because I I can dig into it and be like, okay, let's settle in. This is going to be a long road and I want every decision to matter. Greetings, nerds. 
Like a, yeah, like a thin layer of RP. A layer of RP on top is good. But also just like focused campaigns are nice too. Especially ones you can kind of take at your own pace. Like uh, Death Stranding. That's why Death Stranding are some of my favorite streams ever. Because you can just like jump into it and be like, yeah, I feel like spending 20 hours on chapter two just to do all like set up all these routes i want to spend eight hours just getting like zip lines configured from place to place because this is gonna help me long term twenty hours collecting twenty thousand boxes <laughs> but yeah suffice to say age of wonders 4 looks cool like it, it seemed like performance was decent on my computer the I actually did like some of the combat mechanics, but just felt like passing on it for now. We'll see down the road. Dude, I freaking love boxes. Hello, Just Confused. Welcome. Nice mug. This is my favorite mug. I think it's... I don't know. It's got like, um... It's slightly more narrow. This is my favorite mug. I'd, I I would read about that in books, you know, like a detective's favorite mug or something. And I was like, who ha who does that? And now I'm old. It's just a good mug. Can't I can't quantify it. <laughs> I'm five streams into the Death Stranding vods. <laughs> <laughs> How many are there, KJ? <sighs> How many are there? Speaking of detectives, I started reading Sherlock Holmes. I'm gonna be real with you, Chad. I don't know... ...how you start reading Sherlock Holmes. Is it like 50 books? Is it like one book? Is it like a... ...huge series? It... where does it begin? Just a bunch of short stories. You start with chapter one. There's eight or nine Death Stranding streams. There were some of those were probably long too. Anyways. Good on you for reading. What's up, Mr. McDerp says just be mean. Thank you for 23 months. <laughs> there's, there's nothing to be mean about. I, I think I've reached thou dost protest too much, good sir. Territory. And I think it's because I'm I'm a little upset. Because there's nothing I want more than like a, a big new from scratch video game release to just sweep me off my feet, you know? Especially when it's got like turn-based strategy and character slash empire creation aspects as well. Okay. We're back. We back. Back into space. That's with the newest add-on. What, this? Next four? I got all the DLCs. No mods. There were collected works and anthologies that work well for Sherlock Holmes. Many of those stories were originally published in, in periodicals that were later collected into books. Interesting. Less than four months until Baldur's Gate 3. Yeah. Uh, I think Baldur's Gate 3 is just going to be my... That's going to be my guilty pleasure game. I want to like that so much, and I, I know that I will. Because I played the early access. And, um... 
I understand that there's going to be people that want to avoid spoilers for Baldur's Gate 3 and therefore will skip on the streams. That's fine. You're within your right to do that. However, I can promise you our games will go very differently because the things that happened in my brief time with Baldur's Gate 3 and Early Access were outrageous. We're talking like main characters snapped out of existence. Uh, where if you just simply played a different campaign, that character would just be in your game and your game would therefore be completely different. Because I, I, I accidentally snapped main party members um, out of existence. And I didn't know that they were supposed to be main party members until after. That's how crazy that game is. Like that that was actually my favorite part of Baldur's Gate was that it lets you do just ridiculous stuff. Like um I uh, like for example, I don't think that it's going to necessarily have the breadth that like Disco Elysium had, but if you watch any two playthroughs of Disco Elysium, you might know some of the like core story traits such as the character's name or whatever, right? But I don't feel like the main... They did a great job of making that not as important as the journey that you took to get to those story beats. And I think that Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be similar in that sense. Where you might have some of the key like main campaign stuff be the same reveals or whatever. But the crux of your journey through Baldur's Gate 3 is going to be how differently each person's party unfolds. So you could like play it and watch it and not feel like it's one is stepping on the other's toes. Because I, I feel like especially for me in particular, uh, I have a fairly unique way <laughs> of playing those type of RPGs that is not consistent with the majority who I feel in chat are trying to get the good ending for things. I don't seek out the bad endings. I think that the, the weird endings seek me out. But yeah, welcome back to X4, chat. Unique way, beep fans, <laughs> remember. Uh, last night, yesterday in X4, we did a couple hours of tutorial, and then we jumped into a lone, is it lone gun? The lone something start, which is the vanilla start. That's like the n nothing unique. You get a crappy ship which ironically is called the Elite, which you see before us here. And uh, that Elite just has a very basic laser on it, very little storage. And uh, we have just, we had like 15,000 credits to our name, which is not enough to do anything of, of import, okay? So what we were able to do uh, is kind of take that vanilla start and we explored a bit of the universe so far which are split up into these different sectors in various hexes. Uh, the hexes represent a, an infinite pocket of space where you could technically keep going in any direction while there, but they are um, places of import because they're the most lived in sectors by the primary factions. Ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen. Keep children away. Okay, if there's a warning message that says, keep children away from the airlocks, you don't put that warning message until some children got too close to the airlocks. That's a, that's a reactionary warning message. That's not a preventative. That has happened enough times that they had to make an like, announcement on the PA for that. <sighs> anyway. We've just started uncovering some of the different sectors of space, and right now I think they're color-coded based on who sort of controls that space. Now keep in mind, this is just a fraction of the different sectors that we can uncover over time. Uh, but this is, I would, I would consider this core space. And we can go outside of core space by following different uh, space highways and jump gates 
into distant, as of yet undiscovered by us, sectors. Um, so our goal is, after accumulating some money doing some basic quests, we can kind of help out factions, get some rep with those factions by doing various missions for them, and uh, in doing so, unlock some perks with those factions, including some different ships that might not be available to us, some other weapons or equipment, and or um, some trading benefits as well. In this case, I haven't really focused on any one faction, but we've earned a, a little bit of money. We have 426,000 credits, and that'll be enough to kind of float us into buying our first new ship. And we're going to start very small and very easy. And I'm just going to mute the PA. I'm thinking about leaning into the mining. Like, that's, that's what we've been building up toward. And I'm going to start probably with just a small mining vessel. And... Do some manual mining, you know? Get get my hands dirty. Go find some rocks. Figure out how to identify different resources in uh, different sectors. And then once we've accumulated some of those rocks, be it minerals or silicon or whatever we end up deciding to get, uh, we can go sell it, make a little bit of easy cash, and then buy a medium mining vessel. And what's great about this game is that when you get a new ship, you can simply take the old ship and then hire a pilot and then now you have two ships and then you have three ships and then you have five ships and then you have ten ships and now all the ships got pilots and you can program their behavior so if you want to have a mining fleet you can control the mining fleet you can have some autonomous miners who will do stuff uh, on your behalf or you can take manual control of each of the mining ships to, to get a little bit faster return on investment and it, it scales up like that depending on what you want to do. For my case, I'm happy doing some manual mining for now. And we're going to, like I said, start off pretty small. All right, I wanted to read some chat real quick. What do you guys got? Um, hello? Okay, there we go. Thank you, Windows. Talix, wondering if you're going to touch Shadows of Doubt again. Yeah, I'm definitely going to play it again. But pro probably once they in implement proper Twitch integration and maybe tweak some of the, the, the procedural side of thing. From what chat was saying, Shadows of Doubt is like, the best is the tutorial murder. So maybe they tweak some of the procedural murders a bit. X4 Slaps. What's up, Frick? How's it going? And scrolling down. Etal living the Outer Rim life. I want to, but we're, we're not living that life yet. What's up, Jam and Ben? Howdy. Thanks for subbing. Okay, chat, here's the plan. Uh, this ship is just our basic elite. It doesn't have any capability to do any kind of mining whatsoever. Elite. Vanguard. It, it is our ship, and uh, we do like it. However, we want to go somewhere that we can probably buy a ship. So we have 426,000 credits, and we have a mission to scan. I'm just going to go ahead and abort this mission because that was um, not easy enough for us to do despite it saying very easy. There's no mission offers on the table right now. Let me see where we're at. We are in Hatikva's Choice, which is a, a decent place to set up some shop and, and uh, do a little bit of trading. We've also uncovered some of the different stations that are here in this space. One of the things we want to do today is uh, figure out how to identify where asteroids are. And I've already done a little bit of research behind the scenes to kind of help us out here. Um, I, I, I did watch a tutorial last night. Let's see how much of it I can actually remember. Because I, I didn't want to have to be like, Chad, write me a seven paragraph essay on how to mine an X4. So one thing for sure, is that these different color hexes represent potential different asteroid fields. Um, and if we go to zoom in at least this far, you can see that there is some pink, there is some red, and I believe in some areas there should be some blue. Yeah, so there's the blue. And what these different fields represent, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. I believe um, one of them stands for ore, 
One of them stands for silicon, and the other one stands for a mixture of both ore and silicon. So, uh, what I'm going to do is just kind of go explore the different pockets. Chat has one brain cell. No elp, but also, I don't know. <laughs> Just ask Chad GPT. Now, there is um, the other side of that, which is the tutorial that I was watching was a 5.0 tutorial. So, there might also be some things that changed from 5.0 to 6.0. And uh, I want to find the actual chat. We've already had. I just want to say congratulations to our first incorrect backseater today, who had to change their backseat message. It was um, the first backseat message of the day was incorrect one. You guys are off to a strong start. We got him. Great job, chat. <laughs> Keep the tradition of Jeff's alive. <laughs> and also, I just want to congratulate at least one or two other people in chat who, instead of um, writing anything helpful, simply wrote no. So you guys, you guys are off to a strong start today, yes, for sure. <laughs> ah. No elp nopers. I know that's how it typically goes. Is there a is there a wrong help requesting permission to dock emote as well? Docking permission granted. Now, what's interesting about mining in X4 is that while you can physically mine minerals yourself, you cannot physically mine gas yourself. Unless that's changed in 6.0. As of 5.0, uh, you have to have mining vessels that will go and do the gas mining for you. And uh, that will just kind of happen off screen. They'll just scrape it from the very essence of space itself. So... We're, since we want to do some physical mining, are going to get a mineral miner for ourselves. Let's start by undocking and uh, heading over toward... Uh, what we want to find is not a shipyard, but a wharf. So, because we're going to get a small mineral miner, we're going to look for a wharf from a faction that we want to buy a ship from. Our choices right now are the Argon Federation, um, the Talati... And I'm assuming the Paranid. I haven't really looked at the Paranid. So let's go ahead and start by going over there. And I just want to look around. And there are other factions and other groups of ships, but these are the easiest ones for us to uh, reach at this point in time. We're probably going to end up going with Talati, I would say. But I don't think it hurts to, to go take a peek at some of the other offers. All right, we're flying. Please don't scan me. This is the gifts of trial. I love it when you can see that there are are known criminals just riding on the highway, <laughs> top speed. Okay, I overshot. How do you overshoot the highway twice? like this there we go now we're on chat uh how does space look right now with uh okay. i'm shooting you can shoot on the highway i don't want to shoot on the highway things are a little blurry while we're on the highway mm -hmm. 
Entering system. Argon Prime. <laughs> Could shoot on the highway in real life, too. No stop right there, criminal scum for us. We we are in I'm trying to figure out how to like relate this. The absolute weeniness of system. our ship Second right now. Contact. We are we are a fly designed to be swatted by almost any other combat focus ship. Entering system. True sight. So, we're trying very hard not to pick any fights. I just want to keep my head down. And that's actually another important facet, um, since we're going to be trying mining. Keeping our head down Entering system. is Falling so important, vision. because when we're piloting a mining vessel, if anybody decides that they want to kill us, um, we just die. <laughs> there really isn't any room to fight back. So to speak. All right, this is our stop. Mining vessels are a little bit squishy. It's like Eve. It's like Eve, yeah. So we're going to controlled space first. This is about 15 kilometers. We could probably just boost over there without switching to travel mode. All right, we're going to slow down a little bit. Tethys, Sentinel, Paranid Wharf. All right, is it Shift D? Docking denied. Excuse me, what? Docking denied. Are we not friends with them? So we can't talk to the Paranids? Is that what the problem is? What is the default rep with Paranid? Wait, where do you even... Oh, we're enemies? Negative 15? Oh, so I... how did I... Does that default to negative 15 at the start? They have a medium difficulty escort a mining ship for a 100,000 credit mission. The Ka'ak Raid Protection. Someone's scanning me. Okay, so let me just take a peek at my own... Uh, I want to see my own faction relations. So, uh, our choices right now are Argon Federation. We can, we can also talk to the God Realm of the Paranid. These are Paranids that are plus zero. And then we were just at the Hatikva Free League, who's a plus zero. We're currently at the Holy Order of the Pontifex, which is a negative 15. That's the negative 15 that we're at right now. So, can't be them unless we make knives with them somehow. Uh, and then we got the Talati Company that we can go talk to also. Those are, those are our options at the moment until we explore a little bit more. So what we're going to do is hit the map. Are each of these... Yeah, that's like Holy Vision, Pontifex's Claim. So if we don't want Hop, we want P-A-R for Paranid, right? That's a, that's a par hull factory. And there's a Paranid Wharf. So we can just go peek over there instead. That'll work just as well. Game audio seems a bit loud, Italics. Chat, is that true? Does the game audio seem loud to you? Or is Knord overly sensitive? It seems a bit quiet. Seems good. Seems normal. Big engines make big noise. Entering system. Pontifex's claim. <laughs> I am overly sensitive. That is true. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that there are just certain things that are loud. Uh, oops. 
Uh, you gotta turn off mouse steering to get the full speed on the highway. Entering system. Ias mists. I think X4 is just kind of like those movies where the explosions are loud, but the dialogue is quiet. So some some things will have the dynamic range to be super loud, and then the rest of everything else is going to be super quiet. Entering system. Unholy retribution. Directed by Christopher Nolan. But as long as the average noise sounds normal in this, then I'm okay with that. Entering system. All right, we're here. I think one of my favorite parts about X4 is this system of interconnectivity between different regions of space. And uh, the fact that not only you, but all the AI has to take these manual routes to get from A to B is very implicitly satisfying because you can actually learn the routes physically and while there are jump gates I think the space highway itself was a pretty genius um, stopgap I think between having everything be an incredible distance away and also having everything be linked with jump gates it, it, it's a nice middle ground docking granted all right, we can dock here. You can fly there without the highway. It would just take forever. Yeah, you, you would still have to go through the gates that are at the end of those highways. Uh, but it would take forever to just... Not 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 forever, forever, but it would take a while. And indeed, there's not highways everywhere that you need to go. So the highways are largely a thing of convenience. There's going to be plenty of systems that we go to, especially when we're, like, getting into the mining and... Um, exploring more distant regions of space that won't have those highways. And yeah, we're just going to have to do travel mode. So different engines have different travel speeds. And um, that'll come into play a little bit more once we start getting our own ships and customizing them. So let's go ahead and line up our angle and go ahead and dock here. Successfully docked. Okay, I just want to take a look at their ships. I'm just curious what, what's Welcome. on offer. Welcome, thank you. So starting with small ships, there is the Tethys Vanguard Courier. Couriers are primarily just for like hauling things. So they have about 1,580 meters cubed container storage. For, for purely containers. Notice that the miner doesn't have any container storage, but it has solid storage. Solid storage is what we're going to want for getting different uh, minerals and doing our mining. So the, I'm, I'm, I'm curious what the Paranid miner excels at that the other ones don't, because like I said, we're probably going to get a Talati miner just to start out with, but there are other options. You don't have to do, conform to any one given meta. They got the Perseus fighter. They got the, like, flying disc-looking ships. And then the scout, which is, like the name suggests, probably going to be more exploratory in nature. Okay, we can turn the volume down here, because there's just, like, loud ships in the background. But yeah, I wish there was an easier way to compare and contrast these ships without having to either take a screenshot or look at a wiki. That would be nice. Uh, I don't know if there's a encyclopedic kind of guide to that because this this miner is 2100 meters cubed of solid storage probably not much in the way of any other bonuses maybe some hull points there is a comparison tool for ships in the encyclopedia okay i'm happy to check that out let's take a look so Here's the encyclopedia. Here's ships. Here's mining ships. Here's light mining ships. Chat is right again. Good job. Plus one for chat. <laughs> I don't know how to actually do a comparison, but this will work. 
Comparison tool is the third button on the very left-hand column. Okay. My, my left ear. Turn that down for you. Dude, this new, like, having the audio slider just accessible where I can just spin the audio up or down is so handy. That's, that's brand new. I just got this less than a week ago. Uh, I can just, like, turn the dial so we can just dynamically crank the volume up or down. Okay, we got the Tethys Miner. How do I add a ship to the comparison? Because there's currently, it's missing features. All right, let's just click the minimum, the minimum preset. Let's just compare minimum presets. There we go. All right, add another ship. Small. The Magpie Miner, which has more of like a blocky vibe. Looks cool. Do minimum preset, confirm. Let's add the third. The Courier Mineral Miner. It's kind of more like a T. With also a minimum preset. Okay, which of these three is Talati? Is it the tilt is it the T? The T is Talati? Not choosing just based on looks? I know. I'm sorry. I think the magpie isn't is the magpie Talati? Magpie is Arg? If I can't add a fourth ship anyway. Pick the ship that looks rad as hell. That's the DLC ships, KJ. These are just the vanilla ships. We'll have to find the DLC space in the their factions. And then we can start getting the sweet new ships. We're starting with the babies. Well, between these three... Uh, the magpie has an incredible amount of, of storage. Uh, 3,500. That's almost 900 more storage than the next best. Its downside is it is slow. It is the slowest, the least acceleration, the least boost, the l slowest travel speed, and y'all pitch and roll. So, I mean, it's a sitting duck. Like, this thing is uh, is dead the second somebody looks at it the wrong way. <sighs> but we need storage. We need storage. So I say let's just go with the one that has the most amount of storage. And this is, again, the smallest one, which we're going to transfer off of pretty fast. Uh, this is just going to get us going to start with. <clears throat> All right, this is the Magpie. The Talati Company designed the Magpie as an entry-level commerce vessel, often gifted to younglings as a rite of passage on their entrepreneurship debut. Incapable of large-scale trade, veterans often boast of their achievements with the limitations afforded by their first sole Magpie. That's exactly how I think they, they, they're they selling me on this. The mining variant represents a strategic choice for serious younglings seeking to make a name for themselves. Not as flashy as the Vanguard or as solid as the Sentinel, it's often those who choose the mining workhorse as their first ship who go on to become renowned tycoons. Yeah. Okay, Magpie it is. Let's go, let's go buy a Talati. Magpie. Youngling streamer. The Talati are right up here. Just north, well, north of us, we're gonna say. Uh, there's the Talati Wharf right there. Go ahead and uh, start guidance. Do we need to get out of here? Totally buttering you up with that description. Okay, and we're out. Gonna just cruise on over this. Highway, right promise. I'm gonna use the boost, which also doubles as our shield. So if you look at that blue bar on the uh, 
a little trajectory right here. Boost equals shield, so there's a fun trade-off in this game. Where you can get some incredibly fast acceleration. But you won't be able to def- oh sh- Oh, you won't be able to defend yourself! <laughs> From a raid! Hey, what's up, Raiders? How's it going? RT is in the house. Good lord. It's raid time, baby. Are you flying a spaceship? Hell yeah, I'm flying a spaceship. We're about to go buy a new spaceship. We're buying a spaceship right now. What's up, Raiders? Not Shadow Legends, though. Not Shadow Legends. RT is sleepy boy. Always. Were you guys gaming with some Pokemon? Welcome back, RT Raiders. Always happy uh, to have you. Playing a game called X4 right now. It's a little dense. Definitely not Pokemon, but if you imagine each individual spaceship as a Pokemon, we're about to catch a new Pokemon. We're buying our first ship. RT Game has been playing X4. Don't you lie to me in my own chat. What's the tall grass? Okay, tall grass is going to this red sector where all of the alien pirates inhabit and uh, try to kill you on sight if you poke around too much in there. That'd be tall grass. Anyway, thanks so much for the raid. Hi, raiders. Uh, playing a game called X4, which has been out for a few years. And it's got some DLC since then. It's a space sandbox game where, in short, you can go as uh, detailed as flying your favorite ship. Every single ship in the game is pilotable by the player. Uh, and if you want to just be a lone wolf, you can do that. But it scales up to the point where you basically start your own space empire, you build your own space stations, you manage your own fleets, you defend a pocket of space that you call your own. Uh, you can be like a like a trade tycoon if you want to control the trade routes. Full economic simulation. Create your own economies if you want to. Uh, you can be... We're, we're going to try and become a mining baron. So I'm buying my first mining vessel. This is like offline Eve. This is like single player Eve. Docking granted. Is the, is the shortest explanation. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Combat, bounty hunter, all that stuff. You can be like a smuggler, trade in illegal narcotics if you want to. It's a, it's a pretty deep game. So we're coming in for a landing now. Getting ready to uh, buy our first baby mining vessel. My left ear appreciates that dude's engine. That guy's rolling coal. All right, let's line this up. And lock it in. There we go. I'd be a failed bounty hunter and reenact Cowboy Bebop. The space highways in this game actually do look a bit like Cowboy Welcome. Bebop. Alright, now that we docked here. Shout out to your boy. RT Game. Chad, if you're here and you haven't already followed our good friend RT, now's a great time to do so. He's about to stream on May the 4th, so says this schedule, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific. Weekday variety streams. Now, RT says weekday variety streams, but we all know that it's... um You, you can't just play Pokemon, then Ace Attorney... And then Pokemon again and call it Variety Streams, RT. Okay? We're on to you. We know better. I'm just messing with you, mate. <laughs> What's up, Doden King, Jabroni, Salamander, Smarters, Lord the Butlins, Mr. Joey. Also, come back to Vegas soon, RT. I'll be there for you when you do. We can go to more haunted houses. But anyway, we love RT here. He's a, a friend who's actually been to visit in Vegas multiple times. Uh, maybe I'll have the pleasure of seeing him at um, TwitchCon this year, too. 
But yeah, I hope you guys are having a good one. We're just taking things kind of slow, chilling. This is not going to be the action-packed uh, stream that was promised to you when he sent you over here. He has a gambling addiction. Don't we all? Don't we all? Takes one to know one, you know? Pokemon, Pokemon is gambling. You know? You're hoping you find a shiny. The shiny is eluding you. So you hard spin till you come up alongside the jackpot. The shiny you've been looking for finally appears. Oh, but its nature is wrong. Gotta try again. <laughs> Sub cryocrat, G nugget, and more. All right, child, let's buy this ship. So, small ship. We're buying this little piece of junk. This is probably the smallest mining vessel in the game. It's only going to sate us for uh, a little while. But we can we can customize this whole... We can customize the hard points, at least. Um, when we get up to a medium mining vessel, like the this guy right here, the medium mining vessels have these side hard points for uh, mining lasers that can attach to the side in addition to the mining laser that goes, the mining drill that goes on the front. So they have a little bit more utility. They can kind of help you destroy asteroids and uh, chop them up for even more stuff. Only gambling I mess with is gotcha games. Every, everybody has their own gambling vice. It just takes different forms, you know? Some of us, it's card games, maybe magic. Maybe, maybe you, um, collect Pokemon TCG and you, you got angry because of the people that, uh, apparently stole all the packs that had the most coveted cards and didn't let them go out to the public so that normies like us could have a chance at getting some of them, you know? Maybe, maybe that's your, your vice. All right, let's get the, the magpie set up. Or maybe you play Diablo 2 in your free time, like I do, and you're still waiting for the rarest runes in the game to drop on Hell difficulty. And you just keep doing Mephisto runs until you get lucky, you know? Some some of our gambling addictions are cheaper than others, though, you know? that That's true. All right. Are we just going to get a mining drill mark one? Yeah, I want to keep this the overhead on this ship super low. And the difference in these is just the mark two is like three times more powerful, but I don't think it's going to matter. So we're going to keep the overhead low. Mining drill mark one. For shields, the shields will barely make any difference. This is a mining ship. If any pirates decide to attack it, we're dead. Like it's just gonna, we're going to pop. Uh, we need some thrusters to actually travel. So the cheapest, I'm just going to go with the cheapest thrusters. The all-around Mark 1s. Very sad. So, um... Do we need, like, regular thrusters as well? Is, is this for, like, yaw and uh, pitch and roll and stuff? My gambling is Destiny. I have 2,200 hours across both games. That's almost as much as I have in RimWorld. It's a pretty mining ship. Yeah, it'll get the job done. It'll get the job done. Um, where do we do we have to have these? I think so. So we'll just take the default all around Mark One thrusters. These will help with just uh, strafing, pitch, roll, and yaw. Got shields. Got a mining drill. Software. We need at least, I would assume, a docking computer, right? You have to have at least like a Mark One docking computer. I'm assuming. No, it's actually not mandatory at all. Flight assist is mandatory. Uh, scanner is mandatory. Object scanner is mandatory. We're going to get the basic scanner. We don't need a police scanner to look for smugglers or, car or contraband. And uh, that's it, right? No. We need some crew. Okay, pilot is mandatory. So we're going to hire a pilot... How much are they? They're going to be like level zero pilots. 
and you can have up to three service crew at, at 9,800 a, a piece. But who cares? Uh, consumables. I'm not going to buy any of these consumables right now, but we will want to start laying out some track for setting up a satellite network. We can um, go to different regions in space, and you don't know what their prices are, whether they're buying, they're selling, unless you set up like a, a network that'll kind of communicate and relay all of those bits of information back to you live. So for that, we want to go ahead and like eventually get some satellites. You can have up to like 50 at a time here, and then we can just drop satellites around points of interest, like places that buy ore and see what the most current prices for ore are and uh, decide if we're getting a good deal, if we're getting ripped off, that kind of stuff. Do you need resource probes to mine? I don't think I need resource probes to mine. I actually don't know how to use resource probes, but that's okay. All right, uh, let's get this purchased. My current balance is 426,000 credits. If we add this to the shopping list, it's going to be about 236,000, so a little more than half. Uh, it'll take them about a minute to build, which sounds incredibly fast, and I'm going to go and lock that order in. Okay. Ship is uh, building now, and you can just, like, get up, have a little walk around. Check out the docks. Also, what's up, recent subs? Thanks, Windward Emu, for the 30 months. Howdy. And Kelly McChess, X4, baby. Thanks for 51. Long time. Appreciate both of you. Jam and Ben gifting us up to Ironic Loki. Thanks for the gift sub. Is there an end to X4? Not really. It's a, it's a totally open-ended sandbox. You can do as much or as little as you want. You could just be a guy who goes and mines rocks until you get bored, or you can be a trader, you can be a bounty hunter, you can try and like fight for faction, but all the DLCs come with different storylines that you can do, and the storylines are generally good credits, and uh, they'll make you some money, they'll give you various rewards that are worthwhile. And uh, I think each of the DLCs has its own kind of like story missions that are added. Security would like to remind all visitors to keep their belongings with them at Keep all babies time. away from the airlock. It's going to remind us of that again. All right, where is our ship? Wait, you can walk around your ship in first person? Yeah, but this ship isn't very big because it's mostly cargo, right? Everything back Elite there. Vanguard. That is the elite vanguard. But yeah, you can you can actually go and observe all the ships in first person. Their uh, their insides aren't as big as something like Star Citizen, you know. But yeah, you can get out and, and see all these is that ours over there? Is that our new baby? Let's go see it up close. Somebody needs to clean all these boxes off of the people mover. I think this is it. How do I change... <laughs> How do I change my iconography? My, um... My CSGO skin. Is this our pilot? Look Mad at this dude. Pie. Hold Mineral. on. <laughs> I love this dude. What a handsome fellow. We still have the pinup man. Map player information logo. Okay, map player information. By the way, our character name is Zeldo Brot, just in case you needed to remember that. Very, very strong name. Gonna head to bed, but this was fun. Hey, have a good night's sleep. S Everywhere else in the world is like six hours ahead of time. We just got started an hour ago, so stream stream just went live. We're, we're in here for a while. Okay, uh, so we got organization name. We don't have a name. Logo, yes. There's not that. We can do custom logos. Bear with a guitar. That seems like a good one. 
Especially for a mining company. Chat. Don't. <laughs> Cobra. Got a windmill. Uh, got some clogs. This will be bad news a pentagram. <laughs> I'm gonna take... I, I feel like I need a custom logo, but I also don't know how to even put one in. There's not a whole lot of choices here. Um, let's just grab... I want to grab the one that is the globe, but in a bunch of triangular pieces. Because if we're mining raw materials, it's those raw materials that comprise something greater than the individual parts. You know, more than the sum of its parts. But also bear guitar. I'm just gonna take the most basic, simple one because I don't even want it to be. Someone in chat can make a custom logo for us. You know, I'll figure out how. This does kind of look like Epcot now that you mention it. Okay, fine. We'll we'll make it fun. Did that change? Let's see. Yes. Uh, I want to change the name of this ship. What did we even name the first ship? Player information. Uh, it would probably be under, like, map property? Yeah, map property. Oh, we called our starter ship the Dead Pixel. That's a good name. And then... Our, our mineral gatherer. Name it the Tachi. That's giving it way too much credit. <laughs> That's it's batting way above its, its average there, I think. There it is. Keep children away from the airlocks. Are there children in this game? I don't think there are. Could be the dung beetle. We got dead pixel, and we've got the. This is just like a. They called it a magpie. Okay, so this is like a crow. Equivalent. Stinky chat member. How about Rock Hopper? Someone likes the expanse in chat. Okay, this is just gonna be the. We're gonna call it the one and zero. The one and zero. That's confusing because it's just one name. But it's as basic as they come. We're hacking in. Ask GPT Chan. You mean to ask Chat GPT? I don't even know if Chat GPT remembers me. I don't want to. I have to figure out how to log in. It's too much work. All right. Anyway. This is our new mining boat. Now we get to figure out how to do mining. Which I, um, I don't think will be too hard, actually. You are reminded that lottery tickets are available from all retail outlets in the station. Can you actually buy lotto tickets in this game? Because I'll buy some. I'll do it. I like that this ship barely fits inside the dock. <laughs> Like, we have this giant square, and it's like, this ship was designed to take up every spare inch. So here's the question. If I take control of this ship myself, right, which is my right, does the pilot just hide in the back somewhere? Let's go, baby. 
Oh yeah, saving is a great idea. Oh, look how... S what the... Do we need to just go in reverse? Are we too thick? What am I bouncing off of? I gotta like reverse out of here. This thing is so slow, I love it. Alright, let's make a quick save. Crashing before we even undock. That's what the shields are for. Okay. Are, there are some big ships that may also be coming into dock. I'm going to steer clear of them. You are wide now. How do you change camera view? Oh, there we go. We are wide now. That looks sick. So, here's what I want to do. Yo, we're in Profit Center? <sighs> here's what I want to do, chat. I want to immediately land. <laughs> Docking granted. I'll explain. Just go right back in. There's a reason, though. I, I want to buy some satellites. God, these ships look so cool. I feel like I'm in a dangerous position, though. Wait a second. That's my ship. That's not where I'm supposed to... Where am I supposed to dock? Chad, where's my... What docking bay? Oh, there we go. Ten. My bad. Keep it level. Keep it steady. Perfect. I feel like we go up and down really fast. How did you get such a quick start? It feels like it's taking me forever to get even a new ship. Uh, Will, I did some missions. I earned like 150 to 200,000 credits doing a couple of odd jobs, like repairing some satellites. And then uh, I also pursued some, some loot caches. I uh, found some yellow pings when I was doing scans and then found lock boxes that were out there, and I made like a cool 200,000 plus on some lockbox loot. So, did a little exploration. That was nice. Alright, I want to go to consumables, and we're gonna buy some satellites. I would say, let's start with like... Ten satellites. My ears. And now we're out. Louder! This time we'll try not to crash. There we go. Now let's clear the docking bay. Yeah, the lockboxes have some really good illegal goods. Yeah. Technically, they were not illegal where we sold them. They were illegal where we found them. Um, but that's different. Okay. Now that we got some satellites, my plan is to just carve out a place and just learn about mining, right? Since we've got a Talati boat right now, I wouldn't mind mining in some Talati space. Because the key about mining in Talati space is that whoever you end up trading with, you end up building rep with, as far as I know. So I wouldn't mind going to just Grand Exchange. You can see that um, they have a helium refinery and a refined goods complex here. We don't care about the helium refinery. But um, we also have some options in these areas. And there's much larger asteroid fields than these. 
but I, I wouldn't mind just starting there. There's quite a lot in Pontifex, but again, we're not friends with them, so I don't think we can even land and do business. Uh, Black Hole Sun 4 has got some asteroid fields. All right, where is the legend? So, blue is gas, red is mineral, pink is both. You can find both. Okay, so we're looking for red or pink. Red or pink, and then we want to poke around. Some red in Argon Prime. Lots of red. Dude, Hatikva's choice is slamming with minerals. Don't want to go up there. That's that's bad. Lots of pink and silent witness. And that's just what we've discovered so far. Let's go back over here, maybe. The trick is we need someone to trade with who isn't terribly far away, but we don't know what these stations are. They could be anything. And this might not even be that big of an asteroid field. I just want to go scope it out. Let's go scope it out. So we're going to start guidance first. We want to find some stations um, that we're interested in. Doing business with. And we want to be able to mine around them and kind of have, have trips highway that aren't right terribly promise. long back and forth. So let's boost over to the highway and let's head on over to the Cowboy Bebop freeway system. And we're off. New spaceship, who dis? What up, Parkside? We just got our first mining vessel. Entering system. Right promise. And now we're going to learn how to find different minerals and mine them. Okay, I think we're going to that uh, jump gate in the distance. So we're going to initiate travel mode, which will speed us up to our maximum travel speed, which is not going to be that fast. This is the slowest of the mining vessels that we could have purchased at this stage, but it has the most space for minerals. So in theory, the fewest back and forths to make a little bit more money. So we're just going to get comfy and uh, head this way because there is no highway taking us out here. Jeff Cohen coming? Hell yeah, dude. The X series is exclusively single player, right? Yeah, this is like single player Eve Online. Eve Offline. More or less. But thanks, Parkside, for the tier 2 sub in 55 months. Welcome back for one more. Thanks for slubbing. And also, uh, any raiders who stuck around, thanks for hanging out from RT. And appreciate the new follows that you dropped. If you have any questions about the game or the stream or what we normally do here, then feel free to pop in. But lots of strategy games and sandbox games and um, we played that sweet detective game for like three streams. That was my favorite game of the year, I think, so far. Shadows of Doubt is sick. Um, tried out Jedi Survivor recently. Kind of go all over the place. What do we normally do here? <laughs> We do... I don't want to run into these guys. Those are some large ships. I don't know where they're going. Well, we got to go through this jump gate. What do we normally do here? We normally do the... System. Zura. Streamer disposition of whatever streamer is in the mood to do. For better or worse. Okay, we gotta skip the first highway because it's going this way and hit the second one. There is a hostile that I don't want to mess with. I need to make a save as well. I heard pew pews. That's a little spooky. So I'm following the, uh, the, the yellow GPS down here if you're curious how I know where I'm going at the moment. You can also just turn on autopilot and that'll just try and take you the whole way. Totally valid. But I think manual flying is quite fun. Empty space. It is empty space. Alright, spool it up. Alright, I'm gonna alt tap for just a second. Does this game have elaborate combat? Define elaborate. It has shields, it has pew pews, it has consumable missiles, it has missile types, and different damage types. 
I think it has very functional combat. I don't think it's the shining point of the game per se, but it's still like good. Not as in-depth as E Fleet Combat, but has more fun personal combat. I think that's fair. Uh, the detective game was Shadows of Doubt. One of the reasons I soured on Elite Dangerous was I fell into a competitive mindset against other players. If I wasn't making two million credits an hour or whatever, I felt like I was playing wrong. Yes. I think that that is understandable. In this game, there are certainly probably metas in that the, um... Unknown object. Hold on. We're gonna slow down here. In that the, uh... The systems always are the same, and the sectors are always the same. But I believe the, the location of different stations is somewhat randomized, is my understanding. And more importantly, the AI have the same abilities that you have. So they're going to be going to war with interfaction wars. They're going to be destroying enemy stations or being destroyed themselves or expanding into a different region of space. So that dynamic aspect is going to create different scenarios game to game. Can you control a fleet of ships in this? Yes, that is indeed the mid game to end game. But you can also fly every ship if you want. Or you can play most of the game via the map, which is viable as well. Okay, uh, we were just, I think we were just chilling here to see like what kind of stations were around us. We have a refined goods complex here and an ice refinery. There's an unknown object that is likely a gate. So I don't remember how to deploy things. So I'm just gonna experiment with that real quick. Well, there you go. Bloop, I can simply poop out a satellite. And if we get a little distance away from it, it should be right behind us. Yep, there it is. Uh, that is one of the 10 satellites that I just bought from the last station. And the benefit of satellites is that now, if you look inside of this green radius, anything in that green radius is giving us real-time updates. So we're getting updates on traffic, now, we can see those things out of right now anyway, but if I go to a completely any other sector of space, I'll still get real-time updates on this area. So what you generally want to do is try and like position the satellites so that the coverage is maximized and is hitting all relevant um, stations that are relevant to you, at least. So I want to see what this third station is. It's about 50 kilometers away. I'm not sure, is this, uh, is the green covering this ice refinery here? We're gonna find out, I guess. It seems like it should be. I don't think I can get all three of these. This is a medical supply factory. So, I'm mostly interested in the refined goods complex. Because I think a refined goods complex, uh, here's what we can do actually. We can uh, open the trade filter and then, Chad, how do I customize filter settings? There we go. <clears throat> Since we're only interested in trading things that we're gonna be mining and we're only mining minerals, then we don't want container or liquid information, right? Because we don't have container storage. That's like trading consumer level goods. We're trading solids like silicon or ice. Probably not ice, but you know, that's, that's part of it. And then we can add specific wares. We wanna look at ore. We wanna look at silicon. We wanna look at We could look at ice just just to look at it. And uh, there's one more that we want to possibly keep up with. And I'm trying to, I'm, before I consult chat, I'm gonna try and remember which one it is myself. I think it's Navidium. Are there any others that you think I should add to this list? 
Because I think I got the, f the main ones. Best thing about X4 is you can lead the charge into battle with a fleet of capital ships you control, or you can get to the point where you can play the entire game from the map screen. Very true, yes. Metallic's logo submission. I don't I don't believe you. Okay, I believe you. <laughs> uh is this a PNG with transparency? <laughs> this is uh, the image. <laughs> Very nice. Well done. Okay, now how the heck do you install it? I can just Google that. X4 custom logo location. It's documents, Ecosoft. Dude, there is nothing that feels better than having a brand new PC and your documents page only has like five folders in it. <laughs> oh, it's so clean. Everything loads so fast. All right. It is Ecosoft X4 logos. If you're unsure where to put it, put it in the same one as your save folder. I don't have a logos folder. Oh, it's numbers and then logo. Okay, I don't have a logo folder. Do I just create a logos folder for this? So fresh, so clean. I saw some tutorials say to create it. Okay, so I created it, and then I can simply copy the image into the logos as a PNG file. And then, do I have to restart the game? Might have to restart the game, possibly. Either way, uh, those are the four solids we're looking for. Ice, Nividium, Ore, and Silicon. I don't know if I need to configure any of the other bits. And I'll explain a little bit more about that in a moment. Let's start by seeing if the logo is here. So, we should be... Oh, it's the third button. Custom logos, none. Hmm. I could restart. I need to make a manual save anyways. All right, chat. Let's see how long it takes the computer to restart the game starting now. I, I'm not going to count. You count. I don't care. One. At least, at least one, yeah. Seems pretty speedy. Seems pretty quick. God, I love having M.2 drives. Really enjoying the new PC so far. Is he tells cam audio out of sync? Chat, you tell me. Is my camera out of sync? No, it's fine. Okay. Chat's out of sync. Chatter is out of sync. Third button. There it is! It's here! Good. Good, 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 good. Okay. Can I see it? Yeah. <laughs> I 
Excellent. I have to use the numpad to move the camera around, which is a little weird, but it's not as unintuitive as it sounds. Very cool. We, it's our first custom logo in a while, I think. We haven't really done that. By the way, somebody said, I'm surprised to see you not playing Age of Wonders tonight. I, I tried. I, I played it for like 30, 40 minutes off stream for the tutorial and kind of watched some gameplay. And it, it just, long story short, didn't grab me. Didn't grab me. It seemed like a competent game, but I didn't. it didn't have a hook for me. Other than character creator. Like, character creator looked really cool, and then once out of character creator, I'm not sure how I would have gotten into it as much as I would want to. But if you're, if you're playing it now, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, anyways, here's the deal. We set up a filter for trade, which will show us ice, nividium, ore, and silicon. And what that does is, when we zoom out the camera, you'll see these little gray boxes around different stations. So what this box does is it tells us in a given area what is being sold or bought and for how much. That is filtered with our current set of filters. So since we're only interested in those four solid objects that we can mine, uh, we can see that they're buying Nividium and ice here but they're not buying really anything else, right? Now, if we zoom out further, we can see more information on things that are bought and sold. However, we're not getting any real-time information because we haven't set up any kind of satellites to go look at those things. So the only information that we have is the last known price of stuff at places that we may have stopped. So for example, there's a silicon refinery here that was paying 121 credits per silicon. And then they have a number, uh, like th the three little blue pips is kind of like quantity. So they're buying like 12,214 as their buy order for all intents and purposes. So if we wanted to, we could set up some satellites around some of the natural places to buy that want to buy things and kind of get updated prices. Because we can see that like Nvidium is worth a bit more down here at the Argon trading station last time we were there, right? And where we move the camera will kind of dictate where different things show up. So in my case, um, the refined goods complex is not really, like the, the trade station is getting the Nividium, and this is, the ice refinery is getting the ice. So what I want to do is actually just kind of like Swing on down. I want to. I want to see where this um, this gate goes. So we're just gonna hop on through Super the gates. Highway. Unknown sector. And yeah, we can be in the map while we're flying, so that's useful as well. So we can be doing stuff in the map while we're traveling. Yes, Nividium is what they make forty nineties out of. That's why they're so expensive. It's incredibly rare. Z Baller, thank you for giving a sub to really stooped. They're stooped. And War of the Worlds gifting a sub to Tim Parf. Hey, appreciate the gift subs. Helps the stream quite a lot as I run into this gate. Um, hello? God, this thing is so slow. Did I go through at a weird angle? I may have gone through at a weird angle. I like the space noises. But yeah, the 4090 has been a champ so far. Uh, it, it, it's, it's been just as perfect as you can get, and uh, 10 out of 10 would buy again. There we go. Could you potentially eventually have your own refineries and refine ores and stuff before Entering selling them? Yana yes. Zura you seven. can create modular space stations that you decide how and what they do. So this highway took us to 
Ionomus Zura 7. Where there is a mineral asteroid field and a silicon refinery out here owned by Talati. Okay, I'm, I'm interested. You have my attention. This might be good for us. So, let's do a couple scans. I'm gonna switch to scan mode. Probably just need to do like one. And that'll show us at least some distance away where some, some stations are. <sighs> That's just an unknown object. I don't know what that is. <clears throat> There's a couple stations out in the distance over yonder. A couple more to the south. I think revealing those would be lovely. Burn. A silicon refinery. Silicon refinery is kind of huge for us. I'm gonna set up a spot firmly in between these two. I don't think the does the defense platform do anything as far as buying and selling? I'm not really sure, but just in case they do, I'm gonna see if we can squeeze a satellite in between them. Empty space. All right, let's come to a stop about here. All right, hit the brakes. I'm curious if I deployed a satellite right here. Yeah, we can see both of these. Now we're gonna, we're gonna get live updates on what they buy and sell. So they're buying silicon for 118, which is a bit low, actually, a bit low. They're buying, they were buying over here for 137. So the prices of goods dynamically ebb and flow based on supply and demand. So sometimes you you can find a place that's like, oh my God, I can't believe they're buying this for this Empty much money. Space. And then you sell them too much, saturate their supply, and uh, they don't need it as much anymore. So they're cool with you just dump dumping your space junk over there. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so small. Never gonna get in the way. Just a little satellite. Just a teeny little satellite. There's some rocks. These may be what we're looking for. But I feel like finding a place to sell first is good because I kind of want to like have some work that we set up. And I'm just exploring some different regions. These are both medical supply factories. So I'm gonna do a ping. Kind of just look for more stations that way. We'll get a long-range scanner eventually, maybe a scout ship that can do some scanning for us. Uh, that's a thing as well. Like, you can buy a scout, hire a pilot, give it like a good scanner, and then I assume you can just have that AI pilot Empty space. go explore where stations and stuff are for you. Can, can AI pilots do scans and stuff? Or do they just go and reveal stuff without being able to necessarily do a like a pulse scan? How do you make a pilot do like a pulse scan? There was an explore command, but they kind of just go and look at the whole system. That's what I thought. They just kind of fly to each uh, point of interest. And they don't necessarily like do the long range pulses to reveal stuff. For what? I'm s what, what is happening? Hey, I think I know where we are. I'm pretty sure those star patterns match the ones from the pre-shutdown gate maps. This is the way to the old Federation. What? Did we find the split factions? Boa. Chat, what's the key to look at a ship you've targeted or a thing you've targeted? Not this one. F3? Okay. Yeah, that's... Those are the cool looking ships. The split ships are pretty nice. I'm gonna make a quick save here in case I get exploded.
By the way, this is a reminder, chat, that um, while some back seating is allowed, please contain your back seating to things space. that are directly relevant to the stream and or asked by the streamer and not things that may deprive myself or others of exploration and natural discovery of systems or things in the game that are part of the gameplay discovery process. I know that can be hard to distinguish sometimes. There's a whole parts factory up here. Where? They kind of zeroed in on a gate and then... I hear you, but I don't see you. So I'm, I guess it was this jump gate, huh? Jump gate, unknown sector. Jump gate to an unknown sector. Simply poke your head in and take a look around. Well, I saw a split ship mention this. I wasn't intending on doing story content, but at the same time... Elephant. We're right here, so... Why don't we just take a peek? Jump gate. Unknown elephant. Unknown elephant. Um, that's a big boy. So chat, this is a construction vessel. Construction vessels are, I believe, the vessels that are able to go help set up other stations and mega platforms for the different factions. So this is the AI currently looking for places to expand right now, basically. Jump gate, unknown sector. I'm going in! Entering system, Uruk's demise. Uruk's demise. This is new to me, but if you call your place someone's demise, like, I feel like that has a worrying connotation. I also see another gate over there. So chat, people were asking earlier, kind of, how do the highways connect to everything? These are the types of distant sectors that don't have highways that just connect you to everything, right? We're having to kind of fly and see where things are on our own somewhat. And there's not like a quick fast travel way to go through. FRF. Uh, ZYA. Chat. I'm just saying. ZYA is the Cyarth Patriarchy. Okay. And then, is it, they say FRF are the free families. So I believe this is the first bit of split space that we found. So there's free families and fallen families. <sighs> All right. Well, I don't want to be this far out, but it's nice to know where those things are. What I'd like to do is probably just head back into this, like, Talati area. So we're gonna make a U-turn now. <laughs> uh, the space. Okay, how do I, there's a way to do this. Chad, I, I already forgot the tutorial. Um, you do this. You turn off travel mode. You turn really fast and then you turn travel mode back on. 
So you drift and lose less speed? Did I do that right? Maybe. Control space and travel mode. Okay, yeah. Control space. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of little details from the tutorial for, like, maneuverability that I probably forgot already. Entering system. Yanamos Zura. Autopilot. Engaged. Okay. So, autopilot's going to take us back to Yanamos Zura 4, where I'm probably just going to scoop up this satellite uh, while we're on the way back and uh, potentially set up another satellite by their trading station. I'm not going to try and make like a... I'm not going to go too crazy in terms of setting up a little network of satellites, but we need to figure out where to, to sell our goodies. And also hopefully have somewhere in sector. To mine and sell for efficiency. Autopilot's doing its best. <laughs> Autopilot? There we go. Entering Yanamos Zura for Autopilot. Disengage. I'll take it from here. Are you opposed to mods? There's no reason to play mods when you haven't tired of vanilla. is my opinion. I think that Skyrim kind of changed how I feel about modding games in that I spent more time actually trying to mod it to the point where I just finished modding it and then didn't play it. Because when you try to, like, tweak every single thing about a game, sometimes that is the game. And so I found that I would... I just typically play... I will typically play a game until I am bored of it and maybe then try some mods. That is just an oil factory. I was just seeing what that was back here. I might do a pulse. and see if there's any other. So, once again, if we started flying towards this edge, it's not an edge. We would just go this way and the map would continuously zoom out to accommodate the new space that we're discovering. So there isn't an edge as such to the sector. This is just the edge of known space for all intents and purposes. Uh, let's head back to our satellite and then snag that. Satellite. Same with Fallout 4. Yep, that's pretty normal. If I were playing, I'd just play until I find something that really bugs me and then seek out a mod to fix it. Yeah, I think that that's reasonable too. Trying to preempt things that you aren't aware of with mods is also tough. Then a small update comes and breaks the mods. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Playing games with mods can sour the vanilla experience at times. Well, I think a lot of it is. You need the experience of playing something vanilla to know how you feel about the way the game is balanced. Like, if you're playing a single-player game and you want to fast-track it and make it as easy as possible to get to the thing you want to do, that's totally cool, you know? Download some mods, do whatever it takes to kind of get to the gameplay experience that you're seeking. But in... I went way too far past that. But in many respects, a lot of mods change game balance in significant ways. And I think having... Um, an understanding of how the game is 
envisioned by the developers to be you can make an educated decision only after having experienced that vanilla gameplay where you might download a mod pack for a game and there's like 50 mods and like 10 of them sh alter in significant ways the game balance and you'll start playing and be like none the wiser you'll you'll just assume that's how things were meant to be played if that makes sense uh, if I deactivate the satellite, I can then tractor it. There we go. Okay, we got the satellite back. I love those little details, for example. Being able to do that, and then being able to have other ships in my fleet do that. Let's head to... I didn't see any stations here that we... I really... I would like to plug in maybe a satellite by the trade depot. Let's hide the trade overlay for a sec. I like that you can just breadcrumb this game. Empty space. Like, you could spend a whole day playing this just setting up a, a trade network with satellites in key positions at different sectors. Or you could spend an entire day just trying to get enough money so that you could buy a fleet of small scout ships and then make them do that for you. It's as granular as you want it to be. Or you can get mods that model that out, apparently. <laughs> and that's a thing too. Alright, let's get our turn ability back. Going towards the middle of, there's like two defense platforms and then a trade station here. We're gonna come to a stop. And deploy a satellite. So that now we have a vision inside of this green sector of things that they might be buying. In this case, Nividium. Ah, <sighs> but we're clearly not really mining here, are we? So, let's go... I was trying to find some Talati space to mine in, and I'm sure that there's plenty. There's some stations all the way over here in Grand Exchange. And I don't really want any help with this either. I'm just kind of like exploring on my own. And there might be some asteroid fields on some of these tiles, or there might even be some stations over there, but I haven't seen any. What we're really looking for are stations that buy, um, I guess, silicon and ore would be the easiest for a decent price. Component factories. Bunch of stations here. Tons of stations here. I'm gonna try just going to Grand Exchange 3 and poking around. I guess the downside is that might not be enough metal compared to what we want. Fuel is hand waved, but it's a commodity that you can trade. Yes. Fuel is imagined, so you don't have to micromanage that in your own ships, but you can trade it anyways. Do the different like stations consume fuel by chance? That might be a thing. Space fuel is drugs. Falcris, thanks for 46 months. What's up, Falcris? How you doing? Stations consume energy cells, if I recall. That's cool. All right, let's go back on the space freeway. There we go. Stuck the landing. Whee! <laughs> ah. Feels good to just be flying around space, discovering things. We found that some of the split families, which is pretty cool too. Mercury, Bangaboa, Jumpgate, Bright Promise. That looks so close, but it's like 40 kilometers away. 
Okay, we haven't seen, uh, we didn't find any, like, silicon traders here. And there weren't really any asteroid fields here either. And we're going to take a little freeway trip to Grand Exchange and kind of poke around over there. Right promise. Did I set a waypoint? Autopilot disengaged. What? Autopilot disengaged. Is that because it can't figure out a way? Where am I? Does it not know how to get there? Chat, sing it with me now. Black Hole Sun. Autopilot engaged. There we go. That's where we're going. That's where we're heading right now. <laughs> so goals today that I think are super achievable once we find a system that is worth kind of spending some time in we're going to learn how to identify different asteroids that we want to mine for resources then there's how to mine then there's making money from mining and then there's buying a medium mining rig and then after that there's after we outfit the medium miner then we can s take this small one that we're in right now and uh, learn how to make the pilot do some autonomous mining and then if we're if we're really productive we'll have a small mining fleet going out punching rocks and uh, start making a living in space as a delta loader the rock copper. And then long term, I have no idea. <laughs> I guess like super long term, you want to maybe corner a region of space. But what's nice about this is that these resources aren't exclusively just for selling and making money, right? It's not that shallow. It's also the foundational resources that you need to build your own little empire. Also, Auto you're s autopilot, you're scaring me a little bit. I'll take this myself. Hey, you got a permit to mine these rocks. Entering system, profit center alpha. I like to name my stations profit center as well. But yeah, like the all the stuff that we're capable of mining. Chat, how expensive is it to build your own space station in this game? Like what what are we talking for just a basic station resource-wise? Entering system. Silent witness. The answer is yes. Two to three million for a small one, eight million for a functioning one making money. Entering system. A Tikva's choice. They're modular, so it really depends on what you want to put on it. Okay. When you build a station, is it money exclusively? Or are we also talking like, can you grind out your own mats to make one? You can either provide the materials or just buy them. Entering system, Argon Prime. So how complicated is the like number of mats required? Like if you were gonna grind out your own mats, what are the base materials that you need? Is it like a bunch or like a few? You can see system. in the encyclopedia. In okay, I'll look in the encyclopedia. 
We need to hop off the freeway. Boop. I love this interior. The tiny view window. This is what our ship looks like from the outside, chat. If you wanted to... Get a better glimpse of it. Vulture Thing is looking so weak. Just a small... Rock hopper. Alright, so in the encyclopedia. E. I like that it's at the top of this too. <laughs> uh, encyclopedia. Stations. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Station modules. Build modules. I don't know what I'm looking for here. I can just click on a random one. Uh, so like a ship maintenance bay is claytronics, energy cells, and hull parts. So, how does one acquire hull parts naturally without just straight up buying them? Look at all these rocks. We got a, we got a bunch of rocks out here, huh? What uh, faction is Ant again? The Antigone Republic? Who do they represent? When you make a station, keep in mind that Terrans use different materials. If you use Terran parts in your station, it'll be hard getting the base mats. Entering the system, black hole sun. Do 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 do. Can you fly into the sun? Um, <laughs> maybe. The sun is very. I cannot stress this enough. Very far away. At sublight speeds. So I'm gonna assume that the answer is no. At least for this one. All right, Chad answered me and said, um, "Graphene and refined metal." I'd imagine that you need to fabricate them. Yeah, but like. Hull parts are produced by refined metal plus graphene. Okay. Guys, yes, how do you get them without building a station first? Piracy may be the only way. Yeah, otherwise you just have to straight up buy them. I guess. Good space music. Anyways. Uh, yes, chat. I played this in 2020, and even then, there was a quest to get a free station, and even then, people were trying to tell me to do it. Uh, so this is the part where I say, I don't want to know about quests that exist, or their rewards, because I consider that to be spoiling the game even if you think it's helpful entering black hole sun but the more I... things change the more they stay the same are you using a flight stick no we're using a mouse and keyboard because you got to you can't navigate all these menus with a flight stick and it's just too much real estate Now, that's not to say that I'm not going to ever do any quests. I might eventually do some quests, but I don't consider that to be the main appeal of the game.
Is this game anything like Freelancer? There's less combat than in Freelancer. We could ask that a lot. Uh, this is like EVE Offline. Except with less uh, stats to grind. <laughs> but it is a sandbox like Freelancer was. And you can do anything you want to do in space in the game. All the while, the AI is also doing anything it wants to in space in the game. Creating a very dynamic, shifting environment. And right now, uh, we're exploring in what I think is Talati space. They've got Grand Exchange 3, a little pocket here off the main highway. Let's hide the trade overlay for minutes. I wouldn't mind just actually flying past my objective because I think that in the future, having some satellites near trading stations is just generally a good idea. Space trucking is fun. Though I'd like to stay away from the Ka'ak. Oh dear. Chad, there are some Ka'ak over here, you know? Ka'ak. They're here. Hive guard. Oh, oh they're scary too. That's scary. They're trying to pew pew it right now, actually. They're trying to shoot it down, and it's flying very erratically. Good luck. I think they got it. Not my problem. I don't need to land here. Um, actually, we can do this. If I sort of go in between the gate... Wait, you're scanning my cargo hold? Yeah, I don't... There's literally nothing in here. Oh, they weren't talking to me. Grand exchange. <laughs> Whoever they were talking to is like, Naturally, I am a law-abiding righteous citizen! More power to you. Okay, we got it. We got it. We got a tango. Let's just drop our little satellite and get out of here, chat. You're making a big Requesting immediate backup. No. I will not help you. Good luck. You're on your own. system grand exchange okay we made it to grand exchange for better or worse cool looking place I've probably already done some pulses here I'm gonna do a few more uh, I want to see what these this little cluster of stations is we're hoping for like a maybe silicon station that'll be happy to buy our goods uh, also I do want to like Monitor the trading stations. Maybe we go like here. Empty space. How come Shift Q quits to desktop? That's not a good hotkey to have. The seeing this big ol' asteroid belt just makes me miss Starbase again. <laughs> I feel like I can fly into this and go find some sweet rocks. Alright, if I plop a satellite down here... Ah, it doesn't hit the trading station. It does hit helium and antimatter. Let's pick that up. Dude, sweet rocks? Hell yeah, sweet rocks. All right, there's my sad Alligator, little... Gas. That's, that's not it. There's my satellite. sad little satellite. Tractor beam that. Boop. Let's get a little closer to the trading station. That's not a good hotkey to have. 
things commonly said when getting into any X game. That's fair. Alright, we're at a shield slash boost. Just trying to go like here. Empty space. Not for long, there's about to be a satellite right there, actually. Okay, I think that should count, right? The icon's inside of it, at least. And I could have gone a little closer to it, but it should still be tracking, I hope. <sighs> All right, I need to see what these other two stations are. Ah, <sighs> look at it, Chad. Look at it. It's beautiful. People arrive, Starbase. <laughs> Come back to me. I want to program more automatically opening and closing doors Empty and uh, pulsating mining laser. Okay, let's turn the trade overview back on. You guys are only buying nothing. Refined. They're not buying anything. That's a SCA. <gasps> Dude, we found the pirate base. The SCA pirate base. They can they'll buy the illegal goods. That's what I was looking for yesterday. Uh is the map three dimensional or two dimensional? The map is three dimensional, but most things are on a pseudo 2D plane. Some things are higher and lower than others. All right, let's do a pulse here. Kind of look for any other stations that might be hanging out in the background. Ding, ding. Oh, there are some other stations way out there. We'll go this way first toward the cloud. God, this looks good. Everybody just agreed to make space flat for convenience. <laughs> but yeah, in Starbase, um, space. originally you had to mine with pulsating lasers. So the lasers would be a solid beam. But because of the way that the chunks updated on any given asteroid that you were deforming by mining it, um, like, if you left a mining laser just on, it would drain energy. This super high energy requirement. But, the actual game was only updating chunks every, like, second or two. So you were just wasting a lot of energy. Whereas, if you turned it onto a pulse, they eventually patched this, I think. But if you turned it onto a pulse, it was basically a way to conserve energy while only shooting the asteroid when its chunks would update. So, it would keep the mining lasers from overheating. It was like a cool workaround. And the fact that you could even program with real code using their own coding system was so sweet. That was so much fun. I mean, there's a lot of cool rocks here. We could probably stay busy here for a while. The problem is nobody's buying this stuff. Or are they? What is that? That's a, that's a whole part factory. Yeah, but it was basic though. But it was still so much fun. I enjoyed it a lot. Alright, let's do a pulse out here. The thing is, like, I could do mining here if I wanted to. The problem is there's just not, like, a cl Ooh, some stations? Cluster of stations out here? There's not, like, any... Nobody's buying the stuff. So I don't want to get... Space. I don't want to get all cozy and start mining things if it won't be, like, convenient to do medium to long term. 
or we'll just say medium term. Let's make sure we dodge these rocks. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, it was super cool, but the coding could have been anything but basic. I think that they intended for the things that people coded to be very basic. Literally, not like a pun. And then people were like, no, if you give me any ability to code, I will for sure make things overly complicated. <laughs> and for those, <gasps> dude, silicon refinery, yeah. Okay, this is what we've been looking for. I don't know if a satellite will be able to reach the middle of these. But yeah, I, I, I think when people wanted to get all advanced with it... That's when it revealed its limitations, you know? This is just an oil factory and a claytronics factory. Claytronics, I don't know what they're made out of, Emo Duck, but they are apparently a very important building material uh, when it comes to... when it comes to making modules for space stations. Okay, if I just, I wish there was a way to preview. I don't need to have coverage over the oil station, but I can just by moving a little bit. Satellite. Do not click self-destruct, just, let's try this again. Ceramic computers. Some kind of computer. But yeah, it's a very important building block material, basically. Empty space. All right, let's try dumping this again. I know that this is probably messing with your brains. So let's rotate that <laughs> and deploy a satellite. Uh, I think that that should work, right? See, now I went too far up. I want to make sure it's perfect. It has to be perfect. Check radius of satellite, then just check each station to see the distance. Okay, that's probably a good idea. I don't know. Radar range is 30 kilometers. So I guess as long as we're 30 kilometers away, Like, how, how far are we from that? 27.6, so it, in theory it should work. All right, that'll do. And we've got another highway taking us somewhere else, but look at all the ore out here. This, this might be a good spot. Unfortunately, Silicon's price is just only, is low. It's like 115. We can't afford to try and make it perfect. Like the price around the, the sectors might have just dropped. Because we found a price up here that was 130, where was it? 139 at one point in Argon Prime, but God knows how long ago that was. But here's the thing. This factory is so close to the field that we can probably just make up the difference in price by just mining here and then doop and then going back. We could travel further for a better price, but that's also going to increase the uh, the time the travel time, right? Haven't played this game since when it first came out. I know there's been like two or three DLCs released. A new one, how is it now? I haven't played since 2020 of Fires, so this is my first time playing since then. I just got all the DLCs on the last Steam sale. Um, but honestly, it's got a bunch of patches, and from what I can tell, it seems like it's in a pretty good place now. There's a lot more quality of life stuff. Uh, they've improved the ability to automate things. I think they've lowered the, the barrier to getting, like, higher level pilots, so your automated trading is a little bit more accessible. Um, we're, they're on, like, 6.0 right Empty now. space. 
And the DLCs primarily just add the new factions and the new ships. And the new storylines. I haven't really gotten to see any of them. I've seen the Split, because that's what I played Split Vendetta back in 2020. And uh, we ended up getting some Split ships. But I haven't seen any of the new stuff. I'm not running any mods. Uh, we're doing our first, our first bit of mining. With 6.0, they added new graphical and physics engines. Yeah, it's very pretty. Uh, I think it looks great. We're running at all max graphic settings. Uh, Chad, how is the 8 megabit per second download or downstream been for you guys? I'm just curious if there's been anybody who normally watches on Source but can't watch on Source. Uh, I, I, I'm just hoping it doesn't adversely affect anybody. That, that's my only concern. Because um, sometimes 6 megabits is fine, especially when it's like a 2D game, but for the 3D stuff, it just ekes out a little bit more quality at 1080p source. Is he talking about the megabits again? Yeah, there's a bunch more people here than when I started the stream, so I'm just checking to see if anybody's been like, damn, my stream is buffering, and I don't know why, and they've just been keeping it to themselves the entire time. Ooh, let's find some rocks. The problem is, everything looks very close, and it's not. <laughs> Some of these things are very far away, I think. Silicon refinery. Okay. Asteroid. You can click on asteroids. Asteroid. Asteroid. And there are better ways to do this. Asteroid. So, we're going to do this the most basic way. I've been good for the few minutes I've been here. Happy to see more games like this exist. For sure, I love the simulation games as a asteroid. genre. Let's just go up to this random asteroid and, uh, and see what's happening out here. We're getting cocks a little bit right now. As soon as they talk about the bitrate, stream fluctuation, asteroid. So if you see any buffering now, it's not the eight megabits, it's just internet service provider. Is there a way to toggle on and off your ship's natural lights? By chance? Okay, I don't know if this has resources. I don't know what it's composed of. This is all uncharted territory for me. I know that you can get some intel on... We, we have, like, probes that you can launch. I think we're going to change to scanning mode. Is this scanning mode? Yes. There's travel mode, scan mode, long-range scan mode. Chad, how do I scan an asteroid to see its contents? I, I did watch a tutorial, but that was last night, and I forgot. Oh, that one's just empty. Okay, I gotcha. So we did scan it. I was... I did it correctly. And there are faster ways to do this than manually checking every rock. Asteroid. But I want to just go... I want to be a baby right now. So this one's also empty. I wish there was a way to, like, mark these off so that you don't accidentally go check them out. Can I just destroy them? <laughs> I guess that would be one way. Simply destroy the rock. Um, it's going to take a while, though. Someone told me, hey, just blow up a rock already. So I thought I would oblige. There you go. What, pray tell? Asteroid. 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 Did we just do? What are these little chunks? Are these just going to be rock? Like... Are they going to go into the inventory as rock? 
I'm like kind of just curious now. What did I just get? <sighs> Why? Oh yeah, we still have these security bypass filters because we can't sell those. Um, what are... How do you separate things in your pocket from things that are just on board the ship? So I think we, we just have two Nvidia Oxide was just in there, and we got some Unstable Crystal, which has an exclamation. That is in your pocket. Okay, how do I see my ship's cargo? Zero out of 3,500 meters cubed. Fair enough. All right, let's kind of um, go a little deeper into the asteroid field. And see what we can find. Shift enter is also your cargo. Alright, that's that's faster, yeah. Asteroid. Let's scan some rocks. Big rock. That one's also empty. Very sad. It's hard to see at a glance. Which of these rocks are close enough to investigate? I will not let you get away with this. Someone is having a really bad time on comms right now. Empty space. Who is this? There's two asteroids close enough Asteroid. to interact with. Also empty. And then I saw another one that was this way. Asteroid. This one is also empty. Okay, so this asteroid field sucks so far. Empty space. But yeah. I, um... Unironically just enjoy... <laughs> this aspect asteroid i i like the learning period of just figuring out what i'm looking for and how to adjust your eyes for what you're trying to see asteroid hey we found a tiny tiny silicon rock it's blue okay so i was wondering how far away we could use this scan to actually see that um, there might be something and that's also appearing differently, it's got like an orange hue on the minimap. Have you done any ship mining in No Man's Sky? In No Man's Sky is a little bit more basic in that you do just kind of go pew 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 and the rocks explode. You do pew 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 explode rocks in this game as well, but um, it's not the same level of arcadiness. And I think Elite Dangerous is probably the most sort of mechanically simulated. All right, this has got a small yield, but just for the purposes of practice, we should try this out. We should give this a test. So as we get closer here, chat, notice how some of this has a little highlight, right? Like there's a bit of rock right there that you can't really see without the scanning mode. And it kind of changes, it seems like. So if we just go If we just poke it, what happens? I think we're supposed to shoot that section, right? Am I am I doing this wrong? Maybe my mining laser sucks. There we go. Inventory items are small things you carry whereas cargo is stored in your ship. That is correct. 
So if we do shift enter, we now have 520 out of 3,500 meters cubed. So that actually did go into our inventory of the ship. So we gotta shoot it, we gotta vac it. And look for more. Chat, what do your mining eyes see? Aren't we all stored in your ship? There may not be that much in this, because it is it does seem like a small yield asteroid. You guys aren't stored in the ship. You're in the mind of the pilot. I thought I saw a little bit right here, yep. Yeah. Am I imagining things, or is my laser causing the asteroid to move differently? Dude, our, this ship is so slow. I'm strafing hard to port. Sorry, starboard. Because I see there's a big chunk up here, and I can't catch up to it because the rock is spinning too fast. <laughs> my, my ship is so slow. There we go. Yeah, I was looking for you, friend. It is moving differently. God, I love putting in an honest day's work mining a space rock. So here's the thing about mining. You can just blow up the asteroid and it'll still have some resources. But finding the shinies where the concentrated ore is located is the most lucrative. It takes more work, but if you were in a hurry, you could just blow the whole damn thing up and still get a little bit. You still get some. I don't know how it compares, to be honest. I'm also not sure how to tell, um... Silicon refined asteroid. It says yield is 25. I'm assuming that, yeah, the, the number on the bottom right doesn't seem to update. So I'm assuming that, uh, you have to, like, click off, click back on. Is there a match rotation? Like, there's a match speed. Match speed is shift X, I think? So I don't think that there's a match rotation. At least not with this basic flying computer. Um, I don't see any more. We can get a little distance. So I'm sure that, like, given enough density of mineral-rich asteroids, it's probably faster to just blow through them. I don't see any more sweet spots on this. Do you have a limit to how many pew-pews you can do? No, I can shoot some more. At this stage, I can't find... Um, any additional spots to mine, so I might just go ahead and, and blow it up. Which will take a minute. Toggle the scanner to get more sweet spots. You have to refresh the scan? How does that work, exactly? <laughs> How does that work, exactly? My scanner's broken! It doesn't even show me where all the, uh, the spots are. I'm just kidding. Now there's 18 left? So it is going down. We must have hit all the big ones, because I feel like the ones we're getting at this time are not... 
that significant. Like, let's see how much this one adds. And we scoop it in. We got lodestones. Are lodestones good? That was only six silicons. So it's probably just like super low yield at this point. We probably tapped most of what it's capable of giving us. Lodestones are like a World of Warcraft resource, right? Asteroid. Hey. Hey. Get in my cargo hold. I can't actually vac this one in. It's not moving. <laughs> so be it. Are you full? Oh. No, I, I could still eat a little bit more. Okay, maybe we're full. I'm still hungry. We do have 3,500 out of 3,500. So, it looks like we've got 350 units of silicon. We are full up. Now it's time to go sell our first haul. At last. Shaq Genie says, Woohoo! Four years! What's up, four years, Shaq Genie? How you doing? Hope you're having a good Tuesday. You're here just in time for the Rock Hopper stream. Um, hello? We are slowing down not very fast. What is happening? I don't know what I just did there. We're rich. Silicon refinery. All right, let's get let's get docking clearance. That is the wrong button. Docking granted. Bad thrusters, heavy ship. Oh, it, our ship is incredibly weighted down with with silicon now. So maneuvers that I would normally make are. Straining our existing crappy thrusters at the moment. So yeah, we're having to push a lot more mass. So let's not come in here too hot. Because I, I have engine set to off and we're still sliding. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, definitely maneuverability has taken a big hit here. Alright, slow that down, slow that down. Okay. Okay. Line up with the bottom two green arrows. Make sure the nose is facing forward. Accelerate until the triangle is parallel with the two red lines. Go at about four meters per second. Just kind of sneaking on in here. There we go. And lock it. Nicely done, everybody. Successfully docked. Okay. Welcome. We're ready to do our first trade. The price is negative 12% from the average, which is not good. But we're still going to sell. We get a cool 40,000 credits. Uh, nothing insane, but that is just an honest day's work. Is that space fence? Yes, that's, that's a space fence. And they are offloading the ore. Done in a matter of seconds. Keep in mind, this is the smallest miner. So, our goal now is to get enough cash for the medium miner. Then we can start automating this small miner to go out and do its own thing. So, we're going to need a, a few more back and forth to be able to make that work. Uh, let me check my own inventory. I may have some stuff to sell. Let's actually just d disembark for a sec. No! Wrong button. Hi. 
I accidentally undocked. Can I um, just land again? Docking granted. Yes, thank you so much. That's so kind of you. I just wanted to make sure that my battery was still working. <laughs> Successfully docked. I want to get up. Yeah. Welcome. Pilot. Hello. Hello. That's our captain that we hired. Check it out, chat. Ace Tech made us a logo. <laughs> you can see it big and beautiful on the sign. But yeah, I, I love being able to walk around because this is the small ship and it's still impressively large. Hmm. Looking good. So, how far away? Yeah, there's our ship over there. Ooh, look at this one! That is a round boy. Very big. Can I help? Here you go. Can maybe? Why do I have a... Oh, I don't have a bomb launcher. They do. Never mind. I'm dumb. Uh... I don't really have anything to sell. We have lodestones, which I'm sure are not that rare. I have eight secure containers, which Chad said is good for keeping your inventory on death. Uh, just don't die. It's easy. Can you just buy more secure containers later? Let's keep all of our spacesuit upgrades and then keep the pilot seminar. All right, so we're like 200,000. Profit to you. Uh I think we're going to want like 4 to 500,000 credits for medium miner to outfit it with some basics. Eat tell the secure container death thing was a bad Tarkov joke. I believed you. They're useful too late. I sold them. I don't know what they're for. What I don't know can't hurt me. And they can't be that hard to find. I found them on accident. I'm pretty sure you just get them by chasing loot boxes. Because I think that's how I got mine. So we know what to do if we ever needed them in the future. But you still haven't told me what they're for. <laughs> so I have no clue. Okay, chat. You want to see something cool? I am getting ready to take a BRB, but check this out. Number one, we're going to go find our first ship. We need to go hire a captain for that first ship. But since this ship has a captain, we can actually... How do I open... Uh, I need to figure out how to do this on the right-hand side. Yes, so if we, if we select our mining ship, the 1 and 0... I believe... I can configure its behavior. And it doesn't even have a 1-star captain, so I'm not sure if this will work the way I want it to. But I can set its default behavior to do local auto-mining since it does have a captain. And I can tell it to mine silicon here, Grand Exchange 3. That's a zero star behavior. So local auto mine will find, mine, and sell the specified resource without traversing any jump gates or accelerators. We did not sell our first ship, no. So I can confirm I this behavior. To tell me to take off. And then I can tell it to... Um, stop doing whatever it is currently doing. Proceed with current orders. And that's my ship. Bye. 
Noom. <laughs> I don't know how it's flying like that. Don't worry about it. Uh, now, how do I set its behavior as far as it's like... Okay, individual instructions. <sighs> Default response to attack. How do I set global settings for these? I'm just gonna do it manually and say, if you're attacked, escape. Um, if you're being harassed by pirates, escape. Is that it? Press shift plus I. That's just player information. And then it's gonna be like one of these. Then go to global orders. Easy to say. Oh, there it is. Okay, so for now we can just say attack is escape. Pirate harassment is escape. Are there any other global orders that are good to change? What if they can't escape? Then they get blown up. It was never heard from again. And that guy has a brand new ship. What's up, just Lars says, is this Star Citizen? Hey, thanks for 11 months. It's like offline Eve. Eve offline. Very, very fun game. I enjoy it quite a bit. Tick off notify for now, why? Police interdiction escape, okay? Setting up a global blacklist to stay out of enemy territory is good. Right now they're only gonna stay in the local space, but I don't know how to um, tell them to not go to enemy territory. Blacklist, travel blacklist. Sorry, I didn't know you could click on this. Okay. <clears throat> Sector travel. And then apply this to all ships. Wait. What does selecting military ships and civilian ships do? So, dangerous regions are blacklisted. Sectors owned by enemies are blacklisted. You can set certain factions to avoid. Like, do I have to toggle both of these? Like, I don't understand how you blacklist military ships and civilian ships, or what, what toggling those does. This is just which ones you want to follow? Okay. I did. I, hopefully I did it right. I'm just gonna save avoid enemies and that's gonna be the name of the blacklist. Hopefully that works. I don't know if I did it right. Boom, you did it. Alright, not too bad. Now, where's my sheep? <laughs> uh, let's find it. It's like over here. Now, I have heard that sometimes ships actually won't mine unless you leave the sector. So I don't know if that's true or if I have to just not be watching them. They seem to be really close to another ship. What you doing, friends? What you doing? They're just shy. Now, I I know that they're very slow compared to what you can do. They can get stuck sometimes if you were in sector because it calculates differently. They're more efficient when you leave the sector since they have simplified physics. Okay, that's fine. Chat. <sighs> 
Uh, while I take a BRB, you watch our friend. Okay. I don't know how to change this camera view, so you can just you just watch and uh, see what they do. See what the AI does while I'm gone. <laughs> Use the live stream view. How do I uh, find my object? Oh. I mean, it's just the same thing, it seems like. Because I can do previous object, next object, AD. When I click D, it goes to that. I don't know. Just deal with it. I don't know how to get it in the special view. So listen to this. And I'll turn the volume up a little bit. And I'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you so much for waiting and watching today. All right, we can do it from here. Okay, you got it. Enjoy the space vibes, BRB.
What the hell is this ship doing? Ship is drunk. Thanks for waiting. Sorry for the extended BRB. Had to talk to Alice for a minute because she just got back from some errands.
You got blown up by pirates, but we bought you a new ship. Oh, nice. I got a little uh, Nature Valley snack bar. Chat, did it mine anything? Or has it just been actually flying in circles? It actually did? Whoa. Really? It did four asteroids? back on. Chat, does it go automatically to sell to? It says it's empty. It says it's a filled capacity of zero out of 3,500. Have I made any money? I don't remember how many credits I started with. Okay, I can see you now. Show transaction log. Good good call. Peak. 24 minutes ago. 40,000. I did that. That's how much money I did. I come in periodically to post something related to Bose surround sound because I want to upset italics. Don't conflate upsetting me with a mod times you out for spamming. They're not the same thing. See, he knows me. I know everyone. All I have to do is see your chat history. And I can see exactly all I need to know about you. He might have been blowing up empty rocks and didn't pick up anything. <laughs> he may, yeah, he actually may have been just blowing up empty rocks. But anyways, what you don't know is that the headphones I'm using right now and the earphones I've been using for over 10 years are Bose. So, got them, question mark? And I refuse to use any other headphones besides these ones. All right, here's what we can do now. I can tell this ship and give it action, in, or uh, in order rather, to dock at my current location. And that ship should, if we spy on it, start making its way to me. And then I can take control of uh, our mining vessel again. 
Are they plugged into an external mixer? They're plugged into um, a Logitech controller that I have had since I was like 17 years old. I have Logitech speakers that have been built with such astounding build quality that they are still functional, usable, and sound pretty good. They were like, um, weirdly, THX certified Logitech speakers from like 2006 that I still have and uh, I got for like a PC build. So I plug directly into that controller, which if you want to see it, I can't <sighs> chat. There's not, it, it's, it's right here. You just have to believe me. I, I can't <clears throat> move the camera. Sorry. <sighs> Chat, are they... Hang on. Are they still looking for rocks, by chance? Yes, they are. Okay. Now they're coming back to pick us up. I'm, wa <laughs> I'm waiting for mom to pick me up from school. Let's try this again. There we go. I had a Logitech 5.1 theater for a long time. It was great. Yeah. Um, we, had a, we had a Logitech 5.1 set up for, the, for a uh, TV kind of home theater system. And they were really good speakers. I'm sure that they're not as good as some, like, custom stuff you can set up now, but they were, like, kind of just easy to set up all-in-one packages. That at the time, if you weren't, like, an actual audiophile, was really difficult to do, and they just streamlined the entire process. So I think it was just, like, the usability and the ease of getting it all set up that made it so nice, and none of the speakers have gone out in all that time. But no, they're not plugged directly into the motherboard. It goes... <clears throat> headphones into Logitech controller, Logitech controller into um, Logitech subwoofer, Logitech subwoofer into motherboard. Basically. It's my current setup. Why are you heading straight to... Okay. I think it was just a perspective thing. It looked like it was going to crash into the side of the station. But it's coming back. I like this live stream cinematic camera mode. I don't know that it needs the cinematic bars on top and bottom, but okay. It's fine. That was that was a nice camera angle there. And we're back. Come on, check. You parked on the other side? I have to go. I have to go all the way over there. Okay. Gotta cross uh, the entire station to get to my ride. Hey, what I miss? What's up, Inblox? Uh, I just got back. Hey, we're about to go do some mining. What up? It's here. There's a teleport hotkey? Oh, you mean a cheater hotkey? Is that what you meant to say? For stinky cheaters? Who don't like to simulate their simulation game? It's not cheating, it's fast travel. They're the same picture. Imagine fast traveling. Chat, true or false? In X4, there is a literal teleportation technology that you can install on your space stations. True, right? 
Therefore, there is an in-game way to facilitate fast travel. So using methods outside of that are, in my opinion, not an honest part of the simulation aspects. And for my enjoyment, will not be used. In-game supported ways, totally fair, totally fine. Or you actually have to build something. Like if there was a teleport upgrade or something for these ships, that'd be cool. I understand why it's there. It's because there are some, some whiny babies who will take an EVA from their ship, float too far out, and then be like, wah, I floated too far out from my ship. I need to teleport back onto it. I get it. Space is too big. Space is too big. If I recall, the hotkey only works on stations. Sometimes it's needed if you get stuck in geometry. Well, yeah, I mean, if, if, you, if you literally get stuck, I'm not gonna be like, well, you're stuck inside of a space station, so uh, that's fair play. Sorry, didn't want to get stuck inside of a space station. You should have stopped being part ghost. Empty space. That's on you. Anyway, thanks again, just large for the 11 months of sub. We are looking for rocks. Our short term goals, uh, we're looking for some silicon and we're gonna sell the silicon, make an honest living. Let's try and come to a stop here before we ram into this one. Is this in-game music? It is, and I wouldn't mind turning it up a bit if I can. But yes, it is. We're gonna go into scanning mode. Got that sweet purple RGB. Hey, that's what we're looking for right there. Asteroid. Oh wait, is that the same one? It has a yield of seven. <laughs> that doesn't seem good. Uh, that is what we're looking for, but yield seven seems bad. In my opinion. Chad, is there a coffee net? Is there a coffee net? I got it! First try, what is that? I don't know, but I got it. I think it was a coffee nap. Sorry to, so, sorry to clap at you. If you don't put It's right, it's a little dot on my <laughs> Okay, just to prove that I didn't make that up. Well, <sighs> I don't know if that was a gnat, because there's actually a tiny amount of blood on my hand, and I think I'm going to, uh, go wash my hand real quick. <laughs> Just hold on. That may have been a mosquito, actually. Okay, thanks for waiting, I'm back. <sighs> now, where were we? We're looking for, in scan mode, some asteroids <sighs> that may have something of substance for us. In X4, I don't believe that resources are finite in that um, 
you can never mine all of a given resource. But there are areas where I think they will be more densely populated than others. For games like this, simulating every single rock was kind of the main feature of something like Starbase. And it's just, at a grand scale, just not really possible without, like, quantum computing CPUs, I don't think. Empty space. What that? Asteroid. Ooh, ore. Okay, so ore is less valuable to sell than silicon. It seems like you need to be roughly 10 kilometers away. Asteroid from an asteroid for it to be able to be scanned presently. It's hard to tell how far away we are. It looks like there's another one. There's a baby one. Asteroid. Yep. Ooh. Asteroid. There we go. That's a decent silicon yield. So we can mine ore and we can indeed use ore for things as well. But if we take a look at the at the trade menu, Can we find somewhere that has a buy order for ore? Chat, does nobody really buy ore typically? Ore is just generally not as valuable, I don't think. Can you refine ore? You can refine pretty much all of these things. Yeah, ore is like volume, but not quality. There's a lot of ore. So right now, since we're just trying to make money, uh, we're trying to make our trips valuable, and for that, we're going to be looking, I think, for silicon is, is fine. There are better things like Nvidium, but those are going to be rarer, is my understanding. And I'm not the expert. Okay, show me some hot spots. Asteroid. Come on in. Scoop it up. So that was 152 silicon. Um, to get an idea of how much that is. That already filled up. That one drop was 2,200, like two thirds of our total ship's inventory. <laughs> so some of these are a little juicier than others in that way. Also crystals on asteroids, but they got nerfed badly. Yeah, I remember um, back in the day, People were saying crystal this, crystal that, so I think they just changed the meta. And we're full. That was it. Good job. Uh, what I'm going to do, since we're like right next to where we want to be, I'm actually going to start guidance to this so I can come back and maybe... Asteroid. That, that, that's still a juicy asteroid. Like, that's still got stuff. Is there a way to mark it? I guess I could just put a satellite down and then come back to the satellite. That's actually a pretty good idea, I think. Let's uh, let's drop a satellite. That way I can plant coordinates to the silicon refinery. Just a little ship. And then we can go travel mode. We are heavy now. This thing is swinging hard in different directions. Resource probe is good for mining, in my opinion. Yeah, we were saying we were just going to experiment with basic mining first, and then work our way up to intermediate and then advanced. So we're just starting. That's why we have a small ship, and we're just doing things ourselves, because you need to know how to do the core mechanics before you start doing things more advanced. You have to understand how the game functions. So I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting out of travel mode really early because this is taking this long to slow down with a full inventory. Silicon refinery. Let's do shift D, get some docking permissions. 
take this chunker in. Yeah, uh, <laughs> pitch, yaw, and rotation's very difficult right now. It's just super slow. The thrusters are doing their best. Let's start slowing down. Okay, big ship just went in there. There's our little spot with a hologram on the ground. Oh, so heavy. Oh my god. The side thrusters. Look at these, look at these tiny little thrusters right there. Those, those are not enough. Where the heck am I, dude? All right, we're good. We just need to take it easy. Nose up. Align horizontally. Ooh, easy, 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 easy. Stop that drone. Stop that drone. Who are you talking to, friend? Because I know it's not me. That's a big traitor. That was a fun ship to fly. And we're in. Okay. Another honest day. Welcome. Trading silicon for close to 40k. And they're gonna offload. I love that they keep our little logo up there on the top left too. <laughs> That's the best part. Now. I want to go back to our satellite. And uh, we'll do one more load with that, and then I'll experiment, I think, with the resource probe. Because I feel pretty comfortable with navigating into the asteroid fields, figuring out how to identify uh, where the resources are, getting that cargo, uh, via the tractor beams after we do the precision mining. Wow, that's way more profitable than shooting criminals outside of stations. Yeah, we're in the mining game today. And, uh, the next step is having, I don't know, like four to five hundred thousand in cash. And once we do that... We'll be able to get a medium miner, I think. And then we'll, uh, allow the pilot of this mining vessel to... We can actually just do two mining ops at once. Belt mining is my favorite cozy activity in Star Citizen. How does mining in Star Citizen uh, work, if you want to elaborate on it? I know it's kind of a big question, but I would I guess I'm just asking, like, how detailed is it, say, compared to the other space games that are out there? Please don't hit that. Okay. Now, where... Asteroid. Is this our silicon friend? Yeah, it is. Asteroid. That is an a that do be an asteroid though. In Star Citizen, you need someone in the cargo space stacking boxes. That sounds like fun. Asteroid cracking in Elite Dangerous is pretty fun. Yeah, that's been one of the things that I've... that has made me think, hmm... Maybe playing Elite Dangerous again someday is not the worst idea? Chat, am I pulling the entire asteroid? I just did like a vacuum pull and the whole rock is going. What? What? Okay, I am at a complete stop right now. Like, I am not moving. That's a powerful, powerful tractor beam. Oh, uh, we're already full. <laughs> and there is still a good 123 yield on this thing. So that, that's a fair bit. That's a fair bit. We found a good one. That's rewarding. All right, we're heavy again. So we're gonna line up with the station roughly. Switch to travel mode, turn off mouse steering, and head on back. 
In Star Citizen, it's about cracking asteroids, keeping an optimal charge till it pops in smaller rocks. I kind of wish I liked Star Citizen more than I do. It seems really cool in concept. Now I can actually run it. I'm not opposed to trying it out at some point. I feel like playing Star Citizen solo is difficult, though, because trying to figure everything out from scratch. Uh, the way I've heard it described is that trying to learn how to do anything in Star Citizen requires you to basically take a class on how to do everything, which is both terrifying and amazing sounding at the same time. This is, dude, it takes forever to slow down. I love, I love the change in physics and mass and weight. Docking granted. It feels really satisfying, like tangibly having the handling on your vessel just diminish when you have a totally full load of ore. Feels good. You can also get a hand miner and do it on foot. In Star Citizen? Now's a really bad time to try out Star Citizen. The servers have been in a bad state for a month or two. Oh, I do this every time. Can't control this ore. We're swinging wide. I think we're going for Bay 3. Yeah, Bay 3. Shoulders lined up. Uh, five meters per second. Getting a little lower. Three meters per second. I can see the number coming up, which means we are there. It's Alex. I cannot in good faith recommend Star Citizen. <laughs> Is that bad? Welcome. <laughs> Uh, Tuna Man said, is this a game I could use dual sticks or a Hotas with? You could definitely use a Hotas with this. I just choose to use mouse and keyboard because, um, a lot of this game becomes kind of like a map screen game at some point, and you will just need a mouse and keyboard to advance beyond the stage in which you're, like, the only ship in your fleet. If that makes sense. And I honestly think that the mouse controls are fine, once you get used to them. But you could, you could definitely set up a Hotas. It becomes a 4X game. It is definitely a 4X. X4 is a 4X. Space strategy simulation. Satellite. Star Citizen's rough, but the experience of just waking up in bed, flying to a shipwreck to look for survivors is what got me hooked. Like, waking up in your real life bed or waking up in your game bed. <laughs> it can be fun, but it is absolutely a mess. Hmm. Can you upgrade a smaller ship enough to take on a super big ship? I don't know. You mean like in combat? I'm sure that there are some like tactical ships. Maybe some missile boats or something like that. Chat would be the person, the, the group to ask for how that combat scenario might work. Can you take on big ship with with a fighter? Yes, says chat. Yes, but a swarm would be needed. Yeah, it'd probably be hard to do solo. Asteroid. I see it. I'm trying to switch to mouse controls. There we go. Asteroid. So it kind of follows us around. Yeah, car carriers are in the game. They're pilotable as well. So that's a thing. It's doable solo, but it takes a while. So I guess the short answer is yes. 
Star Citizen is best if you have a high tolerance for bugs and crashes. Yeah, it, it seems like, first of all, I'm kind of used to that anyways. Uh, we still got, like, some space and storage, like 1,300 meters cubed. So let's find some more spots. I understand that the pockets are generated on refresh. I would prefer that that wasn't the case. If I could change one thing about the mining experience in X4, it would be that. But I understand that it's there because it's serviceable, because you're not meant to just perma be a space miner. You're supposed to just be able to mine space... Control a space miner fleet, which is reasonable. And that's what we're working on anyway. Okay, that wasn't even close to enough. Eh, it's a good pocket. But yeah, Star Citizen, as an idea, is very implicitly appealing to me. Now nah, we're full. Just full simulation. That's why I said it was both appealing and scary at the same time, that everything... Ooh, so heavy. Oh my god, the thrusters. Look how long it's taken to catch up. <laughs> Where everything is that detailed? Um... Where you do have to don all the I's and cross all the T's. I think that that is just cool. And also scary. Have I ever thanked you for not playing Dead by Daylight? Wow, just coming in and throwing shade? We played, um, the... F Did we play the Freddy game on stream? That was years ago. That was similar to Dead by Daylight. What game was that? No, we didn't play Freddy. It was, um, the Jason Voorhees game. Wasn't it? But I never played Dead by Daylight. So heavy. An arena mineral. Four kilometers Thank away. God. We overshot by four kilometers. All right, slow down, slow down. Docking not possible. You can dock at the target using your spacesuit. Chad, are they full? Silicon refinery. Oh, did I click on the wrong thing? Docking. Great. Okay, <laughs> I clicked on the wrong thing. My bad. Still got it installed. Still go back and play a few maps. I. I like uh, a bunch of different space games for a bunch of different reasons. I think I would enjoy Star Citizen for its just dedication to simulation, in spite of the obvious memes of how bloated it has become as an example of development gone haywire. Uh, but at the same time, I also like the... Oops. I need to decelerate. I like the arcadey ones, like No Man's Sky. So I, I enjoy the full range. Successfully docked. Welcome. I would say in terms of arcadiness, it probably goes. If you're just talking about single person, single ship, without discussing commanding a fleet, of the games I can think of off the top of my head, I would say arcade most arcade is no man's sky. Next is probably this, but there's a, wi a wider gap. Um, and again, this is talking about single ship command. Then I would say Elite Dangerous and then probably Star Citizen, which I haven't played, but that's just my expectations in terms of how complicated it is to just fly a specific give any given ship and do things with it. But this game scales up complexity in terms of managing um, many ships which the other games don't really do. Really dangerous in X4 seem to be very similar when it comes to single ship movement. Movement, yes, but I'm thinking more like the mining experience, like the things you do with the ship to combat, I think is a little bit more detailed and focused on in Elite Dangerous. 
the mining is a little bit more focused on. Here is probably more trading is focused on. I think the trading system is quite deep here. And then exploration is a little bit more involved in Elite Dangerous. In terms of like, the fact that you can go off grid in Elite Dangerous and not come back for months, and then when you do come back, sell planetary data. You're gonna make millions, but if you die while you're out there, you lose everything that you've gotten to that point. It's pretty cool. It has, it has some neat features. I think the X4's strong suit is in the like empire management. And that that's where it really shines. Okay, we are here to trade. Price is going down. We're probably driving the price down. I would guess. We're almost where we want to be. This is going to push us up over 300,000 credits. Yeah, 329,000. Uh, somebody asked about Star Sector. We've played like hundreds of hours of Star Sector. So you could say that we like it here. I'm waiting on the next big update. And then I want to start a new Star Sector campaign. But no, I haven't played Everspace. Everspace would probably be the most arcadey. I don't care as much for the rogue light aspect. I think it would be a fun game to play just because it would look very pretty, but I don't really care about roguelike, roguelite that much. Satellite. Chad, it's okay if you like it. That's fine. <laughs> I get it. They know you like it. They know. You just can't stop talking about Everspace. It's the, sp it's the space game where they go pew pew. That's okay. Liking things is not okay. Um, my problem with with Everspace is that I think it looks fun. But when I watch the trailers, the flying reminds me of, like, flying in Star Fox, but without the, like, character appeal of Star Fox. without the, like, charm that Star Fox has. <sighs> Maybe I'll try it one day. I do like space, and I do have a new computer that would be able to turn all the graphics up to ultra. Which, if that's not a reason to play games, then I don't know what is. Also, I think this- is this guy running out? Asteroid. Yeah, this guy's running out of yield. We're gonna have to find a new rock here shortly. What was that? That was only six. We're only getting like 16 silicon at a time. Yeah, this is. I say we just crack this guy open. Land. Let's back up a little bit, shall we? Now, when we have a Mark II Miner, this is going to be so much easier to do. Alright, I don't know what we're picking up here. But I'm going to try and pull some of these bad boys over. Asteroid. What are we collecting? Some just rogue silicon? There's really not that much left. What about mining in EVE? How do you mine an Eve? Don't you just target a rock and orbit it and then laser go pew? I feel like... Satellite. 
satellite. Target rock, press F1. I mean, that's simplicity is fine, too, I guess. The thing about mining in EVE is... What makes it fun isn't the mining. Hey. Did I pick that up? Oh yeah, I did. Okay, I picked it up. <laughs> I thought I was gonna break it. Uh, what makes mining in fun... My, yeah. What makes mining in EVE fun... Is not the actual act of mining. It's the fact that... You, while mining and doing something innocent... Stand a high chance of being intercepted by ne'er-do-wells. Who are there to, uh ruin your game experience and there's this risk and kind of camaraderie with the other people that you go out and do mining with where you're like in this together kind of like this brotherhood of groups of miners and or escorts going out and doing stuff it's the teamwork aspect So we're looking for, we're, we're in scanning mode right now. We're kind of just going at slow sublight speed. We have to be, I think, within 10 kilometers of a rock for it to change colors if it has um, any ore in it. And uh, we're gonna experiment with some, with some resource drones soon. But I think we just do this legit and then experiment with the, with the mining assists. The mining mechanics haven't changed, but they added a lot of variety of how you actually get asteroids now. Ace Tech, the least surprising thing you could tell me is that you enjoy EVE Online. That would be like a, oh yeah, of course Ace Tech enjoys EVE Online. Like I can, I don't, it just, that just completely fits my expectations. Look at this bad boy. Look at that. Are we upside down? The camera is upside down. I saw something over here light up. But it might have been a star. Yeah, that might have just been a star. You are as right as you can possibly be. <laughs> I haven't played EVE online in a very long time. Ooh, there's a rock. Asteroid. But when I did play EVE, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Like, it, it was super fun. So, uh, I completely understand anybody who's still addicted, because I know that they've been continuing to update the game and fostering reasons to come back for returning players. Very cool game. Graphic updates, all that stuff. Um, when I played, it was like, whew, ages ago. I played in like... 2009? 2010? Somewhere around there? 2009 to 2010? 2011, maybe? 160 silicon, man! That's pretty good, okay. Not bad at all. For our little baby vessel. When I played chat, I didn't mine. I didn't PvP. I scalped. <laughs> Alright, we're full again. Uh, I'm gonna drop... ...a satellite. So we can come back to this exact spot. And then... ...start guidance to the silicon refinery and take this little boat full of rocks in for a deposit. Anyway, what I did is I sat in different stations and studied the economy. I found out what things sold for in different stations and how much those things sold for in other stations. And then... I bought low and I sold high. 
I had a notepad with a whole bunch of different um, important pieces. Like, I didn't know what half the stuff I bought was used for, but I started to slowly piece together what um, things were necessary for building and what different, like, mid to end game players would would need. And I found the things that were expensive, but only used by people who had too much money. And those people with too much money weren't gonna shop around for the cheap prices. No, no, no. They needed whatever they needed now. So I just simply bought up and monopolized all the stock of whatever the building material or the given item was. And I jacked the prices up 250%. And then played the, um, cut prices by 100 isk whenever somebody undercuts you game. All day. Make sure my prices were the first ones to fill. And, uh, I made, I made good, good isk that way. Just scalping. And trading. It was fun. Sounds boring. It sounds boring if you like, uh, if you don't like number go up and you don't like getting rich. Because I only paid for my first month or two of subscription to EVE Online and then I made enough money playing the market to, uh, just buy my subscription with in-game ISK from that point on. So, may sound boring to you, but for a college student, getting to play my MMO for free was worth it. And uh, I got to see my income just go up. Etal sitting on the G to undock spamming contacts. Contracts, sorry. Basically, Docking yeah. Granted. This is a great time. Alright, where are we... How, where the heck is the dock here? Can't see out my dang window. Gotta be over here, right? Docking aborted. Docking granted. Silicon refinery. Docking granted. Where's the dock? What is this arrow? Did you own a freighter? Um, I, I had some haulers, and it was really fun because hauling complete full inventories of stuff that you knew was worth millions was really f exhilarating. So, part of the fun was just finding routes that I deemed safe enough to continuously take, and trying to just stay under the radar while, while ru running those routes. Okay, there it is. I see it now. That was the, the real fun. We're just like, okay, I gotta take a haul. Hope I make it without somebody blowing me up. Mm, grip my teeth and let's go. Good stuff. But yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with, with Eve. Where the heck is this taking me? This is a uh, dangerous route. There it is. That's where we want to be. All right, let's slow it down before we ram somebody's ship. <laughs> there we go. All right, line it up, bring it on down, and we're in. Show ship, please. We are in a Successfully tier one small Welcome. trader, a small Talati, sorry, miner. 
And uh, we're doing some manual silicon mining for us. I say we get... <sighs> Maybe two more hauls? I don't know exactly how much money we're going to need. Probably like... I want to say like 450. 450 would be good. All right, I can I can I can show you how we look. We'll do uh, start guidance to our little marker. Set up a satellite right there, and then I can do autopilot. Autopilot uh, to the marker, and then we can do a little bit of this. This is our this is our little boat. Uh, we bought this at the beginning of stream. And we're getting some mileage out of it. <sighs> Alright, let me... Let me shut the window, because it's getting dark outside. There we go. But yeah, it's a sweet looking game. How do you uh, hide the cinematic bars? AF8. I mean, I don't mind them. They look, they look good both ways. Noom. And we're home. Autopilot disengaged. All right, scanning mode on. Yep, there's our little blue rock. Asteroid. Got 196 yield left of silicon in this. Let's slow down. Space truck in. We're doing space trucking with the mining angle. We can do some legitimate space trucking too. But I haven't traded yet on this particular run. I think trading is pretty fun in this game though, because what you do is you have to find all the different little trading depots and get yourself a little information network set up so that you can get real-time updates on the prices. And then, um, once you have real-time updates on the prices, you kind of have to just figure out... I'm sure that there's some, like, meta items to look for, but... If you don't know those, it's kind of fun having to actually be like, okay, I am learning what everybody produces, what everybody is buying, how much those things are worth, when prices are good, when prices are bad. And then it's really satisfying Asteroid. getting a hauler. Are we full? We might be full. Oh, we're full. Oh, that was fast. <clears throat> okay, yeah, when we find the juicy rocks, these ones are pretty good. But it's really satisfying getting like upgrading to a medium hauler and then now you're now you're getting a full inventory of that you've got some trade routes that you like uh the game is dynamically changing the economy so you can't just run the same route forever keeps you on your toes create artificial shortages once you start getting the larger ships have a little trade fleet with some trained pilots who can seek out deals and try to make those trades automatically on their own. It's pretty fun. Space trucking is is uh, just really solid in this game, I think. Space trucking on the interstellar highway. Yeah, because it's literally a highway. <laughs> but thanks again, Burnt Heat, for the 23 months of sub. Glad you're having fun. Sticking around. And welcome back for one more. All right, I'd say let's uh, trade this, get one more haul, and then start looking for a ship upgrade. Get a medium vessel. All right, start slowing down. We need about 15 kilometers just to come to a stop here. Almost. Docking granted. They still want a modern freelancer sat. I, here's the thing about freelancer. Freelancer was one of my favorite games of all time. That was certainly one of my first sci-fi games, one of the first games that taught me about like six degrees of freedom type of movement. And I think if you just remade it and, re and put it out today, it would be a bad game. 
<laughs> okay, not that it's like, oh, Freelancer was bad, actually. No, I'm not saying anything that controversial. I'm just saying that it was a very simple game. And it was extremely good at the time for what it was. But we've, we've done a lot for video games in the length of time since that's been out. And the modern conveniences and the modern kind of gameplay expectations have changed dramatically. So while it was a phenomenal game that was so good, it even got some of my non-gaming family into gaming. Um, I had, I think, a, one of my uncles played a bunch of Freelancer because they saw me playing it on their computer. Welcome. Like, it was a fantastic game. Loved it, tried to replay a couple years ago. It doesn't really hold up. Yeah, it was just a different time. That was a revolutionary game for when it came. I don't even... What year did Freelancer come out, chat? Um, okay. I'm gonna guess... 2003. I'm gonna guess, like, 2003. How close am I? Wow, it was March 4th, 03. Right on the money. 100%. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah, uh, our expectation of what, like, action and space games should be in 2003, we definitely had some differing expectations. Still a great game, though. What's up, Godly Ali? Asta? People arriving? Hey, all. Uh, we got, we got one more... Satellite. ...hall before retirement. We just crossed over 400,000 credits. Feels good. Now, we might need more. I'm just guessing about 450,000. 500k might be a little safer. We can always just buy the bare minimum that we need to get the ship off the ground and then save up some more and then kind of um spend that money on some upgrades for the ships that we've already got isn't the worst idea but anyway if you're just joining us chat we're in our first small mining rig all by ourselves all by our lonesome but honestly, it's been a lot of fun. I'm, I'm just enjoying this, like, learning process. If we figured out how to identify rocks that we want to tap for resources. We figured out how to kind of track down asteroid fields on the galaxy map. We figured out how to precision mine these nodes. Asteroid. This one's got about 67 yield left, so it's kind of running out of steam here. Why is the asteroid coming towards... Oh, it's because I'm accelerating towards it at 18 <laughs> meters per second. Why is the big rock getting closer? That's so weird. Someone explain this. Me expecting Homeworld 3 soon. When is the new Homeworld supposed to come out? Homeworld is one of those games that I always wanted to play, but I remember playing the OG one and kind of not understanding the extra dimensions of movement in that game. And the last couple Homeworld releases have been sort of underwhelming. I think. Yeah, we're about we're about half full. World 3 on the horizon, almost. Maybe. Okay, I think we've taken this rock for all it's worth. Nothing left. Not quite full. We need 500 more. Okay, we're in the middle of the asteroid and asteroid field. 
And uh, kind of going along that, when we look at the map here of a given sector, these red hexes indicate, we look at the legend, that these are mineral regions. So there are floating asteroids that can have minerals in them, right? We're also interested in pink regions because that can be mineral or gas, like these ones. But we can't manually mine gas in this game. You have to have other ships kind of do that for you. There's not like a an action you can take to mine gas. You have to have other ships do it. It kind of um, obfuscate isn't the right word. What's the word I'm looking for? It happens off screen. It's it's magic. That's what I'm saying. Oh, actually, where's my asteroid? I mean. <laughs> I guess you just take your pick, buddy. You can have whichever asteroid you want. Uh, what I was going to say was, where is... Satellite. That's my satellite. Okay, I want to pick that up. This has been a little... I've been using satellites as a little space marker so we can find the rocks that we've been mining again. What's up, Astro RPG? This is one game I barely touched, but I really want to learn and get into. I'm just going to sit here for a bit. Luckily, I think X4 has a decent first tutorial and also, uh, in my opinion, kind of has like a good intro where you really don't have to manage much except yourself and your little ship that you start with. So it can be a little overwhelming with all the menus. There's something blue on this rock. Asteroid. I think it glimmered. What this? Crystals. Chat, do we find some crystals? Are these good? Crystal. I got an Achievo. Pick up 99 containers in space. Minaline crystals. Asteroid. So, when there are crystals, are there usually only one crystal formation on a given asteroid? Or should I continue looking on this rock for more? It seems super good. It's going into our personal inventory. Yo, these are worth 10,000 credits a piece? That was a 170,000 credit haul. <laughs> okay. We were gonna be happy with just a like 40,000 credit haul. And um, we just 4X'd right there with our mining. Usually one per rock. Oh yeah, we, we're, we're good for a new ship now for sure. That's sweet. Okay, well, I'll, I'll keep looking for those. So that's what crystal mining is. You gotta find... And it can be on any side of any of these rocks, and that's what makes it probably challenging. I don't know how far away you can actually see. Because I see some red spots on some of these big rocks, but I think that those are just like... Asteroid. Empty veins for all intents and purposes. Well, um, I don't need to go min-max and get the other 500 meters cubed of space, so why don't we just head back instead to the silicon refinery. Make our money and uh, then start the process of going to grab our medium ship. Let's go travel mode with shift one. And we're, we're a little laden, we're a little heavy, so... Gonna want to slow down ahead of time. Yeah, I heard that the crystal hunting got nerfed a bit. Sounds like it was a little OP. Time for a mining fleet, yeah. It's time for our second ship. And then we just start snowballing, scaling up. And we're gonna get to the point where we're gonna have it fully automated, where we can kind of go do our own thing, and then the mining ships will just try and find some ore or some silicon. We'll have to guide them to the right place, wherever we want that to happen. 
Also, while we've been trading, we've been trading with the Talati. Because we're trading with the Talati, I think it slowly pushes our rep up. Plus five may be the base. Uh, but I do think that if we just trade enough with them, reputation will go up. There's a bad guy here. Civilian ship D, silicon refiner. But it's just a civilian. They're not gonna hurt us. We're good. But yeah, it, it is time to get the mining fleet going. I'm excited. Upgrading ships is always fun. All right, we're kind of we're kind of a heavy boy right now. So what is happening here? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Not my problem. Don't look at them, and then they won't be able to hurt you. Just keep eyes forward. Successfully I'm a little nervous on their behalf, though. Welcome. Okay. Well, we can trade stuff that's on board our ship. We have there. The price of silicon is kind of just a little bit subpar, but that's okay. Give my 34k. Now to trade stuff that's in our inventory, like the crystals, we need to actually go off the ship. And find. <laughs> I don't. That uh, ship is upside down. The other ship is not okay. Don't let it affect you. All right. Head to the trader's corner. Can you make storage facilities so you can game the price of goods? Yes, that's really bothering me. Technically, yes, you can indeed, but you have to be able to make your own space stations, which are very expensive, especially for Hello. us at this can stage. Here you go. All right, I don't know why I have a space fly egg. I don't know if they'll buy it. I guess they will. We have two lodestones. I don't want those. Chad, how do I sell the crystals? Oh, they're here. Sorry, they are here. Dude, 174k in cash pushes up to 600, 600,000. Sweet. Those are some solid crystals. All right, we got bank. Good profit. We got money. Let's go get a ship. Not that one. Preferably. <laughs> Not that one. Let's make a save. That that's causing some concern for me. Alright, are we just gonna stick with Talati? Are we gonna stick with the Talati miners? For now? We can do a we can do a look. We can do a search. Let's hit the encyclopedia. Do ship comparison. Choose medium ships. Okay, so there's actually like three? One. We're looking at mineral miners. One, two, three. Yep. Yeah. So we got the Plutus. And we're gonna do minimum preset loadout. We've got the Man Manorina. This is the Talati one, I think. With minimum presets. And then last we have the drill, which is very straightforwardly named. Okay, so looking at these, can you not compare the DLC ships or do you have to find those factions first? I don't have any, first of all, we haven't found the factions and secondly, we have to be able to actually like trade with them by landing on their stations and or finding wharfs and stuff. I'm just gonna stay with the basics for now anyway. 
So as you can see, um, if we're comparing to the Plutus as a base, if we're just looking for pure solid storage space, the Plutus has the most. 11,520 storage versus 10,000. This is roughly three times our small ship storage. So that's pretty sweet. Do you get to the point where it feels like a management sim? Um, yeah, I mean, you can... It, it definitely does scale to a management sim. Y since it's a sandbox, you really choose how much management you want to do. Because there's not like a win condition. If you want to be just like a fleet manager who sits in the map all the time and automates everything, you can do that. If you want to actually fly ships, you can do that too. Just depends on what you want to do. The uh, Manorina has a little bit less storage, but its difference is it has a bit more acceleration and maneuverability. Strafe acceleration, yaw, pitch, roll, etc. A little bit less to the HP. I don't think that's going to save you, but it has the least amount of HP. Chat, what is the benefit of having additional crew on board these ships? Does it speed up any kind of efficiency while they're just on their own doing stuff? And then finally, the drill has the least amount of storage space and the most, uh, not really, the, the, actually the drill just kind of sucks. It doesn't seem that good. Slightly more HP, I guess. Mining speed goes up. Crew equals repairs and mining efficiency, but has no effect on trading. Okay, um, how, this is a dumb question, how do you hire crew? <laughs> Wait, do you, like, is it easier, do you, do you go up and talk to them in person? Because when you build a ship, there's like a hire pilot button. Do you, I guess you can choose how much crew you want. It'll just generate crew. They'll all be level zero. The drill may be cheaper. The drill may be cheaper. But yeah, let's go for the biggest storage. We'll stick with the Talati. I think that's probably the standard. Was that the Plutus? Security would like to remind all visitors to keep their children with them at all times. Keep time. your children with you. No, the Plutus is not Talati. This is Paranid. Uh, t -t 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 -t. The Man Arena is the vanguard. Chat, there is a second, like, where where the hell is a net coming from? There's no water source in here. Is this Coffee Net? City? Like, I don't understand. I already killed one. What is happening? How does this happen at every Vegas home? My office is so clean. I literally take the cups out every day. Indoor plants? No, nothing in here, certainly. I don't know why they'd be in my office, specifically. I am the Nat King. It's up there. <laughs> you have to believe me. You have to believe me. Ugh. Okay. What were we looking at? I was looking at... The max speed of the Plutus is just like a lot high, higher than the Manorina as well. Hold on, chat. I don't know if I got it or not. It's driving me crazy. I don't know if I got it. Nat killing ASMR. Ah! Bugs! Question, chat. How does one clean a mouse pad? 
I have a brand new mouse pad, so it's not like dirty yet. But how do you clean the mouse pad when it needs cleaning? Is the answer just buy a new one every single time? Not the dishwasher. Definitely not. Lick it clean. No. Soap and water if it's neoprene. I feel like I'm going to do that and then it's going to create like big spots on it and then I'm going to have to like buy a new one anyways. But maybe not. Either way, I will attempt to just clean it the old fashioned way. Isopropyl alcohol can work. Hmm. I got it. Okay, now I have to wash my hands again. <laughs> Bro, where are they coming from? Disgusting. Is it mosquitoes? It's fine. All right, I don't want I don't want to get up. Dear visitors, we are experiencing some minor surges in our power grid. Dear visitors, we are experiencing a gnat infestation. Just scrubbed it with simple green. Ace Tech, what does that mean? What is what is that? Okay, back to the task at hand. Am I crazy or is the Plutus a better mining vessel, but the max capacity for shields for the Talati is the best. Like, twice as good shields. And uh, the travel speed of this Perinid is faster. <sighs> Chad, if you have any backseat opinion on which of my second mining ships I should actually go for, then now's the time. These are both medium, yes. I have no backseat opinions. That's fine. Incoming you don't need to be. You don't even need to be in the car to have opinions on the car. Get the one that looks better. Which one is that? This one? Or the Vanilla Stellaris ship? I personally use parented ships as my miners. The <laughs> chunky one. As long as it's not the drill. Chat wants the man arena. Okay, let's, uh, I guess we'll stick with Talati for now. But we have some votes for Perinid. Plutus is cheap, Manarina is tough. Yeah, the Manarina seems like the shields have a lot more top end. And no one's gonna blow us up right now, but they might in the future if we get in over our heads a little bit. Okay, in that case, what we want is a Talati Wharf. And there might be a closer to Lottie Wharf. But the plan is very simple. The restaurant is, now open, for the restaurant is open. We're going to head all the way back to where our starter ship is. Okay? We're going to go back there. Because we need to kind of link all of them up. That's gonna. We need to hire a pilot for that ship as well. Magpie Mineral. Excuse me, Captain. I'm taking charge here, because this is... Uh, the situation on this station is spiraling out of control. We need to get out of here! <laughs> Before someone explodes! They're having some trouble! 
It got worse. Yeah. It got worse. All right, let's take our little mining boat um, back to the Talati Wharf, where we can both buy a new ship, hire a, a crew, because we should have enough money for that. We can also maybe buy some uh, some mineral probes or some mining probes and get our medium vessel. I'm very excited. This is, this is good development. Turn the volume back up now. By the way, Waldemar, thank you for the six month sub who says, yay. Very excited. What's up, Waldemar? Here we go. Entering Grand Exchange for. Wait. Chat, this is not where I wanted to go. <laughs> I went the wrong way, but now that I'm here, uh, let's give a little scan. Did not mean to go here at all, but we did find another um, series of stations. We're gonna get somebody else to go explore this. Yeah, I'm going the wrong way. I buy the parented ship, but put Talati shields on it. I like that you can mix and match and kind of combine Super those. Highway, Grand Exchange, three. Okay, Talati Wharf. We don't know how to get there, apparently. So we don't even have a plot. Autopilot can't figure it out. They don't know. I can do it. This is why the human element will always be important. Entering Grand Exchange. It's actually Three. just straight up telling me to go the wrong way. That's why I went the wrong way. Jump gate. That Black makes sense. Hole sun. But yeah, I think that the, the parented ships seem pretty decent for mining just because they have a little bit more space. I think they have more speed. But the Talati look cooler <laughs> and matches our existing Talati. So I think we'll stay with that. And chat voted for it. I'm shocked you're not playing Age of Wonders 4. We talked about it at the beginning of stream. It just didn't grab me. Doesn't look bad. Just didn't. It didn't grab me. On paper, it probably should. I knew there was going to be a number of comments about that today. I think it would have been like... <sighs> here's, here's basically why I didn't play Age of Wonders 4. It's because even though it looks like there's some fun to be had in the game, probably, I was watching some mid to late game campaign of Age of Wonders 4 gameplay. And it looked like... Do you guys know how the final third of a Total War campaign is? Where you have like 12, 15 armies and they each have to move every turn and you have to upgrade every single hero and you're like, I don't care, just... Okay, that's plus numbers, better. Uh, I, that's how it felt to me while I was watching the like mid to end game of Age of Wonders, and I was like, I don't really want to do the play each turn as fast as you can. You don't care about individual decisions. Hey, Tell. Hi, guys. What's up, Grugan? Having fun in space? Hope you're doing well. But yeah, like, where individual units... The person I was watching was, um... Entering system, black hole Hold on. sun. Let me, let me see if we can. Figure out where we are. Yeah, it has some trouble navigating. I know how to get there, but it's not showing up on the map. I think it's right there where I'm pointing. We'll just head that way and hope for the best. 
Anyway, what was I saying? Uh, oh, it was just like every unit that they clicked on had like 11 traits or bonuses and it looked like it was, it was difficult to keep up with because everything was like, this has a 10% bonus attack in forest, this has an AOE spell, there's like a book of spells with like 20 spells to keep track of. It just seemed like it sprawls, I guess is the word. It sprawls in a way that I felt like I was going to be unable to keep up with in, we're talking about Age of Wonders 4. Super Highway, Black Hole Sun. That's exactly or... where we want to go. But the UI is not updating the way that I think it should. <laughs> spreadsheet Min Max is for nerds. I like Spreadsheet Min Max. Um, maybe it was just like the people I was watching play didn't feel like. Maybe they weren't elaborating on their decision-making process enough for me to find the strategy, but it was just like, here's an upgrade tree. We have an upgrade. Uh, that one. Sure. Okay, anyway, next. And it was very like, you know? Where when I, when I get into those kind of campaign games, I want to like hang on every detail, but I need the details to be not so many that I can't or that it overwhelms the senses. If that makes sense. But yeah, I think the explaining it best is like late game Total War is the best way to describe it. Because late game Total War is just a slog. Entering Black Hole Sun. Where each four. turn kind of feels like it takes an eternity. Because you just have to like, like, oh, who's that? Ah, like late game Civ. Oh, that, who's that over there? That unit doesn't matter. Just send them in. There we go. Now we Jump can eight. have a direction. Second contact. Now we have guidance. But the combat seemed neat, um, if a bit slow. Like, un units seemed like they had a lot of health and took a lot of attacks to defeat. Am I going to run into this nerd? Please don't run into this nerd. Ooh. We're good. Do any strategy games have fun late games? The thing is, I was sort of getting those vibes toward the beginning of the game. I think I, maybe I didn't specify that, but it was just like, I felt like a, there were a lot of perks and traits to keep up with, even from the beginning of the game. More so than, than is typical for a strategy game. And most of them seemed kind of like there were some cool ones. I'm not gonna demean anything unnecessarily. Like some of them were like you can build here and others can't, or you can you can break the rules of the game somewhat, but many of them were like plus ten percent to this, minus ten percent to that. And there are just so many of them that it stacked up to a point where I was like, huh? But as far as strategy games that have fun late games, I think that just depends. I don't think that Stellaris's is too bad because Stellaris hits a point, even though it is a slog, where like Total War, you're having to make 100 arbitrary decisions because you've already won. Stellaris, much of the late late game is just fast forwarding and your computer can't fast forward fast enough. And that's a waiting game to some extent, which is, Preferable. I prefer a waiting game to having a thousand Entering arbitrary system. decisions to, to make. Like, you can still do that in Stellaris, I guess, because you'll have planets and need buildings and units or scientists are dying or whatever, and you have to replace them. So that can, that can totally happen. This is No Man's Sky. How did you get here, Kingpin, if you don't mind me asking? Did you just wake up from your nap after RT raided earlier? Were you asleep? It is in space. To give you a serious answer, it's like EVE offline. If EVE had an offline mode, this would be it. Oh, 
Welcome to the Space Highway. Neum. Don't mind that rock. It's not really there. Anyway, we're heading to get our uh, second mining ship. We just earned Entering some cash. System, Prime. We did uh, figured out how to identify rock nodes, which ones had some profitable resources on them. Did a little hauling back and forth with some precision mining, and now we're going to get a medium miner. And we got to outfit that. It'll have about three times the space that this mining rig has. Entering system. But what's I'll great is we don't throw this mining rig in the trash just because we're getting a new one. This mining ship has a pilot that will be able to autonomously do some mining on its own. Or what I'm going to do is kind of have it fly along with us and we can kind of take manual control of both of the ships and have both of them mine and we can just four times our mining halls. That's the plan anyway. Now, I don't know how I'm going to do that effectively without using the teleport feature. <laughs> Slowly, I guess, but it'll be fun. Entering system. Silent witness. Only reason these highways seem unrealistic is they don't have ad billboards. I mean, all the little circles are ad billboards. Like, all these are supposed Entering to be billboards, system. they're just in center alpha. languages that we don't understand. I like this cockpit visual. Yeah, this is our, um... This is our ship right here. Neum. Did I go too far? I went too far. System. You right made promise. me go too far, chat. How dare you? We gotta go back. We missed our stop. Entering system. There we go. Profit center alpha. Back in the profit center. But yes, you can look around the cockpit too. Mmm. Fancy. Wow. Well, make sure I don't run into the station. If you like the cockpit enough. Magpie. Mineral. You could walk around. Hey, this is my ship. Greetings. Don't touch it. He's going to touch it. But yeah, very, very cool visual. Uh, I could tell that guy to go fly somewhere and I could just look over his shoulder and enjoy the view. In fact, we may do something exactly like that soon. Is that a valet? Sure. Can be. He's going inside of his little hole. Goodbye. <laughs> Talati Wharf. All right, Talati Wharf. Let me dock. Docking granted. I thought about buying a joystick for the immersion. I have a Warthog joystick Hotas set up with throttle. But it's kind of a pain in the ass for this game. So I wouldn't need to buy one. But I get asked about joystick a lot in this game. There's too many menu options for a joystick in my opinion. But you can do it and just have a mouse set up next to it. And that'll work. All right. I'm here to buy a ship and reclaim what was once mine. Slow down before we ram into the wall. Successfully docked. What does he do for the ship? You mean the, uh, the pilot? He, uh, he pilots. He's technically the ship pilot that we hired. Which, we're getting ready to hire another one. 
and some crew for that matter because this is also my ship and it does not have a pilot i am the pilot <laughs> but this is the og elite, elite that we started the game with so if we go to upgrade uh we have an option down here to hire a pilot and some crew maybe chad how do i hire a pilot specifically for this ship because i can hire the two crew can't click on the checkbox though Anyway, some just apprentice level pilots are like 9,800 credits. Or sorry, crew members. Yeah, we can we can look for one around the station. Like that'll work. After you hire crew, you can promote one. Ah, okay. Yeah, I guess we could just promote one of the ones that we we just hired. But we can also yeah, you can just walk around the station. And look for people to hire for specific skill sets. And the reason you might do that is because some abilities for piloting and whatnot are locked behind certain skill levels. So, like, sometimes you might want a piloting level 2, piloting level 3, or engineering for a specific responsibility. Hire <laughs> two brand new crew. Suddenly, somebody's got to fly the dang ship. Yeah, some somebody's got to fly the dang ship. So, if we look at um, the dead pixel, I have no idea how to even see the crew. We have reports of an outbreak of argon flu in the center. There's argon flu on this station. Please report to the medic bay for no, That doesn't sound good. Okay, so if we go dead pixel. I need to get the dead pixel information over here on the right, I think. And then we can see the crew list here. And it's these two people. So if we take das da Dasinos, promote Dasinos to pilot, congratulations. They have no piloting skill, good luck. And now we have a level zero pilot. Okay. Sick. So if I wanted to have a third crew member on this thing. Hello, friendo. You're beautiful. The only clothes I wear is a helmet. Would we then be able to go to crew? Yeah, we can just hire that third. So this, this now has three crew. There's two basic crew plus a pilot. Boom. Solid. Chat, where did my ship go? I think I know where it went. It still has mining orders, doesn't it? <laughs> Hello! One and zero. Remove all orders and assignments. Dock at my current location, please. That's your only order. All right, it's coming back. Can you hire a crew and send them on a separate mission? Yes, you can make your own corporation, your own empire, your own company, and you can have them automate themselves. Fleet management is definitely the point of the game, though you don't have to take it that high if you don't want to. You can, you can do a bunch of stuff yourself just for you. But it certainly scales up quicker if you start utilizing AI crew. Alright, so we're bringing them back. While we're bringing them back... It's time to... We can just buy a new ship in a few different ways. If I wanted to buy a ship just on the station... Do you have to access that menu from your ship computer? Or can I access it from... In here? Ship dealership. Ooh. Fancy. Oh, this place looks cool. God, I miss going to the ship warehouses in um Starbase. Why does oh. everything why does everything come back to Starbase? I don't know. 
All right, we're buying a medium Talati mineral miner, the Manorina. That's a mouthful. And it looks like this. A full size up from what our current ship has. It's got roughly three times the cargo space. Well, almost. Just under three times the cargo space. And uh, I can do my own. I don't need a preset. It's pretty straightforward. Let's see. So, right now, this is going to cost us 176k just for the chassis. This is going to be the ship that I fly for a little bit. So we might want to make this decent. I would assume that for engines, right? Only got one thick engine back here. I'm assuming for engines we might want like a travel engine. I don't know how that's enough to push. I guess it's just medium sized. Um, Greetings. Mark II is just way too expensive, I think. 80,000. Trying to see the difference in speed. It's about 600 meters per second difference in travel speed. Let's just get Mark I stuff set up. If we do an all-arounder, the boost speed goes up, but the travel speed goes way down. So let's do travel engines, because really we're going to be using this to, what, close the gap between where we're mining and where we're selling. So, thrusters, this is how we maneuver side to side, yaw, pitch, all of that stuff. Combat thrusters really don't cost that much more and give... A bunch of control in strafing, pitch, and rolling, but not in yaw. Concern for travel engines, they are faster top speed, but take a lot longer to activate travel speed. Not a well-documented feature. So... For just like being cheap. Because here's what I'm like is there a travel speed acceleration meters per second? I guess is the problem. Whoa, this seems way different than the X4 I used to play. What's up, Bite Hammer? Uh, it's changed a lot over the years. We got like 6.0 in terms of updates and. All the DLCs with the different factions. We're getting modular right now with our second mining rig. Okay, so either all around or combat then. All around has an extra like 200 meters per second travel speed, which is roughly 10%. But basic speed combat is a bit better. Chat, do you like all around or combat better for like a mining rig? Well, I'm sure it's changed a bunch by Hammer. We haven't played since 2020, so uh, it's been three years since we dipped our toes in that pool. Yeah, we can always go up from Mark 1 to Mark 2 later. Right now we're just trying to pinch our pennies. I haven't played since release. It's definitely changed since release. I use all around for miners. Combat if I can. We'll go, we'll go in between. We'll just do the all around Mark 1 for now. Now, for weapons, let's grab the mining drill. Just a Mark I is fine. Goes right there on the front. For turrets, now this is where the medium ships differ from the small. So we have these two side-mounted hardpoints where we can put either mining or pulse. So, I'm um, curious just what a pulse turret is. It's just a weapon. Limited use against capital ships. It can otherwise be considered effective in engagement of a wide variety of targets. It's basically just side-mounted weapons for your turrets. We're probably just going to say if... Oops. I was... Hello. 
I was building a ship, sir. <laughs> Oops. <sighs> okay, so all around. What thrusters do we put on here? Probably just keep the all around thrusters. Talati shields on both pockets. The Mark I shields are about 11,000. 324 megajoules. Okay. Reasonable. The Mark I mining drill. Now, the side, we can put these hard points for the, the mining Mark I side mounted medium turrets. And what these medium turrets will do is basically help us chew through um, rocks and asteroids if you wanted to just brute force it and not precision mine as much. So I think. For the, when the AI takes over, these are especially more useful, because I'm pretty sure they just kind of blow up rocks, don't they? So I think that, that'll that be the best way for them to mine. So we'll, we'll at least deck them out with some mining turrets. Now for software, we don't need a docking computer. We do need flight assist software. We do need a basic long-range scanner, and then a basic regular scanner, so that we can find the rocks in the first place. Chat, do we need a trading computer for the AI to autonomously sell their goods? Or is that not for that? Travel's fine in player hands, but it's really AI pilots that spend so much time at combat speed. Yeah, because the, the player knows how long they need to spool up and they can stay in the travel mode. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I mean, it's only 13,000 credits to just have a trading computer. Chat doesn't know if the AI uses it. Just give it everything. I got gotcha. you. All right, for consumables... Let us buy some more basic satellites, like 10 more basic satellites. I'm not really sure how to use resource probes. We're going to be doing this manually ourselves. So I feel like just buying 10, that's 86,000 credits. Oh my god, we, we, um, we're, we're approaching the max, so I might not buy that many. Let's buy like 5 and 5 just to get us started. Because we still need crew, we gotta hire a captain. That's mandatory. And then they can have up to 10 service crew. So I'm just gonna start by hiring just four service crew. And I think we're good. We good, chat? Did I screw anything up? I'll hire some more crew once we turn the, want to turn this over to AI. But yeah, I, I, I think we're solid. No need to save this preset, probably, but... Ooh, caps lock. Medium, minor... I would say, baby. Because it is pretty easy as she goes. So, if you look up here, we got a total cart of 499,000 credits just for what we've got set up here. Add that to our shopping list. And then we can check out. We're going to be left with a final... We're spending 500 grand on this. We'll have a final balance of 87. So, I'm glad we didn't stop at 450 because I would have had to cut some corners here. And the deal is done. All right, let's see it. Show me the money. Now, these are small bays. So a medium ship is going to pop up in the medium base. So is it going to appear down here somewhere? Or is it just further down the line? 
Might take a minute, there are wares missing. Mm. So we popped in an order for something that they didn't have all the resources to manufacture. And so therefore, do they issue like a buy order to purchase the resources that they're missing in order to craft the ship? That's pretty cool. Uh, how do you check on... Ship is in construction, one minute, zero seconds each. Well, yeah, we can just chill for a sec. It's all good. Hello, chat. What's up, Craven? Stumbled into this stream, and I've been playing X4. Ah! That's pretty much what it's about. <laughs> Just having fun experimenting into uh, 2023 X4. You can hit the trade filter and see what the station is buying. Yeah, I know that, but I don't know if that will tell me what it's buying that it wasn't buying a second ago, though. I also have a filter on, so I don't really feel like changing the filter behavior at the moment. Maybe the flu is getting them down. <laughs> uh, well, take a look around the station. Make yourself comfortable. And we wait. Chat, what are you guys playing right now? It's your gaming of choice. Got some Hitman 3, Wildermyth. Okay, we got a few people playing Age of Wonders 4. Those of you that are playing Age of Wonders 4, once the chat stops scrolling so fast, hit me with what your thoughts are on it. And don't just say, it good. We got Terraria Gamers, Noita. Starcraft. Swotor. Wow, give me a, some SWOTOR. <laughs> Elder Scrolls Online? Oh boy, MMO Gamers. I still need to play CDDA. Pathfinder looks fun. Got Gungeon Gamers. Path, the other Pathfinder. Chaos Dwarves. Just turn Jedi Fallen Order off. Ah, can't wait to get to Survivor. So much better. It's not that, this, that the other one sucks, it's just the other one's better. Okay. Chad, how do I find out what resources they're waiting on? Alright, I can just do the trade filter. Hold on. Is there an easier way to clear this? Probably container parts. They want 10,000 hull parts, 10,000 advanced electronics, 15,000 weapon components. It's advanced electronics. Wait, how do you see that? Corona Cook says, I'm really enjoying Age of Wonders 4. The complexity isn't as annoying as in Total War. I'm RPing and it's working fine so far. That's cool. Jacobot says, I'm enjoying Age of Wonders. Fun culture character creation. Feels like an improvement across the board on 3. You're right, though. Late game is a slog. The RPG elements shine more in this, in my opinion. That's That seems fair. Don't you hate it when you go into a subway and you're like, one spaceship with extra lettuce, and they're like, we're out of whole components. Our truck didn't have it this morning. No, Age of Wonders is a turn-based game. 
If you want to see it, go back to the ship purchase window. Is that the only way? In the year of our Lord 2023 in space? Magpie mineral. Okay. We'll look. Get out of my way, lizard brain. Buy a ship. Medium ship. This medium ship. With medium minor baby loadout. Advanced electronics, six. Okay, we'll just go mind our own business um, and undock for now. Oh, I know what we can do. Hold on. I know exactly what we can do. We're going to take our starter ship. Can you, can you make a ship remote by something? Like, say, satellites. Or do I have to physically board the ship and tell them to upgrade with satellites? Because I want to give them, like, 20 satellites or however many I can afford. Right-click on the item for sale somewhere and the select the ship. Right-click the station. Okay, hold on. Ship selected. Right-click the wharf. Oh, okay, here's here we go. Um, upgrade or repair. This is beautiful. Go to consumables. They already have five satellites. Chat. I forgot. Is a nav beacon literally just like a beep boop? Come back here. Maybe we should have been deploying nav beacons. How many can I afford on this? I have 87,000 credits, so I'm just going to fill up. We're going to get 18 satellites. It's all I can afford. Add to the shopping list and make the purchase. So, with our starter ship, the Elite, that we are no longer interested in piloting anymore, if we have places that we are, we are interested in going like we were doing um some mining for the talati where were we doing our talati mining <laughs> chat where were we doing our talati mining my that's just a silicon refinery oh yeah it was all the way over here grand exchange okay uh, what I can do is, since we were doing some mining over here, I can take the dead pixel, or elite, and then right-click and do Explore Grand Exchange 3. So now... If we get up... Where am I? I think it's gone. Did it already go? Is it? Yeah, it's flying. Okay, it's already going. Dead pixel. Live stream view. Here it is. And this is what our pilots are capable of doing now. So we can give them commands. So if we want to spread our wings a little bit, and um, figuring out maybe where more silicon refineries are, or heading to different trade hubs and getting prices. Please remember to return your depleted energy cells. We can just send them on their way, and now they have an order to go figure out what the rest of the stations are in that given system are. Literally back seating, yeah. Nav beacons are like reminders. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> it already go. I didn't see it. My, my bad. It's a little tiny ship. Little beepy sheep. Anyway, thanks again for the 19 months, Bite Hammer. Appreciate you. So this is the kind of stuff we can do while we wait. And if I really wanted to, I could tell our existing mining ship to go do its thing too if I if I cared uh because but I, I like chat said it could be a, a bit before they get the parts that they need to actually build this so we're probably better off just hopping in and 
and uh, going and doing some more mining, yeah? While we wait for our ship to be built. Be built. I only have 280 credits to my name. So, we got some work to do. You can supply the ship with the missing stuff yourself. I mean, if I could pull that out of my ass, then yeah. Then what do I need them for? I can build it myself too, you know? All I gotta do is build a station first. Build my own wharf. Then I can. Then I don't even need them. Can mine and refine all the resources myself too. All right, let's go. Chat, let's go. We're gonna go do some more mining. Well, hurry up then. Yeah, do that. <laughs> let's f fly some space planes. Highway, silent witness, one. Station costs a lot. You know what else costs a lot? starting your life over so that you understand sarcasm. That also is expensive. Is this like E-Physics and it's submarines in space? The bigger the ship, the harder it is to turn, yeah. Um, but the fighters are, are incredibly nimble. So, depends on what you're doing. In our case, we're, we're piloting miners that, when they get a full load of ore, Entering system. they're incredibly Silent floaty. Witness. Because you got so much mass that your tiny little thrusters are trying to keep up with. But if you, those combat vessels, they can, they can new them. Turn on the dime, boost on the dime, go zero to like 600 meters per second in like two seconds. Turn you into a fly on the windshield inside the Entering cockpit. System. I take choice. All that good stuff. So we're, we're hopping uh, system and sector to sector right now. And I'm just following the GPS. We got a little yellow line here. We can also just turn on autopilot and that'll do the rest. But I, I like manual flying quite a bit. So we're flying through and you can kind of see where we are on the map. And there are stations and factories all doing their own thing. Being supplied, buying, selling, trading. Uh, factions are expanding right now. You can kind of see when we hop through Entering a gate, system. Argon Prime. we enter a new system, just like so. My computer is spooling up. I can hear the fans. They're like, we're trying, Captain. We can't render this fast. Entering system. Second contact. Actually, I honestly think that it's just um, ICUE, like. Um, the Corsair, Jump gate, true the Corsair sight. settings are a little aggressive and I don't have a custom fan curve set up right now, so it's probably that. Jump gate, black hole sun. We can't take any more. <laughs> yeah, the, the automated fan curve is very aggressive. It's like 40 degrees Celsius. That's impossible. Turn the fans to maximum. That is too hot, Captain. Our liquid is too hot. It's like, bro, we can get up to 100. It's cool. I know it's the liquid and not the actual CPU, but still. All right, let's set ourselves up to go back up here. This was a neat spot. Nice little asteroid field. Do a little mining. Will I get a notification when my other ship is ready? I assume I will. I'll just check up on it every so often, maybe. Entering system. Black hole sun. All right. While you're in travel mode, it's hard to turn. You can hear the ship groaning. Creaking. Super highway, black hole sun. Super highway. 
But I've really been enjoying just the space vibes in X4 the last couple days. Been having a ton of fun. Um, I think I just implicitly enjoy games where you feel like you have to work for everything. When you start with nothing and everything that you have is because you put the blood, sweat, and tears into it, you know? Starting with just like, oh, you have a basic elite that isn't worth a dime. And then, oh, look, our first little baby mining ship. Oh, look, we figured out how to mine. Now it's time for medium miner. And seeing that sort of progression, like it has a really great sense of progression. And we're still very much in the early game, as it were. Give you a lot to chew on. X4 is very CPU demanding too. I'm sure late game it, it is. Right now it seems very straightforward. 4090 is putting in some work right now. Delivering you guys the frame rate that my last computer could only dream of, I think. But CPU bottleneck games are going to be a little easier for us. The new rig CPU is about 50% higher performance than my last stream PC, and that's at 1080p. So, that's pretty significant. Update 6.0 improved performance on new galaxies. That's good, yeah. That's the other benefit about playing a game that's been getting, like, nice, steady, dedicated development over the last, god, five years? Whew. How's it been that long already? Entering Black Hole Sun 5. Jump Gate Grand Exchange. Is that we're effectively playing it at its best right now? I actually think I can get into single player games like this, even if it is compelling. I, I think, yeah. Some people will be like, hmm, I don't know. I like being part of a crew in Elite Dangerous or Star Citizen. That's fair. I think the beauty of the single player aspect is only in a single player sandbox can you reach outside of your ship and your first person view and be the empire manager like the the leader of a large force right you can't really have that kind of power fantasy in the multiplayer games You'll always just be like one guy on one ship. At best, controlling some drones. Whereas a game like this, you can scale up and be like an empire simulator. So it's just a different vibe. I think both are valid. Look at our little dead pixel, they're exploring. We're actually, um, getting ready to pass them as it happens. Because, uh, they're in the next system over, so we'll actually be able to see them flying around. I love that description, the Expanse is badass, and hello, what's up, Crives? I think there are some Expanse vibes to this game. Entering system. Rand exchange. All right, I'm gonna ram into the station at this speed. <laughs> Slow Empty down. Space. X4 version 6.0 reworks some of the physics so that large ships and fleets won't fly away from each other because they're trying to avoid colliding. Yeah, I've noticed that the the fleets that are kind of moving around us are, seem a little bit more cohesive now than they did previously. They look like they're keeping tighter formations on things. Anyway, what's up, Crives? We are heading back towards the asteroid mines. We can kind of check in. Elite Vanguard. On our Vanguard, uh, this is our AI piloted ship. This is the ship that we piloted to start the game, and now we're using it as a scout to kind of explore different systems. So what that ship does, if you look at it, is they kind of go find little points to investigate and go scope things out. They kind of just uncover uh, points of interest around the map. We literally just passed them 
and they'll go see like what stations are and they, they kind of just will reveal um, an area around a given point on the exploration command and make it so that we don't have to go to every single station to find out what's in the fog of war and what's out there empty space But anyway, I'm glad that there's uh, a bunch of other people that are coming in that are either like, oh yeah, dude, love an X4 now. Whoa, just wandered in here. And then there's another group of people that are like, hello, people arrive, what is what dish game? Whoa. <laughs> I think there's a, there's a good chunk of you that have been saying in chat, oh, uh, thanks for another thing to put on my wish list. Which I'll remind you again, it does go on sale on Steam Sale. I don't remember how discounted it gets, but I bought all the DLC on Steam Sale. So I think it is worth pointing out. Because I think the base price is like 50 bucks or something. It gets, it gets pretty deeply discounted on Steam Sale. And uh, we're, we're back. We're just in space in an asteroid field buy some rocks I'm gonna quick save it's been a while literally was putting this on my wish list as you said that <laughs> there you go all right let's um quickly just check yeah they're still building the ship okay so we'll do some mining while we wait and if we make a little bit of money then yeah I can go buy the parts that they don't have and then sell them to the station so they can build my ship. That'll work, too. Is there combat? Oh, yeah. You can do almost exclusively combat if you want. It's a, it's a 4X. X4 is a 4X. I just chose to go down a mining path. Um... But yeah, there, there's like pirate factions and alien factions and stuff that are just outright hostile. So, at this stage of the game, we don't have to worry about it too much, as far as I know. However, down the line, it is, it is totally worthwhile to send escorts with your mining rigs. Because you're going to be mining stuff to support your own infrastructure. And uh, keep your own stations online. Keep building more. And uh, you don't want those to just get blown up for no reason, right? And there's, there's some missions that are kind of to that end as well, where you're escorting a mining rig as a, as a combatant, and there's story-based missions that have a little bit more combat focus as well. We're in scanning mode right now, indicated by our purple RGB, we're making our gaming rig shine, and we're looking for if, uh, if we find any nodes that have resources in them then they'll kind of light up in a, in a pretty obvious way. I would pick the purple cockpit lighting for my own vehicle if I could. <laughs> I got the pastels on in the, in the PC for the fans. You got the rainbow RGB on the keyboard. You know, I'm vibing, dude. Oops. Pew! But yeah, not really seeing much of anything yet. I assume there's, like, any rock is as good as any other rock, for all intents and purposes. In that any of them might be resource nodes. I saw one... We may have already checked this one out. It's kind of just like right below us. Ooh. I, I think it's just right below us. I'm having some difficulties. Is it this? Asteroid. No, that one's empty. I don't know. I want to kind of fly away from the gates. So we'll just forget about it. Have you dropped a resource probe? Chad, I know about the resource probes, okay? 
we're waiting on our second ship to be built because I have zero dollars right now. So if we're gonna if we're gonna get dirty and do some actual mining, then um then I'll use the big guns. But right now I'm just passing time until our ship is either built or we get a little bit of cash. I have three hundred credits total. But anyway, friendly reminder that if I want extra help doing something, I'll be sure to let you guys know. But if you don't hear me complaining or asking for help, then I don't really want pro tips unless I specifically ask. Because this is, this is a sandbox game where there's no wrong way to play. This is called the don't make me tap the sign part of the stream. If I want to go and mine ice for fun, just let me go mine ice for fun. Don't tell me about how high quality crystal mining or Nvidium is better, you know? Go punch the ice. Asteroid. Here's a decent silicon. Hey, ice is important in space. It is, but it's also plentiful. Does the AI have to spend all this time looking for rocks? Um, they, they do spend a fair amount of time. Giving the AI additional crew helps them be a little bit more efficient at mining, and I think they tend to blow up some rocks. We watched our AI miner blow up some rocks earlier, and I don't think they blew up any that actually had any resources in them. Interestingly. Alright, so this one glowing blue, this is a silicon rock. And uh, we're going to tractor beam in some resources. This should go pretty quick. Oh, yep, they're already full. <laughs> that was it. That's it. All done. So let's deploy a civilian satellite. Which I'm using as a beacon for all intents and purposes. And uh, we're going to head back toward the silicon refinery now with a little guidance. We are, we're a little hefty. That was fast. <laughs> As they gain skill, they get better too. Yep, for sure. Ooh, look how, uh, look how hard it is to correct your turn. I'm st I still haven't gotten used to it. This is exactly what I wanted to do today. I wanted to just be um, a belt of loader. And that's how I'm feeling right now. Tracking down the resources and turning them in for some quick cash. AI pilots level up? Yes, they do level up. And sometimes their levels can dictate their skills. Okay, we might, it might be in our best interest to try and fast track the construction of our ship. Let's get ready to slow down here. Coming in a little hot. <laughs> it's over there. Docking granted. Shift D is our little docking permission shortcut. Man, we are floaty as hell. Good night, everyone. Have a good one, Kelly McChess. Take it easy, dude. Do you feel exploited by a far off interstellar government? I mean, I am a space rock miner who is just sailing to the faction megacorps to try and make a buck, you know? Do you pay wages or just the hiring cost? I think it's just the hiring cost, but I could be wrong. Check, feel free to chime in on that one. I think labor is just plentiful because they're all very low skill workers. The hiring costs are very high for like high level pilots and stuff though. Successfully docked. So it's, it scales up very high. 
All right, dump the silicon. Make the trade. So, if we're waiting on those specific electronic parts, we could try and find somewhere that has them. Chat, was it advanced electronics or was it a different thing? That we were waiting on. I think it was advanced. So we can set a filter. <sighs> now, what we would be looking for is... Someone selling them. What did I do? I accidentally undid what I did, you know? We found something out here! What? Chat, we found a Partethis Vanguard that's abandoned? What 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 is that? Is that any good? Elite Vanguard. Free shit! Legal salvage! We found something out here! What are you guys finding? Hold on. I don't know how to salvage anything. I'm just gonna have them go fly next to it so I can observe what it is. We found something. Oh, they did find a lockbox. That's funny. Do those stay on the map, even after they go outside the range? Alright, let's see what they got. What'd you guys find? Awaiting orders. Um, you're not close enough. Oh, it's kind of like... It's kind of like way below you, dude. I don't know how to make them go below. Can you be a ship salvager in this game? Yes, but I think salvaging and being able to be a tug is part of one of the DLCs. Okay, let's just focus on one thing at a time, all right? They don't have to move anywhere. They don't have to go anywhere. <sighs> and I don't really like teleporting as a rule so one thing at a time i want to buy the damn electronics supposedly they sell them over here at the advanced electronic factory which makes sense so what i'm gonna do is on dock and go get it wait how much did it cost not very much Seems reasonable, because we just made some bank uh, selling some ore. But yeah, there's there's like a DLC where you can like be a tug for wrecks and then turn them into scrap, basically. I have no idea how to do that, but it's a different job type, which is pretty cool. More job types is nice. If you have a marine, they can board and claim the ship if they're close. Yeah, but we don't. Can you board a ship that is abandoned yourself by just going EVA? How much did your current ship cost? This is a cheap one. Uh, this is just the first tier of miner from the Talati. Uh, it's a small Super Talati Highway. miner. Grand Exchange Four. And I'm not dodging your question. I'm just trying to remember. I think it cost me like 170k. Somewhere in that neighborhood. Entering Grand Exchange for something like that. Oh, 
Oh, we're Newman. The new ship that I just bought was like 500k, and we're waiting on that one to get built. And that one's a medium vessel. So you gotta make a little upfront investment in your ships, and then they start making you money back, and then you get profit. It's beautiful. Hello? Advanced electronics factory. They won't build my dang ship though, because they don't have any electronics. So I gotta go get some for them. Luckily, we have a bit more maneuverability now because we are not laden with a payload. All right, line this up. And lock it in. Looking good, Chad. Looking good. Okay, let me trade with you. Chad, they don't have any more advanced electronics. That was old information. <laughs> We did not have a satellite here for that. Somebody has bought up all of their advanced electronics now. So, what is the next? If you can't buy advanced electronics from a damn electronics factory, then where can you? <laughs> Uh, I definitely can't down here because this is an unfriendly faction. No way. Everybody's buying, nobody's selling. Um, the e the only way to really like do this would just be to have a nice little setup where we monitor a few different specific regions. Chat, we're going to take a quick BRB, actually, which will give us a second anyway. I'm going to take the dog go out because he's getting a little impatient. There he is. I'm going to grab a little snack. Feeling a little peckish. Whew! Okay. Mute game. Listen to this. Actually, listen to this. There you go. I'll be back in just a few. Thanks for hanging out tonight. Thanks for watching. And thanks for waiting. Be back shortly. The game's on pause, so if they do happen to get a little surplus, maybe our ship gets built. <laughs> oh, see you in a sec.
you. Where'd the camera go? noises okay let's reset the camera I have returned They have a Chad, do they have a sell offer of 73 advanced electronics? Am I reading that right? Can we get our in system elite to come buy that or am I misreading that? Is this how many I have is zero and this is how many they have? So all I got to do just find my boy. Requesting permission to dock. Docking permission granted. Hello. Property. Oh, they built the ship. Never mind. Cancel that. Belay that order. <laughs> we have a ship. All I had to do was um, go AFK for a minute. And when they make it for us. Sweet! So that's in Grand Exchange 4 is the, sorry, Profit Center Alpha. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna tell that Profit Center Alpha pilot to come on over. They're gonna meet us at the Silicon Refinery. While I head towards our little friend, the Elite, to try to figure out what they've been discovering. We're about to have our first medium miner. That's cool. So what happened was, they created a buy order. Someone dynamically in the universe fulfilled that buy order by selling the parts they needed. Probably turning a profit and the economy flows. And they use those parts to build our ship. I really love when simulation, especially economics games, have that level of supply and demand where the things that they're buying, they're actually using. Like, it's okay to have some abstract Entering things. Grand exchange. Like Green. food food or water or something like that Empty that's just like... Space. You need that, or in this case, space drugs, whatever. They don't have to turn into another product necessarily to be important. But it's still cool. Yeah, the other space truckers are all doing their thing out there. <clears throat> so, chat. In the future... <laughs> well, I guess I gotta be careful. Um, I was gonna say... In the future, if we ever ended up trying out Elite Dangerous, somehow, 
Meh. I don't know how to have the best of both. I don't have how to have my cake and eat it too. Because I want to, like, somehow involve you because having, like, a multiplayer guild is fun, but also I feel like I'd probably end up playing in a private server to avoid somebody, like, sniping somehow. I don't know how you snipe in Elite Dangerous, but I'm sure it's possible. Okay. There should be some kind of abandoned ship over here. I got a lifesaver. So I gotta talk like this. Okay, that's the rules. Look, it's our friends. Elite Vanguard. We found something out here. Is it me? Did you find me? <laughs> oh. We're good. We're good. We didn't even bump them. We didn't even touch them. Barely, barely a scratch on the hole. Everything's fine. There's so much space, and I somehow... <laughs> That's my ship. I can- I can rear-end this- my own ship if I want to. So here's the plan. Greetings. Get over there. Magpie. Let Mineral. Me We're doing a little EVA. Elite Vanguard. Docking granted. I'm gonna dock in my own ship. Something about um, being a little EVA guy. Just a tiny little guy in a big space, you know? I don't think I would cut it as an astronaut, to be perfectly honest. I would never be able to be an astronaut. I would get one look at the full void. I think I'd lose my mind. I'd have an immediate anxiety attack. So here's the plan. We're gonna tell... Where are you going? Where are you going? What's your behavior? I have no idea what you're, be what you're doing. Your default behavior is hold position, so... I really don't know where they're going. I'm gonna tell him to go up to the silicon refinery, though. And then dock and wait there. Okay, uh, cuz... We had a couple things. Number one... There's a lockbox here, but number two... There was an abandoned ship, I believe. And I might have to scan a few times to find it again. Or it could be gone. Somebody else could have done something with it. You'd have to be insane to be willing to go up in space. That's how it seems. Like, I don't know about insane, just your Lock sense box. of self-preservation is more or less gone. Because, like, being in space is terrifying, but getting to space is where it's really dangerous, right? Like, the getting to space is kind of whatever. You're locked in. That's, like, not the part that would scare me.
For me, it would just be like floating in the in the endless void. And just looking up and seeing the moon, the sun, stars, planets, all in the distance. And being like, I could float for an entire lifetime and never get to touch any of those. And then see the blue marble of Earth. And just be like, overwhelmed by my senses. I don't know if we found anything cool in there. We have 14 remote detonators that are worth 220 grand, so it seems like a decent haul. I don't know where these unstable crystals came from, but that's, that's a fair bit of cash. All right, let's head up to, um, just meet up at the Silicon Refinery, and all of our ships should be parked there, ideally. Red equals cool. The remoteness of everything is the scary part. Yeah. What 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 scares me is um the very commonly documented response that many astronauts have had when they actually go up into space the first time. What is that effect called? I forget. I can look it up. But I also don't want to crash into this. It's called the overview effect. The cognitive shift reported by some astronauts while viewing Earth from space. Researchers have characterized it as a state of awe with self-transcendent qualities, precipitated by a particularly striking visual stimulus. Basically, they see the Earth from, like, the moon or from orbit, and uh, it's like a pr it's like a paradigm shift in your perspective of how you view life, the universe, and everything. It sounds positive. I mean, it is vaguely positive in that it's like a it's the kind of positive where if you let every single human on Earth have the overview effect, the pro the problem is. I think the overview effect is probably directly proportional to a person's capacity for empathy. Like, uh, for example, William Shatner went up into space thinking it was gonna be cool, right? Like, it was like a promo with, uh, Jeff Bezos' commercial space line. And they're like, oh, haha, -ha, look, William Shatner's gonna go to space, isn't that so funny and cool? And then he came down and he was like, oh my god, that changed my entire life. And now he is, um, like, I, I think a different person than he was. Like, if you just look up William Shatner before and after going to space, it, it transformed him to his very core, more or less. To where he, he really, I think he hated it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look up the information. Docking granted. Because of the perspective shift that it caused for him to have in his entire life. Um, I'll get some more information on that so you don't think I'm just making stuff up and pulling it out of my ass. But I think other people don't have that. Like, Jeff Bezos went to space and he's still probably the same guy. Successfully docked. <laughs> Which isn't surprising. Uh, my, but it wouldn't, so the, the overview effect doesn't happen to everybody. Welcome. That's why I say it's probably directly tied to your capacity for, like, empathy. But yeah, William Shatner has been, like, giving these really 
esoteric, like transcendentalism, transcendentalism style quotes on stuff after coming down. This was uh back in October of last year. Uh, he said, It was among the strongest feelings of grief I have ever encountered. The contrast between the vicious coldness of space and the warm nurturing of Earth below filled me with overwhelming sadness. Every day we are confronted with the knowledge of further destruction of Earth at our hands, the extinction of animal species, of flora and fauna, things that took five billion years to evolve, and suddenly we'll never see them again because of the interference of mankind. It filled me with dread. My trip to space was supposed to be a celebration. Instead, it felt like a funeral. I learned later I was not alone in this feeling. It's called the overview effect, and isn't uncommon among astronauts, including Yuri Gagarin, Michael Collins, Sally Ride, and many others. Um, author Frank White first coined the term in 1987, saying there are no borders or boundaries on our planet, except those we create in our minds or through human behaviors. All the ideas and concepts that divide us when we are on the surface begin to fade up from orbit and the moon. The result is a shift in worldview and identity. Basically, it's to say that when you can see the entire world for what it is, um, it makes everything else look petty by comparison. Like, um, you see what's really important, and that it puts everything else in your day-to-day -day life and what you care about and what you're bickering about into seeming like a state of complete pointlessness. That's, that's why it has a, a state of profound sadness, quote-unquote, because it's like, look at all this stuff that we're fighting over. Look how much time we're wasting when we could just be appreciating life and each other and working together and that kind of stuff. So it makes sense. But anyway, my original point was I feel like if you could just show that to every single human ever, the portion of people who change their worldview after would be probably significant enough to make some kind of impact on just day-to-day -day goings on in life, you know? People to people, culture to culture, nation to nation. Hello Gamer Deathbot, what's up? So, now that we're here at this dock, with big old ships coming down, putting his thruster right in my face. We... Don't want to do a trade. We're selling silicon wafers. I remember we used to trade silicon wafers. I do want to get up and go to their little depot. But yeah, I think it's just like a, oops, sorry, complete shift in, in perspective where things that you thought previously were important feel a lot, a lot more pointless and like you see the bigger picture, I guess. Can I help? Here you go. The bigger picture being like taking care of life, taking care of each other, the planet, stopping with sort of self-imposed like he said, self-imposed borders that don't actually exist, and... We don't have anything that we can actually... I have some illegal stuff that I can't sell. I'm assuming it's just because these guys don't buy it, or is it just not sellable at all? Because, yeah, not, it's not popping up in here. Good profit to you. Is it not shift enter? 
Player information inventory. Yeah, I know you can't sell the security stuff, but um, can I sell unstable crystals? And remote detonators to somebody? Do I have to go to like the pirate station maybe? Or is it just not sellable? Did our other ship ever get here? They're in Grand Exchange 3. They're at the Silicon Refinery. Yeah, they're here. Our new ship is here. It can be hard to sell some of the illegal stuff, but not impossible. Elite Vanguard. Well, I'm gonna do an experiment on my own. Have you seen the photos of Earth as... Have you seen the photos of Earth as a faint star taken by the rovers on Mars? I don't think I have. But the Mars pictures are, are awesome. Uh, I remember being like, oh wow, look, I found the free trader station. Like, if I go to SCA Pirate Base, chat... I'm just going to experiment myself and see what happens, you know? Take our little baby ship out for a little spin, and then we'll go see the new one. We got the medium uh, waiting in the dock for us, where we just took off from. Seeing Earth, and by extension, all of humanity as a faintly blue dim star in the sky of another world is wild. It's like your consciousness just transported you to a completely different... life. <laughs> Briefly. When you can suspend your disbelief just a little bit. And be like, what if I was standing on the surface like the Mars rover is? That's still crazy that we even have a Mars rover at all. That being said, uh, Elon is incredibly late on getting a man on Mars, right? I mean, that was a pretty big promise, and I feel like we're... way, way far away from that being a reality still. And also, like, I, I, I saw Tom Scott's newest video, okay? And I'm just saying, they have the simulated Martian soil. It does not look like fun to walk in. So I'm just gonna say, maybe maybe we shouldn't be so concerned with walking on Mars. It looks like a pain in the ass. It's kinda like, it looks quicksand. You just sink right into it and you gotta dig your boots out. It doesn't seem fun at all. Oh wait, was that Veritasium? Maybe that was Veritasium. Maybe, I'm sorry, I got Tom Scott and Veritasium confused. What was Tom Scott's last video? I did watch that too. But yeah, you're right. It was the one with the like tires and the wheels. Made out of weird materials. He made the Swiss cheese one. Not the same thing as Martian soil. Martian soil is apparently not made out of Swiss cheese, Stopping I'm being told. Granted. Maybe that's what they want you to think. What if it is? God, this ship is so maneuverable compared to our mining rigs. Even the small mining rig. I can't wait to see how unmaneuverable the medium one is. Excuse me. There we go. Successfully docked. If we want to survive as a species, we need to escape our planet. Welcome. I don't think that that's true. <laughs> I think survival is a given. I think that if we want to continuously grow and never stop growing, um, then yeah, we have to escape the planet. Is to be human, to be a rodent who can't stop, um, 
exponential growth. If if that's the case, then yeah, we have to ex we have to go past the planet because we just can't stop exponentially growing. But just survival of the species, like someone's gonna survive as long as we don't nuke the planet. Like people will survive. May not be as many as you want, but they will. <laughs> Eventually, the sun will die out. <sighs> Compared to the human existence and the human life, that is a figurative eternity from ever being a possibility that we experience. That is functionally infinite amount of time. For all intents and purposes. And also, like... If you want to go down that road, like, oh, well, technically... Well, technically, the entire universe will cease to exist. Eventually, if given enough time. If we don't care if it's functionally eternal or not. Just because we go to a different planet, a different solar system, doesn't mean that, that Hello. our sun is the only Can one I that is, is scheduled for an expiration date. Here you go. Okay, this is why we're here. To get rid of some stuff. Outlawed by most members of the Commonwealth. We got neural nets. Chat, before I sell any of these things... This not really doesn't seem like that much. I'm selling all these remote detonators. I'm selling all the unstable crystals. About to make some bank. Apparently I have advanced targeting modules. God knows what that means. I can sell my security bypasses here too. Am I gonna miss these when they're gone? I don't know, this is just like... Wait, they won't buy these. They'll sell these, but they won't buy them. Okay, you have to increase your rep first. Never mind, we're keeping those. I hope I'm not selling anything that I'm like, oh, don't do that. You need that, but this is 600 grand in my pocket right now. Just build a Dyson Sphere around a Neutron Star Brown Dwarf or something. Easy peasy. <laughs> so true. Alright, backseaters are sleeping. I sell stuff and make the monies. What was the question? Too late. Nothing you should be concerned about. Okay. It's time. We're going to meet up with the crew at the silicon refinery. And, uh, we're gonna peep the new medium miner. I can't back see, because I only played this game for like four hours. <laughs> <sighs> that means you are just a Jeff waiting to happen. Only playing for the minimum amount of time and still giving uh, unwarranted advice. Makes you a proper Jeff. You're learning. Dyson Sphere is gonna pop off when they release the combat system. They're doing like... 
to the Factorio game? For some reason, I didn't click with Dyson Sphere. Maybe one day I'll go back and try it since it's had a bunch of updates. But I didn't care for it too much. I appreciated that it was trying to do a lot of really big things. It seemed ambitious. Hello, Zap Guy. What's up? How's it going? Newman through space. So when we get back, uh, we're going to do something very fun. Pilot the medium miner. We're going to go find a rock. We're going to be able to take the small mining vessel with us for a ride. And then this ship, which we're in right now, is going to go back to exploring and uh, uncovering different stations and things. Just kind of ping-ponging around, making sure that we know what all of our options are. We can also send this guy um, to specifically lay down satellites in different areas, get real-time tracking on prices and updated wares. All that good stuff. But for now, we're just going to let it kind of just go on its own, do exploration, while we focus on finding the ore, get the silicon, all that good stuff. We're just meeting at the silicon refinery, which is where we've been dumping our goods for now. Docking granted. Okay, we got permission to dock. This elite is small, very agile, can just kind of new in here. Line us up. And take us down. Successfully docked. Welcome. I watched 10 minutes of a Let's Play on YouTube a couple years ago. That certifies you as an expert. You are Hello. ready. Okay. Goodbye. Say goodbye to the Elite chat. Look at the logo on the side. <laughs> it's beautiful. Now let's go find our baby. It's docked here somewhere. It might be actually under one of these shutters. So we might have to like pull it up. Let's see how this works. We haven't done this before. Maybe we use this computer. Request ship. Uh, is it not down there? Where's my sheep? I think it's in the refinery. Docked at the silicon refinery. Hold position. Yeah, it's here. Oh, you have to click enter. Oh, yeah. Look at this. There she is! This is our new beauty! Warning. <laughs> be this is just a medium ship. <laughs> oh, man. What a unit. This is the one we've been waiting on. What an entrance. Yeah, for sure. Whew. Look at that mining laser. Good lord. We have to take a... Mineral. Transporter room just to go to the cockpit. Oh, look, it's got like a like a twin seater. We have take command of ship and access the nav console. So what does the person on the nav console do exactly?
Ooh. Now we're in business. All right. Let's do this. Let's quick save first. Because I'm scared. Everything's coming together. Let's take this for a spin, chat. Look how big the flight deck is. We got, like, the full bubble view here. All right, let's start. Don't. We are no longer a threat. <laughs> so, I like... Spare us. Okay. I was shooting the civilian with a mining laser. It didn't seem to do anything, but I got them to, to go away. All right, let's just start by going up and try to clear the dock. Clear the dock first. Okay, you ready, chat? Beak. That's us. Ah, oh, that looks sweet. And this song is great, too. We should have... Yep, we got a little satellite beacon. So what we're going to do is tell the one and zero, our small ship, to fly over there and wait for us. Put some acceleration in. It has one little thruster in the back. <laughs> oh. Satellite. That's great. Travel mode engage. Got 112 kilometers to fly. Let's spool them up. Is there a Rocinante modded ship in this game? I'm sure there is. Chat said that there's at least one faction that's somewhat inspired by the Expanse. Which faction is that? Did you add engines to all mounts? I only saw one mount. And it was right in the middle. But there is a Star Wars mod that I think has been in development for a very long time for this game. It's a shame you can't see more of the ship interior. I think they did enough. Especially when the premise is... It's a single-player RPG where you can pilot every ship in the game. So I think if they stuck with a you-can-pilot-every-ship-in-the-game mentality... And then tried to do, like, full detail of every single ship. With extra rooms and crew quarters and stuff. That would be a little much from, like, a dev cycle. Who do I hear? What do I- Chad, do I hear another ship? I'm sorry, why- Asteroid. How do I turn my- my mining lasers! <laughs> my mining lasers are just going! They just- they've, they've got a life of their own! They're ready! They want to mine now! How do I turn the turrets off? Awaiting orders. I know it's the turrets, I don't know how to turn them off! Well, okay, there we go. What's the hot key for this? Is there a hot key for this? Good lord. Do you have to- do you have to left click each time? Either way, um... Got a little spicy preview of what that looks like. We got the main mining laser here. It's got a limited reach. Let's go to scanning mode. You can also click the icons in the top middle of the HUD. Okay. Well, that... that works. So I can... if I can bind those myself, that would be great. Uh, but I don't know what to bind them to. I can bind them to, like, a mouse button for now. I'm not really using the mouse buttons. I have a few of those.
somewhere down here, maybe. Is it considered a weapon? What am I looking for here, chat? Camera, targets, miscellaneous. I haven't seen some of these. Shift G is toggle guidance. Oh, that's nice. Toggle sound off in the whole game? Oh, sweet. Deploy mine, deploy resource probes. Ooh, yeah, you can bind all these. But yeah, I feel like turrets are probably like, um... It should be somewhere up here. Toggle turret arming. Well, I don't know where it is, but I found it. It's under misc. We could do mouse axis Y, which is basically like my mouse five. Do I have to... Do I have to confirm? Because it's not doing anything. It's under VR. You can play this game in VR? Mouse 5 is not doing anything. <laughs> it just bounded and it's not working. Let's try binding it to something normal. What is something normal that I don't use? Side mouse button one. Why was it axis? Actually, I don't know. Hold on. Chat, did I just change something off of axis? You move the mouse? Oh my god. If you move the mouse, that counts as a bind? Bro. <laughs> What did I, uh, there needs to be like a, like a log of what you have just unbound or bound so that you can reset individual things. We need a clip of what axis I just found. Right, left, up, down. It all like works. Lord knows what we bound or unbound here. I did get an unbound warning and I blew past it. It was probably like primary steering axis X rotation, secondary steering Y rotation. I feel like it was one of these. I don't know, dude. Okay. Turret. Don't move the mouse. It... I, t <sighs> okay. Side mouse button two. There we go. Now it works, but I don't know what I unbound. I have no idea. Anyway, now I can do the thing. So, let's take a look around. We're looking for rocks that... There was one that had a blue glow. Let's go back towards the satellite real quick. And indeed our other ship. Chat. Look at, hang on. I'm gonna pull up alongside. This is our first miner on outside the, the window here.
just for like a little size comparison of the small versus the medium sized ships. Just a little guy. Awaiting orders. That's so funny. I love it. Okay, speaking of awaiting orders, we're gonna take the dead pixel and have them just explore this zone again. That's what they were doing before. I feel like I should have more than three times the cargo space. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe so. <sighs> Did I just bump into my other ship? Literally how? We're good. I was holding strafe right, but our, our thrusters are just so weak. Uh, there was a silicon spot like out here, but now it's not, not here anymore. What's your first ship doing? Can it be exploring too? Well, that, that's what I just did, yeah. Like, three seconds ago. I said, hey, I'm picking our first ship and telling it to go explore the system that we're in again. And then you said, what's your first ship doing? Can it be exploring too? And now I'm just picking on you. All right, let's start flying. Not the miner, the one before that. Yes, that is the one I just told to go explore. The one that we're sitting next to is the miner. Who we're bringing along with us so that we can both mine at the same time. Once we find a suitable rock. Oh, speaking of suitable rock, it's time we brought with us resource probes. Chat, I don't know how these work. No, the very first one. Platypus, I'm gonna ban you. I'm gonna ban you. Chat, how does the resource node work? What does this do? Don't say it probes resources, because I know. Does it just show... I don't understand how to interpret this information. I'm assuming that no stars for ore or silicon is bad. And that this isn't the best place to be getting resources. So what does the blue bar mean? 0 0.019 kilometers cubed max of 0 0.02. I'm clearly confused. Chad is confused. I did not buy mining lasers for the first ship. We did not do any mining in the first ship. The first ship is an elite, which is what we start the game. That is the very same ship that I just told to explore this sector. I will show it to you because I can do that with the live stream view. This is the ship that we began the game with as a lone gun. See? We never changed any of its features. It's currently exploring the system looking for stations. The first ship that we bought, the small mining vessel, is also right next to us in this very same system. And that is the one and zero. which I have to press F3 Magpie, to target. It's this guy right here. This is the one we were just flying around, and for the first time ever, our third ship, of which there are only three, is the Man Arena, which is this one that we were just looking at. That's all we got. But we did not buy mining lasers for the first ship either. Okay. Anywho... Um, as you guys can see, this is not a good resource probe. I mean, it's fine. It's just like... Should I just be picking up resource probes so I don't waste them? 
and then put them in different areas? Do you pay your pilots? I pay them when I hire them. And then they get paid in channel points. Let's do two things. We're gonna deactivate. I need a little help finding the resource probe. Is this it? I guess that's it. But I thought that was the... It's gotta be right behind me, right? Are pilots nameable? Maybe. My main character is named. Resource Pro. There you are. All right, let's bring that back in so that we can repurpose it because we know that this is not a great place to be mining. We did find... It doesn't mean you can't find rocks to mine. Like, here's one now. So why don't we just go ahead and mine this? Asteroid. It's got some silicon there. Stars is how much an asteroid can potentially hold while the number is how dense the field has of the resources. I thought it was the other way around. I thought stars were how dense the field is with the resources, and the blue is how big the rocks are, because it was me it was measuring in. Either way, zero stars probably isn't good. So here's the deal, chat. We're gonna take the one and zero and tell it to fly over here next to us and wait. And then we're gonna get a little closer. Refresh the scanner. We could just blow this open. Which is kind of what we're good at. Why am I... Wait, I'm vacuuming the entire rock? Okay, so I think we are supposed... Are we supposed to blow these open with the medium? I don't think that was supposed to pull the entire asteroid. It moved closer. Maybe this is like the expanse and the asteroid has got a mind of its own now. That was 20% uh, of our cargo hold in one go. But if we if we didn't want to wait and precision mine, then we could do our new hotkey. Pew. And then look how fast we can destroy these big old rocks now. It's not efficient that way, but it, it works. It's fast. Sloppy. 6,000 out of 10,000 meters cubed. That rock was 16 billion years old. Billion, I say. <sighs> it was an amount per cubic kilometer, so my guess is density of the target mineral versus the makeup of the field. Probably. So what Chad is saying is that there's supposed to be a high quantity of low... There should be a, a large number of low quantity silicon rocks. Is what you're saying, basically. I think that I, I understand. So the silicon field has a lot of different rocks, but the individual rocks aren't that rich in silicon. So what I want to do... We're going to have the one and zero go pick up the satellite.
If only there were people who knew and you didn't need to guess. If only those people knew how to speak in complete sentences instead of writing no and other sassy comments in the chat and spend as much time elaborating as they did going into random streams and shit talking. If only. If only there were more people who were just following since yesterday, who just trawl in the directory with like a couple dozen messages and then act like they own the place. We need more of those people. Am I right, gamers? Coming out of the floorboards. Is X4 randomized each playthrough? The systems and the sectors are not. But the location of stations and various other aspects are, and also the dynamic nature of the game, meaning the factions expand in different ways, or fight in different ways. That randomizes it quite a bit. But anyways, it also doesn't help that people are saying different things. Because Trombo Ninja says, stars is how much an asteroid can potentially hold, while the number is how dense the field has of the resource. Quote unquote. Stars how rich the asteroid is. Zakaluka says, the stars are on an absolute scale, which I don't know what that means. The blue bars are on a scale relative to the max value in that resource field. Those are words, chat. Those are words that don't m actually mean anything, but it's okay. I don't expect you to have to explain every facet of the game for me. I'm capable of um, just Googling X4 resource probe and then finding an answer. All right, here's some facts about resource nodes. Uh, as of three years ago, the general population actually hates using resource probes. I don't know if this changed in patches, but back in three, uh, 2020, using resource probes is harmful to your auto miners in almost all scenarios, even if you find a really good spot for them to mine, this will change over time and you'll have to reposition it. Just let miners do their thing and only use probes if you use them for a mission. I don't know if any of that changed. I was audited. You're all audited. All that changed, AI miners benefit from probes. <sighs> and the problem is, no one knows. No one really knows. It's so sad, not even Reddit knows. This is why space mining is so lucrative, chat. Because you can become an expert in your field. By figuring out how to mine, you would be the only person in known space that knows how to mine. I was talking about chatters guessing. <laughs> okay. The best way to talk to chat is to write the word chat in your chat. That way they know that you're talking to them and I know you're not talking to me. Chat, talk to chat right now. It's the raviolios. They're dancing, they're partying. Say hi, chat. What's up, raiders? Hello, Logan Olio. How you doing? How do yourselves? Where'd you guys come from? Wait, people talk to the streamer? Sometimes they do. Reluctantly.
But anyways, Trix, we'll just agree that there's a fundamental misunderstanding here and nobody knows how to use resource probes. It's okay. <laughs> But thank you so much for the raid. I hope you had a fantastic stream. Uh, we're just cruising through space right now. Who are you guys playing? People are subbing right now. Encrypted bid. Thank you for the gift sub. Much appreciated. I alt tap for just a second. Logan Oleo playing some just chatting. Love your streams. We played some Rocket League and some chatting. Very nice. I'm not gonna run into this. This is why we have a shield. This is why we have a shield, okay? If if we had been boosted <laughs> in the future, in the future, the barrier between us and possible asteroids they're being kept at bay by the power of technology. Uh, so, I forgot that we're flying a ship I've never flown before. <laughs> and, more importantly, it is laden with 6,000 meters cubed of solid silicon. And this is a hefty boy. And coming to a complete stop is not easy. So. Either way, uh, appreciate the raid. Distracting the streamer's success. <laughs> For those of you that just joined playing X4, um, we just made this ship, and we're still trying to figure out how to fly it effectively, as you can see. X4 is a space sandbox. Uh, it itself is a 4X, which is slightly confusing. Uh... Chat, let's remember what the four X's stand for, because we definitely know off the top of our head. Explore, expand, exploit, and exterminate. Am I right? We were being audited, but the raid saved us. Are we full? We are full. Okay, let's bring um, our other ship over. Got another small mining boat. We're gonna tell it to fly over here. Got it, 100%. Not extend, no. Exasperate, sometimes. To be fair, the shield was barely damaged. I mean, it wasn't coming in like that hot. We were at like 300 meters per second. But either way, uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do. It's a it's a living, breathing sandbox. Chat's heard the spiel a lot. I'll keep it brief. <sighs> Things dynamically change. There's factions vying for space supremacy, and then there's us just being humble little rock miners, doing our best. But while we're doing our thing, uh, space itself is continuing to do God knows what. Space pirates are smuggling, contraband, drugs. There's other space Three. miners out there. An arena. Let's Middle. take ourselves a little spacesuit. EVA. But it's a very deep simulation. Yo, we can become drug lords? You could become drug lords. Chat, I should have looked to see where my other ship was before jumping out here. Is that it? That's a rock. That's just a regular rock. Oh, it's still flying into position. Awaiting orders. Okay, that's the ship we just came from. Magpie. That's six Middle. kilometers away. Well. Like, how? How was that six column? He's gonna run himself over in his own ship. No, I'm not. How? Okay. Follow commander? 
Hang on, how do I become the commander? Joining squad. Like, am I alpha? Because I can have them just straight up follow me. How do I make one ship the commander? I'm joining the squad. I am the commander now. Because we got to flee here. Are they moving? Hold on. Is there just an add to squad button? Joining squad. Okay. Now, am I the de facto commander of my squad? Either way, if you just joined, I appreciate you raiders for coming by. I hope you had a fun stream and some good wins in Rocket League. And thanks for popping over and saying hi. If you've got any questions about the game, feel free to ask in the chat. My question is, how long does it take to go 1.2 kilometers at 7 meters per second, given that there is no air resistance, and um, the other train is leaving the station carrying a load of apples? We only have a limited amount of oxygen, so it'd be funny if we just suffocated out here. Command the second ship and then add to squad another way. Give the same order to both ships. I know you would just explain something. I have no idea what you just explained. Maybe I could just set one as the commander. In space, like two kilometers away is not that far, but when you're in EVA, it is. It wouldn't be nearly as exciting if we didn't do at least one stupid EVA at some point. second ship then add the squad by giving them both the same order I just realized the game's a little loud what a lovely day what a spacewalk it is yeah I mean look, look at it it's beautiful don't shoot it easy Salty Hermit, enjoy your gift sub. Thanks, Logan, for the gift sub. Much appreciated. And once again, Encrypted Bit. Welcome aboard. I don't think I could go into space in an EVA. Yeah, I don't think I could either. No. I didn't even, I didn't even want to be on the spaceship. I, I, I just feel like I was watching a live feed of some of the astronauts on like the ISS just floating in low grav space and just n or no grav and just blooming permanently with no gravity just seems awful when I when I look at what they do I just think they're so much better as far as just like human beings than me like docking granted I I would have an anxiety attack immediately Like, they, they were just cut from a different cloth. Okay. I don't know why... This wasn't supposed to take this long. <laughs> we're, we're gonna learn how to do it better. Um... Okay. We're gonna learn how to do it better. Because the plan was... Do both of these at the same time. If we could just park a little closer, that, that would work. We got some ore to mine.
I asked ChatGPT if it was too late for me to become an astronaut, and it said, don't give up on your dreams. <laughs> I mean... Here's, here's my thoughts. If you're at a place in your life that you can ask, is it too late to become an astronaut? The answer is yes. Because anybody who can still become an astronaut will be an astronaut before they ever think about that question. <laughs> right? Like, your, your life trajectory is already so different. Oh dear god, the raiders, when it rains, it pours! Avac is raiding too? Oh my god. Avic is here to answer the question that I have been asked all day. While Nightbot times out some of the more over-enthusiastic raiders' apologies. <laughs> Which is, Etal, why aren't you playing Age of Wonders? Um, I got to tune in for a bit of your Age of Wonders character creation. Was enjoying it uh, earlier today, Avic. Thanks for popping back in and uh, sending all your nice people over. We are doing some space mining. I'm playing some X4. Been having a great time. Welcome, Raiders. What is up, everybody? Uh, I can actually show you our new ship that we just got. Is this beauty just up here? Right in the view screen. We got a medium to lotty miner doing some rock hopping, doing some belt to load action. So I, I brought my small miner over. So that we could get you, we got a we got a custom logo. Let's flip it so you can actually see. Check this out. There it is. Uh, Ace Tech hooked us up with that earlier. Our mining corp is going strong. Avic says the spider riding goblin cannibal mystics are doing well. Glad you got to see some of the character creation. I saw you playing some X4 a week or two ago. Not sure what you got to get up to there, because I think you... I happened to see it after the fact. And didn't get to actually stick around and watch. But welcome, Raiders. Uh, we had a couple of back-to-back -back raids. Thanks again, Logan Olio. And Afik is also here. Good friend of the channel. And also, content creator in their own right was last seen playing some Age of Wonders and some X4 and some Wildermyth. But thanks for sending the Dapperlings over. I assume a lot of you got to see um, this game in action on Avic stream. We're gonna go ahead and spacewalk. I don't, I don't really like tele teleporting in this game, so we're gonna spacewalk. Because it gives that wonderful sense of perspective. An arena, mineral, vanguard. I've never seen this game before, surprisingly. Uh, it's really fun. It's a... For those of you that haven't seen it, it's a space sandbox. And it has a... Do whatever you want, set whatever goals you want for yourself vibe. We've decided to become a space mining company. And uh, we've got our first two mining vessels. We just started flying this one, and we just got our first load of ore. And we're about to take it in for a sail. So I'd like to sit in the driver's seat, and we can start heading toward um, a station. So let me go ahead and get some guidance set up here. And then have the one and zero also uh, docked there for us. And off it goes. So, as you can see, part of the fun is commanding your own fleets. And we're starting to get a fledgling fleet going for us right now. Let's spool up to travel mode and head on out. But thanks again so much for the raid, Avic. Uh, I hope that the campaign 
went well. And I'm um, interested to hear how you feel about Age of Wonders and what you think about the game. But chat, if you're feeling uh, awake at this lovely hour, 10.30 p.m. Pacific, then feel free to uh, toss Logan Olio and Avic a follow. Uh, let me let me make sure I'm not going to run into any rocks here. And then I can alt-tab appropriately. Got some links in the... Well, Nightbot? Thank you, Nightbot. Wake up! Toss them a follow by clicking the link in chat right there. I'm sure they appreciate it. Avic says, really enjoying the latest update to X4, currently doing some of the Boron Quest chain after spending a bunch of time working on stations. I have never gotten to build the stations. Um, but yeah, this is a full economic sim, supply and demand. Uh, like, we built this ship. While we were building this ship, just as an example, we had to wait until... The station, the wharf that was in charge of building this ship. I want to make sure I don't crash this thing. Silicon refinery. So we're going to start slowing down early because I don't know how long it's going to take to slow down. <clears throat> um, when when I went to a wharf to make an order for this ship to be built, there were parts were not in stock for advanced electronics. Oh my god, we're still slowing down. This needs 30 kilometers with a full load to come to a stop. And more, like 35 kilometers. Wow. Hefty. Smuggling vessel found nearby. Hefty. This is retro thrusters on as much as we can, and I'm still going. <laughs> oh my god. All right, this is like 40 kilometers to slow down. Good view, though. But yeah, just to give you an idea, the ship we ordered um, had a part shortage and they actually had to wait until the parts were traded to them before they had what they needed to build this vessel. So it's got that kind of economy going. If you hit backspace, you should stop faster. That is hitting backspace, you backseater. That's, that is backspace. That's how I stop. Trade is insanely profitable if you're good at it. Yeah, everything in this game is profitable. It's a single-player RPG. I don't know if you knew this, but you're supposed to be the main character. So, uh, the game is specifically set up in a way that allows you to not be a complete abject failure. Unless you try really hard. But, but the complication uh, is still there. You gotta put in the legwork. It's, it's, it's not all... Docking queued. Sunshine and rainbows. You still gotta do, especially if you start with the lone gun start. You still gotta put in. Docking the, granted. The learning curve is still there. You're gonna have to put the time in, shall we say? I ended up having to do trade runs to deliver the parts for the ships I wanted to build. It do be like that. You're making me feel bad about how much I've struggled before. Don't let the people in chat who are like, games easy mode. Listen, mate, I've got 4,300 hours, and I'm just telling you, there's no challenge left. That's what they sound like. I don't know why, but that's what they sound like. Don't listen to them. Like, yeah. Chad, did you know that if you've played a game for hundreds or thousands of hours, then it's easier for you to succeed at than someone who just started playing the game? And I'm not talking about me, okay? Because I'm talking about that chatter. That's a lie. I find it much more fun to start bare bones and build up. Precisely, Avic. Can you run in sh a ship building yard yourself? Yes. It is possible in the game to start your own space station that has the ability to manufacture ships um, you can manage mining fleets that get the raw materials. You can have those raw materials processed at refineries. And you can turn those into ships that you make yourself. 
Welcome. I've been too overwhelmed with the complexity and vastness of the game. Uh, dual VTR, you just kind of got to start small and work your way up. I would say. Uh, I'd also recommend, there was a YouTuber I was watching for some trading tips, and I'll post their channel in chat. They, you might, they might have some videos that help you out if you're feeling a little overwhelmed. You just kind of have to take a small piece, decide what you want to do, and then figure out how to do that small thing. And for me, it was mining. And if you just say, ignore all the stuff going on in the grand scheme of things and just focus on your little mining operation, it's not too bad. But I'll, I'll post that in the chat right now for you. It's the Rugged Gamer. Had some good tutorial videos. I'm just scrolling up in chat real quick. I love Star Sector. Would I be able to find, build large capital ships in this one? Yeah, the ships are huge. Um, just, to sh just to show you, Weasel, uh, I'll, I'll hop out of the ship and take a walk around. This is our medium ship, by the way. It timed out my seven-month message. <laughs> Azura Storm, thank you for the seven-month sub, by the way. Uh, my bad. An arena, mineral, vanguard. All right, let, let's disembark from our new medium miner. This is our first medium ship. I'm still walking backwards. And then there's large, and then there's extra large. And uh, this is a small miner. This is our small one, by comparison. But yeah, that that's a medium. So yeah, the ships get really big. I'm a big fan of Star Sector too. Uh, there's definitely some kinship, I think, between this and Star Sector. <laughs> Overachiever. <laughs> Also, coming in, Area 5. Thanks for the nine-month sub. I appreciate the Tier 1. Welcome aboard. Uh, hey. I need to get on this. I'm sure there's there's a faster way to do this. I'm just gonna kind of show you the difference. It'd be funny if this was not our ship, but yeah. Magpie. Mineral. Uh, we just got back with a, with a full load of ore. In this case, silicon, I guess. And so we're going to offload that silicon. Only 39,000 credits in the small one. Um, and I know we can do this via the map. So the map is your friend and you can control pretty much everything from here by looking at your property. And we have three ships to our name right now. The dead pixel has just been exploring space, revealing stations, and it found a highway to another area. So we're going to take the dead pixel and tell it to go explore over in the next zone. Grand Exchange 4. And it'll just kind of fly around, look for stations, look for points of interest. And uh, I need to set, make sure its behavior is set to escape. Yes, if it is attacked, it will escape. So it's autonomously going out and doing that. Is there a referral link for this game? No. Um, I do want you to know that I bought the, all the DLC on sale recently. This game goes on Steam sale pretty frequently. I'd have to look up to see what its price is. Because right now it's 50 bucks. But um, I want to say that this goes on sale for... 33? I think it was like 32.50 on the last Steam sale. That was a few months ago, though. So if you don't want to wait, I wouldn't blame you. You're only saving like $18, I guess. And I think you get a lot of value out of the the base game there's quite a lot to do in base game the the dlc is mostly all factions um and new ships it won't there's only a couple of mechanics that you're missing out on and you probably won't even realize you're missing out on them i'd say anyway what i was about to do was um Tell you to go explore. Let's get up. Let the captain resume command of our small mining ship. I just kind of wanted to walk you around and show you the difference. 
But yeah, they've been improving the, the graphics and the physics engine in the last big update. And I think it just runs a little smoother now. An arena. So. Mineral. Vanguard. They've been constantly developing in this since like 2018. So it's had a lot of polish over those years. I think it's 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 quite addicting. There's this is a great number go up game. All right, let's trade our silicon. We have a full inventory. It's about 113,000 credits. It's not bad. So we just made a cool 150k. We're going up to 600 750,000 credits. Chow, we could buy another medium miner if we wanted to and get a get a little fleet going here. So my question is, should I look for somewhere else to mine? We, we never came to consensus on the resource nodes. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna fly to another section. Like say, down here. And I'm gonna pop a resource probe down and we're just gonna figure out what all this means. <laughs> Must be a massive install. I don't know how big the game is. I don't think it's that big. Could be wrong. I'll, I could take a look. Empty space. All right, let's nose towards empty space. We're just gonna go in the middle of an asteroid field. And then I'll alt tab, so don't mind the frames dipping here. Uh, it says X4 is... Sort by size on disk. It's 26 and a half gigs. It's not that bad. And that's with all the DLC. Etel has evolved beyond caring for storage space. So true, actually. Um, when I built this computer, I was like, I, I, I don't ever want to have to worry about deleting a game to make room for another game again. I, I hit my data cap before I'm going to hit... <laughs> I hit my data caps last month. And they were like, would you like to pay $50 extra a month for unlimited internet? And it's like, uh, dude... You're already charging me like a hundred plus dollars a month and I gotta pay 50 more to have unlimited- Like, what am I paying for? Well, you're paying for, uh, decently big speed that's not as fast as fiber. Okay, what happens with all the data I don't use in the other months? Uh, we keep that. You don't get to keep that back. That's ours now. That's not fair. Like, why don't I get rollover minutes? Comcast? No, Cox. But thanks again, Suitbird, who says, sliding in at the end of stream for 28 months. Hello, Suit. We're talking data caps. But yeah, I, I put five terabytes of M.2 solid state plugged into my motherboard directly on this computer. I was like, I, I don't want to run out of room again. I had a one terabyte drive just for games on the last computer, and that filled up quick. That was very fast. And then I had a 500 gig just for Windows install. So now I've got a one terabyte M.2 just for Windows, which is a little too big, but that's just how it worked out. I would have preferred 500 gig for Windows. Um, and then I have four terabytes for game storage of M.2. And then I have one terabyte of just regular SATA solid state just as a backup for recordings or whatever else. <sighs> Do mining ships have guns defenses? So it depends on how you build them. Every ship is modular, Dromar. What am I doing? Why can't I hit F3? Oh, never mind. F2. Don't mind that noise. So if you look over here, there's a hard point on this for a turret. And in this case, I have installed mining turrets to assist with mining. Typically, the mining boats are just fairly fragile. And if they come under attack, they're probably going to die. So putting guns on the mining rigs is not very efficient. You'd be better off managing a fleet 
so that your mining vessels have escorts and you would build or buy uh, some combat ships to, to kind of escort the mining vessels and, and take them in a squad so that they don't um, they have a little bit of defense so it's better just to go all in on mining and we're just hoping like if anybody comes across us we just die and that's just the way it is all right, we're just in the middle of a big. All this, all these red hexes are like asteroid fields, and uh, we're just gonna go ahead and pop out a resource probe. Take a look and see what that says. Okay, chat. So here, let me, help me understand this. We got a not even a half star on the ore or silicon, and we have a blue bar of 0 0.042 per kilometer cubed. How, how do I interpret this information? I love how people say M.2 solid state. I think it's because M.2 is not um, as common a term as solid state drive. So you quantify what an M.2 is as solid state with, without having to have someone stop and be like, what is an M.2? You just go M.2 solid state drive so that they associate the two words and you have to do less explanation for what you're talking about. I don't know myself. Fewer stars is bad. <laughs> it's bad. Uh, no, this is not online. This is this is like Eve offline, Koopo. This is a single player, just massive simulation game. Huge simulation game. So you can really take your own pace. You don't have to worry about getting ganked by players. All right. All we know is that stars, more stars, good. That doesn't really help too much, I don't think. I'm just going to see if we can find any more information from Googling again. X4 resource probe. The backseaters don't know. How do resource probes work? That's a great question. How do they work? <sighs> um, t t t t t t t some numbers here. Oh dear. Oh no. There's too many numbers, chat. <laughs> I regret looking it up. Are you playing with all the DLC? I am, yeah. The numbers. What do they mean? So my question is, I guess, should I be picky and look for, like, a, like a better, more star asteroid field? Or should I just say, it is what it is, and just look for the rocks and then try to make some cash? I feel like if you want to look for denser asteroid fields, then this is not the way. Like, taking a scout or something and having them deploy resource nodes probably is more efficient. Okay, let's um, pick that up then. Should be like right behind us. Should be right there. Resource probe. Deactivate. Tractor it in. You'll find more rich rocks, but also look at the sector. How many resources are there? Click on empty space on the map. Okay. I don't know what... Define, click on empty space on the map.
Like, okay, you're saying it doesn't matter, but before everyone was telling me to get resource probes, so I'm not really sure what to believe now. This is asteroid. just a regular old ore asteroid. Let's just fly through the field. And then, what I'd like to do is create... an order... or rather... Okay, they're gonna undock. Are they gonna follow my ship? I think so. I found the dev post about probes. Yeah, if it's recent, then feel free to link it. Chat said that it's changed... Um, use cases Asteroid. fairly recently, like, uh, in the last couple years, that is. Okay, here's a teeny little rock. It's only got 163. And we could just blow it up if we wanted to. Like, that would be the fastest. This isn't a very large one anyways. So we can just turn on the turrets. I think they're on. There we go. Blow this sucker up. That's the least... The least efficient way to do things. But it, uh, it does work. Or it's the most efficient in terms of time, I should say. Uh, and that filled us up 37% or so. so. Yeah, it wasn't a particularly big asteroid regardless. But I don't know when they actually made the changes to how resource probes work. But yeah, if you... Uh, I need to do like a permit. There we go. Now you can post the link. I got you. Anyway, those of you that came over from Avic's channel, tell me about Age of Wonders. What you think about it. What Avic thinks about it. If you got to get some food or peace out, mate, have a good one. And uh, how the campaign went. Because I was going to check it out today, but I ended up deciding kind of last minute that I would rather just be in space. So, part of me does feel guilty about that, but I'm curious, like, what the what the consensus is. Got some ore rocks. We're looking for ones that highlight blue, like that one right there. Asteroid. These are pretty low yield. These are kind of tiny. All right, I'll keep that tab open, and I'll, I'll probably just take a look tonight. I'll give it up on trying to figure it out for now. But uh, I'll, I'll bookmark it. After watching, I'll be picking up the game when I get paid. Looks good. It is really fun, Lista. Um, the last time we played this, I was a traitor. Hold on. I see a shiny on this. There might be a crystal on here. Oh, look at it sparkle. That's, that's the good stuff. Always got to be keeping an eye out for that. This little pocket right here. I'm going to try and get closer so you can see it. Instead of blocking it with my mouse. Okay, too close. Too close. Slow down. <laughs> that's a crystal. It's too close. A little further back, please. Now, the reason why that's valuable... See all the little shards that pop off of it? Did I get all of it? Those are... Uh, Minoline crystals, however you pronounce it. And they're worth... a. Decent chunk of change. They go into our actual inventory. Those are worth 10,000 credits a piece, so that little haul was just 140,000 credits by itself. Alright, let's blow this one up. That is satisfying. Didn't notice the unstable crystal. Is there an unstable crystal in here? I don't even know what that means, so even if I did notice it... Is that bad? 
Age of Wonders 4 looks like a solid improvement on 3. The series knows its formula and they're refining it without dumbing it down. That's fair. I think you get less when you blow it up. Yeah, you do. Um, you pretty much do. I wish, I'm just experimenting right now. Is our other ship following us? They are, they're just really far back. Like, really far back. Anyway, what I was saying was, last time we played this, I played as a, as a trading baron. And that was a lot of fun. Asteroid. Trying to set up, like, a network infrastructure um, to get live feeds of prices at different trading platforms. Buy high, sell low, you know how it is. And that was a lot of fun, too. You can't make a lot of money trading. And you can get... Oh, dear. I forgot where we were, where your big ship. I for Brace for impact. Okay, we're fine. Uh, shields are holding. Uh, no need to panic. No need to panic. I gotta take this a lot slower. That'll buff right out. Yep. That'll buff right out. God, the future. The future is beautiful. It's easy. Just separate yourself from collisions with uh, shields that protect you from low-velocity impacts. Okay, we might be full now. We are indeed. So, what I want to do is... Collect all dropped objects in the specified area. Okay, that's... Is that... Chat, how do I make my other mining boat m pick up the things remotely? That sounds like it would work, but I don't know for sure if it would. I don't know how long until these things despawn either. Collect in area will work if they can carry the item. Because, yeah, collect drops is like a big circle. Uh, here they come. I hear you. They're so fast. Noom. Where are they going? There. <laughs> hey. I see you. Are they doing it? They're here, they're parked outside. Do it! If you click on the collect drops command, you can change the radius. Okay. In the behaviors panel. I don't remember where that is. <clears throat> I have messages? I saw it grab one, I think. Magpie. Mineral. It doesn't have anything. Yeah, it's totally empty. Uh, Alright, the behaviors panel. Like, the behavior panel? I have two behavior panels open right now. Let's also... I think their default behavior is overriding it, and that may be the issue. Let's just kill this squad. How do you disband this fleet? Rename fleet. I 
I can just remove all orders and assignments and that'll work, I guess. Okay, so anyway, take this ship, do collect drops, default behavior hold position, collect, it like flickers on the screen and then it goes off. Yeah, there's still stuff out here. I think it doesn't detect the order as a valid drop if it's automatically removing the order. <sighs> okay. Just... I'll do it Hello. myself. Marina, Mineral, Vanguard. Probably could actually turn off the Donas or turn on the Donasis again. Radio? What's that? How does that work? Magpie, Mineral. Telling my companion to do basic tasks over communications? No. Try clicking on the ship and then right-clicking the dot. The yeah, you can't click on. You can't right-click on those. I can right-click on this to collect deployables, but that's about it. Basically, what I what I in my mind what I wanted to do was uh, fly the big ship or the larger ship, and then find the larger rocks we can mine kind of the whole thing and with our combined inventories grab the hull and then both go back and sell at the same time that was like the plan anyway bunk we're good I'm here. Please let me sit down for a second, and I'm sure... Are you okay? No. Dude, don't pee on the chair. Okay, don't... Go. Leave. Now, where the hell... I see some stuff. Pelican Sentinel. There's a Pelican Sentinel 40 or so kilometers away. Turn Vanguard. I feel like there was more stuff and it either disappeared or it's on the other side. I don't know. We only picked up a thousand. There was definitely more than a thousand there. Can you transfer inventory between ships? I can drop stuff. Who is this? There's a Vanguard flying by. You can drop stuff and then pick stuff up, yeah. It was definitely like this rock. Asteroid. Because it has the silicon yield. Yeah. It was this one, but I think some of it either disappeared or faded away, or maybe it was just super low yield. I don't know. Oh, well. Anyways. An arena. Mineral. Vanguard. This, like, I can have this small ship go and do autonomous mining. I was just wanting to, like, do a thing where I led a mining fleet, and I'm trying to figure out how to facilitate that. If that makes sense. So, how about we just uh, fly on back to the silicon refinery? Autopilot. Turn on autopilot, and then have the big ship also go back there. Trade with silicon refinery and sell your silicon. There we go. 
Hello, everybody. What's up, Elmo? Is this the new one? Uh, new as in 2018, yes. <laughs> yeah, new, new as in 2018. Relatively recent, I guess. Five years and whatnot. Chat, what do the red hexes on the map represent? They represent asteroid fields. So that's why we're specifically in them. If we look at the legend here, uh, red are mineral regions. That's why we're here. And then blue is gas, which would be like down here. And then pink is both mineral and gas. So it's just sort of like a generic area you can go search where there are asteroids. And uh, you have to kind of track down. Yeah, we have I have all the DLC Rincorn, but we're playing mostly with the vanilla stuff. Mostly with the uh, the core game at the moment. Because I, I want to I wanna find the DLC factions by exploring and not by knowing where their systems and sectors are ahead of time. Do we have three ships now? We do, yeah. I'm flying the small one. The big one is... I was flying the big one. It's complicated. I was trying to figure out what the capabilities were for, for managing a fleet myself in person. Auto What's more beneficial? Gas disengaged. or minerals? Um, I, we need to dock with this. Silicon refinery. So minerals you can mine yourself, like we've been doing, but gas has to be mined by the AI. There's not like a physical player action that you can take to mine the gas. So you need both um, is the easy answer, but for like player doing something, minerals are what you can physically go out and get. For the, for the gas miners, the AI kind of like drives around and scrapes the gas out of space. But there isn't like a physical action, like you can't shoot something to mine gas. Requesting if that makes sense. But both are used in like construction of stations and refineries and things like that. Successfully docked. So, as we trade what we didn't give very much on this guy. This is our ship coming in for a landing right now, chat. This one, that's ours. <laughs> that's our medium ship. With a full inventory of silicon. Sexy as hell. All right, how do I get down there again? I think it's on this side. Can you shoot other ships and mine their gas? I mean, you can be a pirate if you want. I don't know how to do that, but it's possible. And uh, you can get like a police scanner and scan other haulers' inventories and try and like take their stuff and stop their shipments and things. Oh no. Goodbye. Good night. See, I, 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 they don't need you to go into station storage. How much are the extra large ships? I don't know. This is the largest ship I've bought. Is medium, but there are, I would assume, in the millions of of credits, because this medium ship with basic kit was five hundred thousand. None of your ships are currently stored. You say that. Please remember to return your depleted energy cells to the recycling compound. Excel's like 25 to 50 million, depending on the model. I see. Okay, we can't get our ship until the other medium ships stop going into storage, I think. That is disorienting, but sick. That is a storage vessel, yeah. Okay, yeah, I think I think we have to just wait our turn. Okay. Let Hello. 
I'll never get my ship out of the dock again. <laughs> you just landed. I saw you guys go down. My first X4 experience was being kidnapped when I visited another ship. That can also happen, yeah. God, those metal doors are gigantic. Go away. Wait. That's that's my ship. Bring it up. No. No, don't close it in. That's that's mine. I need that one. Oh, hold. Peekaboo, it's my ship. Come on up. Yeah, you big beauty. All right. All right, let's let's get on the launch pad before somebody does something. Stop confusing the system. Oh, this is my fault and not the air traffic controllers who are in charge of these subsystems. I see. Hello. Eat these, my sheep. An arena. Mineral. Vanguard. Let me on board. Greetings. Greetings. I am an alien. You are a human commander. I will follow you. I am the voice actor now. Chat. Um, did we sell the silicon already? Oh, we did. Yeah, we have 874,000 credits. All right. We're doing good. About to hit our first mill. About to hit our first mill. We could just buy a second minor like another medium I think that's the goal here's the goal the goal is buy a second medium minor have the medium minor and the small minor go off and do automated mining we'll just set up autonomous mining we go mine with our medium hauler try and figure out how to find a, a denser or more valuable or more rich asteroid field with higher stars However the heck that works. And, uh, get the, get the mining. We gotta get the passive residual income flowing. So, I think that's gonna be the plan next, but we're gonna go ahead and save here, because I think this is a good bookmark. And it's getting late here. It's after 11, and I need to go get some food and also feed the doggo. Got almost an 8-hour stream in today. I've been having a ton of fun uh, playing some X4. Would like to play some more this week. Maybe even tomorrow? I don't know. I just woke up. Sax, get on my time zone. <laughs> okay. You're on the wrong time zone. But yeah, I'm, I'm having a great time with X-Force. So we're definitely going to play some more of this. I want to see if we can get um, the actual corp part of things going. Uh, but thanks for all the help. I, I do appreciate it, despite some of the sass that I'll throw back your way. I appreciate the the assists with understanding a lot of the, some of these core mechanics because it is a dense game. There's a lot to chew on, and um, I'm having a lot of fun playing it. So I might give you a little bit of um, what's the word I'm looking for? A little chafe, maybe. But I appreciate the help. You're doing fine. X4 is intuitive, at the, unintuitive at the start, but you'll get it. Yeah, I, feel, I have a good grasp of the basics, and I'm going to watch some more tutorials and stuff. But I, I'm, I'm enjoying myself, and um, we're not going to play exclusively X4 this week. But we are going to we're going to tap back into this. I don't know, I might just go three days in a row, because I'm kind of vibing with it, but... We'll look for some other things to do as well to kind of get some variety in. Whew. I'm tired, chat. I'm going to go get some grub. I'm going to send you guys on an end of stream raid, though, before we go. 
So if you're still hanging out, uh, I think it's the least I can do. I appreciate all the raiders that came by. And if you stuck around, I appreciate the new follows. Midas is going wild. That's because he's hungry. He's very hungry. Uh, I'm glad that 8 megabit per second seems to have worked and enjoying the new stream PC a lot. Having some fun playing the games. Okay. Can we... I'm just troubleshooting some music audio levels while we're here, too. There we go. Okay. All right. It is time. Chat. Let's go. Say what up. You guys have been bouncing around all over the place. Thanks for stream. Hey, my pleasure, Star Wolf. Pelsari. Thanks for coming, everybody. It was fun watching. Thanks for watching. But let's make some more space profits and, and get a, a proper mining corp going. We went from having no mining ships today to having a small and a medium and having almost a million credits. So I consider that a success. And I'm enjoying the, the space truck vibes. Whew. Let's go say hi to Sim. I think he just started the stream, actually. He's playing some truck sim. That's pretty close to space. I feel like Sim would enjoy X4, but also I can, in good conscience, recommend the game to someone who isn't... You, know, you have to want it. Like, you, that. this has to be a thing like, yes, I am ready to learn. I am ready to absorb information. I actively seek out the challenge that is learning how to play X4. It's not It's not that hard. I'm just saying that that has, that has to come from within. It can't come from without. You know what I'm saying? You, you have to be ready to do a little bit of extracurricular learning. Enroll in X4 University. Yeah. But it is it's really good. It's very satisfying. I'm glad to uh, jump back in and, and play a bit more this week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate making the stream fun. Keep me company. And uh, we'll catch you tomorrow. Be back around the same time, 2 to 3 p.m. Pacific. I really want to play X4, but I don't want to spend the money right now. Well, you know what to do. Live vicariously through streamer. All right. Bye, everybody. Good night. Exit game. Now. <laughs>